Section 1 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sonia. The World's Story, Volume 14. An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plutz. Translated by William H. Tillingest. Section 1. Introduction. Professor Dr. Karl Plötz, well known in Germany as a veteran teacher, is the author of a number of educational works having a high reputation, among which none has better approved its usefulness than the epitome of universal history. The admitted excellence of the book renders an apology for its translation unnecessary, but an extract from the author's preface respecting the nature and purpose of the work may not be out of place. The present epitome which now appears in a seventh edition, enlarged and improved, is intended, in the first place, for use by the upper classes in higher educational institutions, as a guide or handbook in the historical classroom. The handy arrangement of the book and the elaborate index are intended to adapt it for private use, and to facilitate rapid acquisition of information concerning historical matters which have, for the moment, escaped the memory i have endeavoured to give everywhere the assured results of recent historical investigation adding as far as possible references to my authorities the exposition of ancient history is based upon the works of duncker curtius mommsen and peter medieval history which was treated somewhat too briefly in the earlier editions has been made proportionally full since the fourth and has been moreover enlarged as has modern history by the addition of a number of genealogical tables in modern history the treaties of peace have been brought into a special prominence and the principal conditions of the great treaties through which alone one can get an insight into the historical formation of the present system of european states have been stated with all possible accuracy recent history has been brought down to the present day the purpose and the compass of the book alike permitted nothing more than a compressed narrative of facts as far as possible free from the expression of personal opinion this limitation of itself excludes the possibility of offending whether in a religious or a political sense all are probably now agreed that it is unadvisable for scholars to write out the lecture of the instructor in full which however should not prevent them from taking notes here and there no one denies the necessity of a guide as a basis for instruction but widely differing ideas prevail concerning the arrangement and extent of such a work the author of this epitome who was for a number of years historical instructor of the first and second classes in the french gymnasium at berlin holds the opinion that even the best handbook can in no way take the place of an animated lecture and that any guide which gives a connected narrative in some detail necessarily detracts from the value of the teacher's lecture if in the hands of the pupils in the classroom i am persuaded that such a work should place before the pupil facts only in the wider sense of the word and these grouped in the most comprehensive manner the task of animating these facts by oral exposition ought to be left to the instructor the translator has enlarged the book in no small degree with the hope of increasing its general usefulness and of giving it a special value in this country under ancient history an attempt has been made to bring the ethnographical relations of the early peoples into prominence but believing that the uncertainty of our knowledge in this respect can hardly be dwelled upon too strongly the translator has tried to speak guardedly even the indo-european family is far from being satisfactorily understood the details of the relationship of its constituent groups are not clear the theory of a primitive asiatic home and the wave-like series of westward migrations is but one though perhaps the best among many speculations recent textbooks have delighted us with minutely ramified tables of indo-european relationships showing with close approximation when each group left the parent stock each tribe the common group this though harmless as speculation is dangerous if taken for knowledge footnote we must content ourselves for the present with the recognition of a fundamental primitive community of indo-european languages 
and refrain from dividing these languages into groups except in the case of the indo-iranian tongues especially is this true of the unity of the greeks and italians so often taken for granted it cannot be said that this unity did not once exist but neither can it be asserted that its existence is demonstrable whether or not the future will succeed in reaching more certain results remains to be seen until such results are reached historians will do well to refrain from making use of such groups of languages and of tribes as the greco-italian and the slavo-german b delbruck einleitung in das sprachstudium leipzig breitkopf und hertel 1880 not all philologists will agree upon this point upon what point do all philologists agree and the archaeologists have something to say upon the matter the words just quoted are nevertheless worthy of consideration End of footnote. the speculations in regard to the early inhabitants of the british isles should be received with like caution their provisional acceptance however is so useful as to justify their insertion the mythical history of england ireland and scandinavia has been deemed worthy to stand beside that of greece and rome the undoubted historical value of many of these traditions and the part which they play in general literature will explain the presence of even the distinctly fabulous tales the distinction between myth a theoretical explanation of myths and tolerably trustworthy history has been kept constantly in view the history of certain countries as china japan parthia and persia under the sassanidae which the stricter limits of the german work had caused the author to omit has been added in the cases of india the scandinavian monarchies before thirteen eighty seven and france the meagre account in the original has undergone considerable amplification the greatest changes however will be found in the history of england and in that of america which have been rewritten from the beginning with a fullness of detail proportional to that observed by the original in the history of germany in the editions nothing more than a compilation from reliable but easily accessible sources has been attempted a few notes have been inserted and a few dates and facts interpolated in the text of the original but these changes have been duly attributed to the translator either directly or by the use of brackets where they seemed of sufficient importance absolute accuracy cannot be looked for in a work dealing with so vast a number of dates and covering so wide a range in time the translator however in the sections for which he is responsible has endeavoured to verify each date by reference to independent authorities he will be grateful to all who will take the trouble to inform him of errors that have escaped his notice that the proportion observed in the space allotted to different countries and epochs is open to criticism the translator is well aware the fault is due in part to the plan adopted by him of sending the earlier portions of the book to press before the later were finished in the vain hope of hastening its completion except in the case of the austro-prussian and franco-prussian wars where much of the minute descriptive detail has been omitted no attempt has been made to condense the original various circumstances have delayed the appearance of the book much beyond the time for which it was announced that it is at last ready is due to the kindness of dr edward channing of harvard college who took upon himself the preparation of those sections which contain the history of great britain and her colonies from seventeen eighty four to eighteen eighty three and that of the united states from seventeen eighty nine to eighteen eighty three the thanks of the translator are also due to professor h w torrey of harvard college for the loan of material of which free use has been made for english history in the seventeenth and eighteenth century and for french history in the nineteenth century and to mr justin windsor librarian of the university for the free use of books to dr r h laberton and to messrs e claxton and co of philadelphia the translator is indebted for courteous permission to use certain genealogical tables in dr laberton's exceedingly useful outlines of history the distinguishing feature of the epitome is the arrangement whereby a brief connected narrative is accompanied by a clear well-graduated chronology which emphasizes the sequence of events without breaking up the story or fatiguing the mind an attempt has been made by the use of italics and two sizes of black type to mark and distinguish events according to their relative importance and also to relieve the page while with the latter object in view 
the use of capitals has been as far as possible dispensed with although the manner of printing the book has prevented consistency in this respect a special care has been devoted to the index which has been made very full in order that the book might serve as a historical dictionary as well as a chronology end of section one this recording is in the public domain section two of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sonia. The World Story, Volume 14. An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plötz. Translated by William H. Tillingast. Section 2. Universal History. A General View of Its Principal Divisions. From Before Christ to 375 A.D. 1. Ancient History. From the Beginning of Historical Information to the commencement of the migrations of the Teutonic tribes. 375 to 1492. 2. Medieval history. From the commencement of the migrations of the Teutonic tribes to the discovery of America. 1492 to present time. 3. Modern history. From the discovery of America to the present time ancient history treated ethnographically falls into two great divisions a eastern peoples egyptians hamitic jews babylonians assyrians phoenicians lydians semitic hindus bactrians medes persians aryan parthians chinese japanese turanian b western peoples celts britons Greeks, Romans, Teutons, Aryan. Medieval history can be divided into four chronological periods. 375 to 843. 1. From the commencement of the migrations of the Teutonic tribes to the Treaty of Verdun. 843 to 1096. 2. From the Treaty of Verdun to the beginning of the Crusades. 1096 to 1270. 3. The Epoch of the Crusades. 1270 to 1492. 4. From the end of the Crusades to the discovery of America. Modern history can also be divided into four periods. 1492 to 1648. 1. From the discovery of America to the Peace of Westphalia. 1648 to 1789. 2. From the Peace of Westphalia to the outbreak of the First French Revolution. 1789 to 1815. 3. From the outbreak of the First French Revolution to the Congress of Vienna. 1815 to the present time. 4. From the Congress of Vienna to the present time. End of section 2. This recording is in the public domain. Section 3 of an Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World's Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History, by Karl Pletz, translated by William H. Tillinghast, Section 3, 1, Ancient History, A. Eastern Peoples, Part 1, Egyptians, Hamites, Geography, Egypt, Chem, that is, Black Earth, in Old Egyptian, is the valley of the nile which extends between two chains of low hills for five hundred and fifty miles with a breadth above the delta of but a few miles it is divided into upper egypt philly elephantine thebes or diospolis called by homer hecate 
tompolus the hundred gated a designation which must refer to the entrances of temples and palaces since the city had neither walls nor gates and lower egypt memphis in the delta tanis bubastus narcratus sais west of the delta canopus now abukur on the east pelusium the latter cities standing on what were in ancient times the largest mouths of the nile these divisions were originally in all probability independent countries they are not to be confounded with the separate principalities which became numerous at a later time this division was commemorated in the royal title of the kings of the united countries lords of the upper and lower country lords of the two crowns religion worship of personified forces of nature and symbolical animal worship in memphis a special reverence paid to ptah the highest of the gods the first creator in his temple stood the sacred bull apis egypt api also closely connected with osiris ra worshipped particularly in on or heliopolis footnote according to rossellini and lepsius the title of pharaoh is derived from this name and means son of the sun ebers and bruch derive it from parao the great house compare sublime port in the footnote representing the transmitting and preserving power of the godhead embodied in the sun chem was the god of generation and growth reverence was also paid to the goddess neith whose worship at sais was considered by the greeks to be identical with that of athena to the goddess of bast or pact at bubastis and to the goddess of buto on one of the mouths of the nile at thebes cult of amon amon the god of heaven later united with ra to form a single divinity in upper egypt worship was paid to mentu the rising sun tum or atmu the setting sun khnum or knef god of the overflow always represented with a ram's head and double horns and later becoming united with amon to form one divinity and to the goddess mut that is mother the educated classes recognized the various gods as personified attributes of the one divinity myth of osiris the creative force in nature who was killed and thrown into the sea by set typhon the destructive force in nature especially drought sought after by his sorrowing consort isis the earth he was avenged by their son horus who slew set restored to life osiris thenceforward ruled in the lower world decay and resurrection of the creative force in nature immortality of the soul conjoined with horus the goddess hathor considered by the greeks to be the same as aphrodite highly developed moral code civilization fertility of the valley of the nile maintained by the regular overflow of the nile beginning at the end of july and lasting four months hieroglyphics very early in conjunction with the hieratic and afterwards the demotic characters syllabic and phonetic signs which represented the language of daily life the dialect of the common people embalming of the dead mummies avoidance of intercourse with foreign peoples and adoption of foreign customs strict regulation of the entire life by religious prescriptions castes priests warriors agricultural laborers artisans shepherds these castes however were in no wise absolutely separated from one another form of government despotic monarchy with divine attributes also in possession of the highest spiritual power strong influence of the priests especially after the fourteenth century but they never controlled the supreme power 
the pyramids are gigantic sepulchres of the kings over thirty still exist footnote lepsius saw traces and remains of sixty-seven pyramids bruch of more than seventy End of footnote. the largest at giza was originally four hundred and eighty feet high and still measures four hundred and fifty feet the obelisks of which one is now at paris several in rome one in london and one in new york are cut from single blocks of stone monoliths and were offerings to the sun-god ra the sphinxes were symbols of the sun-god chronology the egyptians filled the space before mina the first of the historic line of kings by the assumption of three dynasties of gods demigods and the mysterious manis the list of kings after mina was given at length by the priest manetho about two fifty b c in his history of egypt he arranged them in thirty dynasties a division which is still used to reconcile the names and dates given by manetho with the records upon the monuments is a difficult matter owing in part to the fact that several of the dynasties of manetho probably reigned contemporaneously in different parts of egypt that it was the custom for a king to associate his son with himself during the latter part of his reign and that the son afterwards reckoned his reign from the date of such association hence the systems of chronology drawn up by egyptologists very greatly there are in general two schools one the long chronology advocated on the continent wherein the dates assigned to mina vary from fifty seven o two back to thirty six twenty three bunsen to the short chronology advocated in england wherein the dates assigned to mina vary between twenty seven hundred and twenty four forty in the following pages of the chronology of lepsius is followed with the exception of the date assigned to mina which lepsius gives us thirty eight ninety two b c these dates should be compared with the list given by bruch and by rawlinson before three thousand the old empire of the egyptians in the lower valley of the nile founded according to egyptian tradition by mina menes footnote the royal nomenclature of the egyptians is as picturesquely varied as their chronology i have given first some form of the true egyptian name as found on the monuments generally that adopted by bruch and have followed it by the more common name as given by manetho herodotus or the jewish scriptures in parenthesis translator into footnote capital memphis twenty eight hundred to twenty seven hundred the kings khufu kafra menkara according to herodotus cheops kephron mykerinos the builders of the largest pyramids fourth dynasty memphis called the pyramid dynasty about twenty four hundred removal of the centre of government of the empire to thebes of the princes of this line the following deserve mention amenem hot the first twenty three eighty to twenty three seventy one who seems to have extended the power of egypt up the nile and over a part of nubia you sir the first twenty three seventy one to twenty three twenty five who continued the conquests of his predecessor and erected obelisks amemmen hot the second you sir the second you sir the third amenem hot the third twenty two twenty one to twenty one seventy nine constructed lake mary that is lake of inundations footnote called by the greeks merus moirus herodotus one one o one and erroneously interpreted as a royal name end of footnote a large reservoir for regulating the water supply of the nile and built south of this lake the so-called labyrinth a large palace for ceremonial acts and sacrifices these six monarchs belong to the twelfth dynasty of thebes about twenty one hundred egypt conquered by the hyksos or shepherd kings the hyksos derived from hyk king and shasu shepherds contracted into sos were wandering tribes of semitic descent about eighteen hundred thebes revolted against the rule of the hyksos native rulers maintained themselves in upper egypt after a long contest the shepherd kings were driven out 
of egypt completely under king Amos amosis of thebes sixteen eighty four to sixteen fifty nine their epic covers the thirteenth to seventeenth dynasties sixteen seventy to five twenty five the new empire capital at first thebes under thutmose the third thutmosis fifteen ninety one to fifteen sixty five eighteenth dynasty increased rapidly in power and extent fifteen twenty four to fourteen eighty eight under tutmus and his successors especially amenhotep the third amenophis successful expeditions against the syrians ruthen and against the ethiopians in the south erection of magnificent palaces and temples at thebes ruins near the present villages of karnak luxor and medinet abu near the latter two sitting colossi statues of amenhotep one of which the greeks call the musical statue of memnon fourteen thirty eight to thirteen eighty eight similar success in war fell to the lot of seti the first sethos expeditions to ethiopia arabia and to the euphrates temple of amon on the left bank of the nile opposite thebes his son ramesu the second thirteen eighty eight to thirteen twenty two the great sestu ra ramses was victorious in the early part of his reign but could not long maintain his supremacy over syria nineteenth dynasty in spite of this a peculiar tradition transformed him into that military hero whom the greeks knew as sesostris herodotus to one o two to one ten or sesusus diodorus siculus one fifty three to fifty eight and to whom they ascribed fabulous expeditions to thrace and india this tradition seems to have had its origin in the bombastic expressions common to the royal inscriptions of the egyptians and in poetic exaltations of his earlier victories in the greek account we have besides a confusion of recollections of the glorious deeds of thutmus and amenhotep of seti and ramesu the third during his long reign he covered egypt with magnificent buildings splendid palace known as the house of rameses south of karnak temple of amon four hundred miles above syene commencement of a canal between the red sea and the nile ramesu the second was probably the oppressor of the hebrews under his successor minep ta thirteen twenty two to thirteen o two that is beloved of ptah occurred the exodus of the hebrews from egypt footnote it may have occurred under his successor of the same name the date of whose reign as well as the reigns of the kings immediately preceding would have to be placed several decades earlier in agreement with dunker and maspero in the footnote twelve sixty nine to twelve forty four ramesu the third ramsinitis twentieth dynasty successful resistance offered to the libyan and semitic tribes expeditions as far as phoenicia and syria story of the theft from the treasury herodotus to one twenty one twelve forty four to ten ninety one decay of the empire under the later kings of the name of rameses ten ninety one a new dynasty twenty one came to the throne with king herhor smendes the seat of their power was tanis in the delta whence they are called tanites loss of supremacy over ethiopia where the kingdom of napata or moro was founded nine sixty one to nine forty sha shang the first se sankis she sak from bubastis founded a new dynasty twenty two footnote the opinion of Brugge, history of egypt two one ninety eight that an assyrian conquest of egypt occurred at this time and that shah shang the first was the son of the conqueror nimrod king of assyria has not found favour among egyptologists translator End of footnote he undertook nine forty nine a successful expedition against judea jerusalem conquered and plundered seven thirty the ethiopians under shabak sabako conquered egypt which they governed for fifty-eight years under three successive kings twenty-fifth dynasty six seventy two an expedition of the assyrians under esar haddon against egypt the king of the assyrians and his son ashur banapal sardanapalus put an end to the rule of the ethiopians under taharak or turhaka 
the second successor of shabak and entrusted the government of egypt to twenty governors most of whom were natives six fifty three one of these governors Samatik, in alliance with gyges king of lydia with the help of carians phoenicians and ionians made himself independent of assyria and sole ruler of egypt twenty sixth dynasty of sais the tale of the twelve native princes the dodecarchy of herodotus and diodorus according to which samaticus defeated his eleven co-regents at mo memphis is not historical the number twelve is derived from the twelve courts of columns in the labyrinth which according to herodotus and diodorus was built by the twelve princes whereas this gigantic building had already been standing fifteen hundred years six fifty three to six ten samatik the first king of egypt from the mouths of the nile to elephantine above which place the ethiopians held the supremacy twenty sixth dynasty new capital sais in the delta where samatik built a magnificent palace egypt opened to foreigners who were favoured in the army and settled at various points cast of interpreters greek factory at naucratis dissatisfaction among the military caste emigrations upward along the nile to ethiopia samatik carried on wars in syria phoenicia and palestine they were probably undertaken in the first instance to strengthen his frontier against a new attack by the assyrians which he dreaded these wars led to no lasting conquests the son of samatik neku neko six ten to five ninety five revived the plan of rameses to unite the nile and the red sea by a canal but did not succeed in carrying it out by his orders africa was circumnavigated by phoenician seamen he undertook expeditions to syria where he was at first successful and defeated the king of judah in the battle of megiddo six o nine but was afterwards defeated by the babylonians in the battle of karkemish six o five loss of all his conquests in asia neku's son sama the second five ninety five to five eighty nine expedition against ethiopia without success his son hophra five eighty nine to five seventy aprius fought without lasting success against nebuchadnezzar and sent help to the tribes of libya against cyrene his defeated army revolted and he was defeated at the head of ionian and carian mercenaries captured and strangled five seventy to five twenty six amas amasis an egyptian of low origin ascended the throne encouragement of foreigners especially of the greeks carried still farther numerous grecian temples erected in naucratis friendship with cyrene and polycrates of samos magnificent buildings especially in sais the son of amasis samatik the third five twenty five defeated in the battle of pelusium by cambyses egypt a persian province end of section three Section 4 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alan O. Impara. The World Story, Volume 14. An Outline of Universal History by Carl Pletz. Translated by William H. Tillingast. Section 4. Part 2. Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, Semitic. Geography. The land of the Jews is bounded north by Silo, Syria, west by Phoenicia, the Mediterranean, and the land of the Philistines, south by Arabia Petraea, east by the Arabian Desert. The name Canaan, that is, lowland, was originally applied to the region along the coast but was at an early date extended to the inland country. The names Canaanite and Phoenician have properly the same meaning. The first was the Semitic, the second the Grecian name for the inhabitants of the whole land before the Jewish conquest. Palestine was originally the name of the southern coastland, which was so called after the Semitic tribe of the Philistines, Pelishtim, which had possession of it, but was transferred by Egyptians and Greeks to the land occupied by the Jews. In the Bible, 
the country is called the Promised Land, that is, the land promised by Jehovah to the children of Israel. The River Jordan, which rises in the mountain range of Anti Lebanon and empties into the Dead Sea, Sodom, Gomorrah, runs through the middle of the country. After the Jewish conquest, the country was divided into the twelve provinces of the twelve tribes. After the death of Solomon, into the kingdoms of Judah and Israel, at the time of Christ, into four districts, one, Judea, Jerusalem, Hebrew, Jerusalem, Greek, Jerusalem, with the fortress of Zion and the temple on Mount Moriah, Bethlehem, Jericho, Joppa, now Jaffa on the coast, two, Samaria, Samaria, Sechem, three, Galilea, Nazareth, Capernaum on the Sea of Tiberias or Genezareth, Cana, east from Jordan, 4. Perea. In the country of the Philistines, the coast region between Palestine and Egypt, Ashdod, Ascalon, Gaza, Akron, Goth. Chronology. As is the case with the earliest history of all nations, the chronology of Jewish history is uncertain. There is a long and a short system, but here the short system found favor on the continent, while the long system prevails in England. 2000. Year Uncertain. Abraham, Abram, Patriarch of the Hebrews. That is, those from the other side, because they immigrated from Ur in Babylonia. Israelites or Jews. According to the traditions of the Hebrews, Abraham had two sons, Ishmael by Hagar, the ancestor of the Ishmaelites, Arabians, and Isaac by his lawful wife Sarah, the son of Isaac by Rebekah, Jacob, or Israel, the true tribal ancestor of the Hebrews, Jacob's twelve sons, by Leah, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, by Rachel, Joseph, Benjamin, by Bilhah, Dan, Naphtali, by Zilpah, Gad, Asher. 1550. Year Uncertain. Joseph. The tribe of the Hebrews migrated to Egypt. They settled in the land of Goshen, on the right bank of the pollution mouth of the Nile. It is claimed that the master of Joseph was Apepi, the last of the shepherd kings of Egypt. See page 4, where the chronology does not agree with the theory, which, however, is no objection, as it could be easily made to conform. 1320. Year Uncertain. Footnote. English scholars place the Exodus at 1652 or 1491. End footnote. Moses conducted the Hebrews out of Egypt. Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. The Laws of Moses. About 1250, the Israelites, Joshua, after a long nomadic life in the peninsula of Sinai and on the east of Jordan, conquered the Promised Land, but without entirely subjugating the former inhabitants. Theocracy. That is, the nation was under the immediate guidance of Jehovah. The office of the high priest was hereditary in the family of Aaron, the brother of Moses. The tabernacle, a portable temple or holy tent. The Ark of the Covenant. To the family of Levi, son of Jacob Israel, was given the exclusive care and service of the tabernacle and all things used in the religious ceremonial. The other twelve tribes, named from ten sons of Jacob, see above, and two sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, settled in separate districts, which were more or less cut off from one another by remnants of the former inhabitants and formed an exceedingly loose union of twelve small states under tribal chiefs, which was at times hard-pressed by neighboring tribes. Judges, Shofetim, men raised up by Jehovah in times of need, especially military leaders in the wars against the Canaanite tribes. Amorites, of whom the Jebusites were a part, Amalekites, Hittites, Hivites, and against the Philistines, Midianites, Ammonites, Moabites, Judges, Ehud, the heroine Deborah, Gideon, 
conqueror of the Midianites, Jephthah, conqueror of the Ammonites, Samson, the terror of the Philistines. 1070. The Philistines subjugated the whole country this side Jordan. At the demand of the people, Samuel, the last judge in Israel, anointed a brave man of the tribe of Benjamin. 1055. Year uncertain. Saul as king of the Jews. Victory of Saul over the Moabites, Philistines, Edomites, and Amalekites. Samuel, being at variance with Saul, anointed David from the tribe of Judah as king at the command of Jehovah. David fled to the Philistines from the persecution of Saul. Saul, defeated by the Philistines, put an end to his life. 1033, year uncertain. For seven years, David was recognized as king by the tribe of Judah only. The other tribes under the influence of the captain Abner, adhering to Saul's son Ishbosheth. After the murder of Abner and Ishbosheth, all the tribes acknowledged David as king in the assembly at Hebron. 1025, year uncertain. David, kingdom of the Jews at the highest point of its power. David wrested Jerusalem from the Jebusites and made it his residence. He restrained the Philistines within their own borders. His sway extended from the northeast end of the Red Sea to Damascus. Erection of a royal palace at Zion. Ark of the Covenant placed in Jerusalem. Organization of the army. Religious poetry of the Hebrews at the height of its development. The Psalms. Revolt and death of Absalom. Ahithophel. David passed over his son Adonijah by Hagith and other sons and appointed his son by Bathsheba his successor. 993. Year Uncertain. Solomon. Erection of the Temple of Jehovah and a new palace in Jerusalem with the aid of workmen from Tyre. Magnificent court. Standing army. Extensive commerce. Defection of Damascus. Foundation of Tadmor in an oasis of the Syrian desert. At the close of Solomon's reign, toleration of foreign idolatry in Jerusalem. After the death of Solomon, 953, year uncertain. Division of the kingdom of Jews. Footnote. The long system gives 975 B.C. End footnote. The tribe of Judah, the tribe of Simeon, which had become united with Judah, and a part of Benjamin, with the Levites, remained true to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and formed the kingdom of Judah, capital Jerusalem. The other tribes, under Jeroboam, formed the kingdom of Israel, farther north, capital at first Sechem, still later Samaria and Jezreel. These two kingdoms were frequently at war with one another. Kingdom of Israel after the death of the energetic Jeroboam, 953 to 927, his son Nadab was murdered by the captain Basha, who ascended the throne, 925. His son and successor Elah was slain by Zimri. Tibni and Omri disputed the throne, but Omri prevailed in the end, 899. The son of Omri, Ahab, married Jezebel, princess of Tyre whereby the practice of Phoenician idolatry, Baal and Astarte, was extended in Israel. Contest of the Prophets, Elijah, Elisha, etc., with the idolatrous monarchy. Israel and Judah united for a short time. Ahab's son Azaziah, 853-851, the captain Jehu, anointed king by Elisha, slew the brother of Azahiah, Joram, 851 to 843, and put to death Jezebel and 70 sons and grandsons of Ahab. Jehu, 843 to 815, destroyed the temple of Baal and put to death the priests of that god. Decline of Israel's power, which was only temporarily revived by the fourth king of the line of Jehu, Jeroboam II, 790 to 749. After the fall of the house of Jehu, the kingdom of Israel became tributary to the Assyrians. Tiglath-Pileser conquered the northeastern part of the kingdom. Hoshea, the last king of Israel, 734, tried to free his country from the Assyrian yoke, but was defeated and captured by Shalmaneser IV. After a three-year siege, 
722. Footnote. In the date 722, the Hebrew chronology agrees with that of the Assyrian monuments. End footnote. Samaria was captured by Sargon, king of the Assyrians, the kingdom of Israel was destroyed, and a part of the people carried away and settled in Assyria and Media. Kingdom of Judah In the reign of Rehoboam, the country was overrun by the Egyptians under the pharaoh Shashang, Shishak. Sack of Jerusalem, 949 Rehoboam's grandson Asa, 929 to 873, abolished idolatry which was prohibited by the law. He was compelled to buy assistance from the king of Damascus against Basha of Israel. Energetic reign of his son, Jehoshaphat, 873 to 848. In the hope of putting an end to the war with the kingdom of Israel, Jehoshaphat married his son, Jehoram, 848 to 844, to Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab of Israel and Jezebel. After the son of Athaliah, Azahiah, was murdered while on a visit to the king of Israel, together with the whole royal family of the kingdom of Israel as above described, Athaliah, 843-837, to seized the supreme power in Jerusalem, put to death her own grandchildren in order to destroy the tribe of David, Joash alone being miraculously rescued and brought up in the temple of Jehovah, and introduced the worship of Baal in Jerusalem. Athaliah was overthrown and put to death by the high priest Jehoiada and the young Joash raised to the throne. The worship of Baal was abolished. Joash, 837-797, was obliged to purchase the retreat of the army from Damascus which was besieging Jerusalem. Murder of Joash. Under his son Amaziah, 797-792, Jerusalem was captured by the Israelites the temple and palace plundered. Amaziah was murdered, but his son Uzziah, Azariah 792-740, successfully resisted the murderers and raised the kingdom again to a position of power and authority. The Prophet Isaiah Under the successors of Amaziah, the kingdom of Judah, hard-pressed by the kingdom of Israel and by Damascus, became tributary to the Assyrians. King Hezekiah, 728 to 697, again abolished idolatry, refused to pay tribute to the Assyrians, and allied himself with the Egyptians. The Assyrians under Sennacherib besieged Jerusalem in vain, but carried off many of the inhabitants of the open country into captivity. Hezekiah's son Manasseh, 697 to 642, transformed the temple of Jehovah into a temple of Astarte, and sacrificed to Baal and Moloch, in spite of the opposition of the prophets. He submitted again to the Assyrians, was carried captive to Babylon, but in the end restored to his throne. Under his grandson Josiah, 640-609, to the country was ravaged by Scythians. Religious reaction against idolatry, Jeremiah. Reformation of the worship of Jehovah, according to the Book of the Law of Moses, which was rediscovered in the Temple, 622. King Josiah fell in the Battle of Megiddo, 609, against the Egyptian king Nico. Niku. The kingdom of Judah, subject to the Egyptians, and after the defeat of Nico at Karshemesh, 605, to the Babylonians. Jehoiakim endeavored to revolt, but was put to death. His son, Jehoiachin, was carried into captivity with many of his subjects by the Babylonians, 597. An attempt on the part of the last king, Zedekiah, to regain independence was unsuccessful in spite of Egyptian assistance. Jerusalem was besieged, 588 to 586. An Egyptian army advancing to its relief was defeated and compelled to retreat. 586. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, captured Jerusalem. Destruction of the city and burning of the temple. Many of the Jews were slain. Those who were left were carried into the Babylonian captivity, the prophet Ezekiel. 537. The Jews sent back to Palestine by Cyrus. Rebuilding of the temple, Zerubbabel, which was not completed, however, until the time of Darius I, 516. The Jews subject at first to the Persians, 538 to 332, then to Alexander the Great, 332 to 323, afterwards to the Ptolemies, 323 to 198, 
and finally to the Seleucid kings of Syria, 198 to 167. 167 to 130. Emancipation of the Jews by the Maccabees or Asmoneans after a struggle lasting nearly 14 years. Leaders. The priest, Mattathias, and his five sons, especially Judas Maccabeus. A great-grandson of Mattathias, Aristobulus, assumed the title of king, 105. Under his successors, strife between the Pharisees and Sadducees. 63. Pompeius, called in to help the Pharisees, made the Jews tributary to the Romans. 40. Herod, the Great, son of the Idumean Antipater, recognized by the Roman Senate as dependent king of Judea. Birth of Christ, four years before the beginning of our era, year uncertain. 6 AD, after a short reign of the three sons of Herod, Judea became a part of the Roman province of Syria. Two tetrarchies, however, remained independent, Galilea until 32 A.D., Perea until 33 A.D. 41 to 44, Judea again a dependent kingdom under Herod Agrippa I, a grandson of Herod the Great, then a Roman province again. Agrippa II was made king over a small portion in dependence on Rome. 66. Revolt of the Jews against the Roman supremacy, ending in the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus. 70. A large part of the Jews assembled in Jerusalem for the observance of the Passover perished by starvation and the Roman sword. Many thousands were taken captive to Rome. The historian Josephus. 132 to 135. Another uprisal of the Jews under Hadrian on account of the foundation of the colony Aelia Capitolina on the site of Jerusalem, wherein more than half a million perished. Dispersal of a great part of the survivors, nevertheless a considerable number remained in Palestine. End of section 4. Recording by Alan O. Impara. Section 5 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jenny Hughes. The World's Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plotz. Translated by William H. Tillinghast. Section 5, Part 3. Babylonians and Assyrians. Semitic. Geography. Babylonia, called by the Hebrews Shinar, is the country lying between the Euphrates and Tigris and stretching from the point where these rivers approach one another, about 350 miles from their mouth, to where they empty into the Persian Gulf by several arms as Passa Tigris, now Shat el Arab. In the neighbourhood of the present village of Hilla stood Babylon, in the Babylonian form Babylu, called by the Hebrews Babel i.e. gates or dwelling of the god Bel, a huge rectangular city situated since the time of Nebuchadnezzar on both banks of the Euphrates, about 34 miles in circumference, Clitarchus, Herodotus gives about 45 miles, and surrounded by two brick walls of unusual thickness and height. The city was large enough to afford a refuge to a great number of the inhabitants of the country during incursions of nomadic tribes, and contained fields of considerable extent, woods and gardens. In Babylon, A, the Temple of Bel, Tower of Babel, a huge square building of brick, consisting of eight diminishing stories rising in pyramidal form. It is said to have been originally 600 feet high. Footnote, according to Offert, the Temple of Bel is to be sought in the ruins of Burth Nimrod, on the site of Old Borsippa. Rawlinson, in the five great monarchies of the east disputes this, because Borsippa was a separate village lying outside the walls of the capital until the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, and finds the Tower of Babel in a great quadrangular ruin, called Babel by the Arabs, on the east bank of the Euphrates in Babylon. End of footnote. B. Two palaces, the one on the east side of the Euphrates having the hanging gardens, the construction of which is wrongly ascribed to Semiramis, and which were terraced pleasure grounds. Assyria, Asher, is bounded on the north by the highlands of Armenia, on the east by the plateau of Aram, 
on the south by the Didla, a branch of the Tigris, and on the west by the Tigris itself. The smaller region called Assyria by the Greeks lay within this territory, between the Tigris and its branch, the great Zab, which flows into the Tigris below the present Mosul. On the Tigris stood Nineveh, Ninua, the palace, Nivos, surrounded with huge walls. The ruins lie opposite the present Mosul. Oldest residence of the kings, Ashur, afterwards founded Kala, founded by Sargon, Dursarugin, Korsahad. Religion of the Babylonians and Assyrians The religion of the Semitic peoples, with the exception of the Hebrews, was a worship of nature, wherein divinity was conceived as the personified force of nature in human form, male and female. Among the gods of the Babylonians, the oldest was El, amongst those of the Assyrians, Ashur. The third, Bel, Baal, the lord of all, appeared as the creative but also the destructive force in nature. The goddess Belit, or Baltus, in Herodotus Melita, the queen and mother of the gods, is the fruitful and reproductive principle, the goddess of love, fertility and birth. Her opposite is Istar, the goddess of war and destruction. Confused with Belit is the goddess who brings alternately life and blessing, death and destruction, like the Asherah Astar to the Phoenicians and Carthaginians. In Babylon, there was a complicated system of star worship. The Chaldeans, or caste of priests in Babylon, possessed some astronomical and astrological skill. This name was properly that of the Semitic population of Babylonia, but Western writers applied it chiefly to the priests. Civilization an exact system of weights and measures which was used far outside the borders of Babylonia. Cuneiform writing, a system of characters formed by the gradual abbreviation of hieroglyphics. Magnificent structures of brick. System of canals for the irrigation of the country and for the regulation of the yearly overflow of the Tigris and Euphrates. Important manufacturing industries and extensive commerce. Chronology an astronomical system and a mythical history closely resembling the biblical account of the creation and deluge, epic of Iztuba. The inscriptions give many names, but few dates are satisfactorily established before 900 BC. 4000 to 731, Old Babylonian, so-called Chaldean Empire. 4000 to 3000, Civilization, originating perhaps in a non-Semitic people, Sumer and Akkad, was adopted, with the cuneiform writing by a Semitic people who came probably from the south. Independent, hostile cities, Ur, Erech, Larsam, Agad, Akkad, Babylon. 3800. Sargon reached the Mediterranean, Hammurabi united Babylonia. Footnote, Hammurabi's Code of Laws, about 2200 BC, was lately discovered. End of footnote. 2300 to 2076. Supremacy of Elam, Elimais, or Susiana, a non-Semitic kingdom east of Babylonia. The second dynasty of Berossus. Kudur Nanchundi, Chedor La Omar. Footnote. Berossus, at the time of Alexander, compiled from Babylonian records a history in which he mentioned the following dynasties. Dates from Dilich. Antidiluvian, 10 kings, 432,000 years. Post-Diluvian, 1, 86 kings, 33,091 years. 2, 8 Median tyrants, 224 years. 2,300 to 2,076. 3. 11 kings, 4. 49 Chaldean kings, 458 years, 1983 to 1525. 5. 9 Arabian kings, 245 years, 1525 to 1257. 6. 45 kings, 526 years, 1257 to 731. End of footnote. About 2000. Babylonia, after 300 years, again independent. About 1900. Assyria, settled by emigrants from Babylonia. Nimrod? 
1525 to 1257, Kassite kings of Babylonia, the Arabians of Berosus. 1500 to 710, constant wars with Assyria, final subjugation of Babylonia after the revolts of Merodach Baladan. 1900 to 608, 605, Assyrian Empire. Colonised probably from Babylonia, Assyria gradually grew into a powerful rival of the mother state. The chronology falls into five periods. 1. 1900 to 1500. 2. 1500 to 1300. Wars of Babylonia ending in Babylonian overlordship. 3. 1220 to 930. Assyria again independent. 4. 930 to 626. Brilliant epoch. 5. 626 to 608, 605, Fall of the Empire. 1900 to 930. Of the first three periods, little is known. Tiglathadar I, about 1310, conquered Babylonia, but Assyria was soon subjugated. Tiglath Pileser I, 1115 to 1105, conquered from Baghdad and Babylon to the Mediterranean. 930 to 626. Brilliant epoch of Assyrian history. The inscriptions become frequent, full and exact. It was a time of expansion, conquest and great activity in architecture, sculpture and literature. Among the kings may be mentioned. 886 to 858. Ashur Natsipal, Sardanapalus. Footnote. Formerly called Ashur Adanipal. End of footnote. Military expeditions to Zagros, Armenia, Babylonia and Syria. Erection of a palace at Kala. His son, Shalmaneser II, 858 to 823, fought with Ahab in Syria and subjugated Jehu. 810 to 871. Rama Nirari captured Damascus and made Samaria and Philistia tributary. His wife, Semiramis, was Semiramis. A tradition of later growth reported by the Greeks, Diodorus on the authority of Ctesias, connects the establishment of the Assyrian supremacy over almost the whole of Western Asia, the building of Nineveh and Babylon, with the names of the king Ninus and his consort Semiramis. Both Ninus, son of the god Bel, and Semiramis, daughter of the goddess Melita, are mythical creations into whose reigns tradition has condensed the deeds of a long series of warlike rulers so that no achievements were left for their successors. And these from Ninias down appear as effeminate weaklings. Ninus is unknown to the Assyrian monuments, and Semiramis first appears in the 9th century. On the other hand, we know that a goddess answering to Istarbelit was worshipped in Syria under the name of Semiramis. Medo-Persian bards seem to have changed the divinities Bel and Istarbelit into heroes, and have formed the names Ninus and Ninias from the name of the city Ninua, Nineveh. 745-727 Tiglath-Pileser II, identical with the King Pool mentioned in the Bible, made Babylonia, which was at that time divided into several states, Western Iran, Armenia, Syria, Phoenicia, Judah and Israel, subject to Assyria. Shalmaneser IV, 727 722, suppressed the revolt of the Phoenician cities and the Kingdom of Israel. Sargon, Sarakin, 722 705, conquered Samaria and destroyed the Kingdom of Israel. He received tribute from Arabia, Egypt, and Cyprus, suppressed revolts in Armenia, Media, and Babylonia, and united the latter with Assyria in 710. Residence Dosarakim, now course about, not far from Nineveh. His son, Sennacherib, Sennacherib, 705-681, retained his hold upon Babylonia in spite of repeated insurrections, but was unsuccessful in his wars with Egypt and Judah, and lost the supremacy over Syria. Fleet in the Persian Gulf, foundation of Tarsus. His son, Esarhaddon, Asher Akadim, 681-668, suppressed a new revolt of the Babylonians, reconquered Syria, Phoenicia, Cyprus, Judah and a part of Arabia, and in 672 conquered Egypt from the Ethiopians, entrusting the government to 20 governors, most of whom were native. Assyria at the height of her power. One of his sons was made viceroy of Babylonia. 
The other, Ashurbanipal, Sardanapalus, 668-626, defended Egypt, at first with success, against the kings of Ethiopia in native insurrections, but lost it in 653 by the revolt of Semeticus. On the other hand, he strengthened the Assyrian power in Syria, Arabia, Cilicia, as well as Babylonia, where his brother had revolted, conquered the kingdom of Elam, and received tribute from Lydia. Erection of magnificent palaces, foundation of a library at Nineveh, highest development of Assyrian art. About 640-650. Revolt of the Medes. Of the Medes, little is known until they were attacked by the Assyrians about 830 BC. About 710 their resistance was broken and their country was soon subjected to Assyria, and so continued until about 640. Phraotas, Favartis, son of Dejosis, Dehidva, a petty chief among the Medes, revolted but fell in battle. 633. His son Siaxerus, Uvakshatera, continued the struggle, which was, however, soon interrupted, 632, by the eruption of Scythian tribes which had wandered about Western Asia, plundering as they went, as far as the borders of Egypt, for twenty-eight years, it is said, though eight is the more probable number. After Siaxerus had rid the country of them, he made another attack on Assyria, which had been much weakened by the Scythians. For the purpose of destroying the Assyrian kingdom, Siaxerus allied himself with the Chaldean Nabopolassar, Nabuhabal Assur, Assyrian governor of Babylon since 625, who had made himself independent. Desperate struggle with the Assyrian king Sarakos, Ashurabilili, 626 to 608, 625, son of Sardanapalus V. 608, 605. Footnote, the date is doubtful. Herodotus implies a date as late as 603 to 605. Beresus, as reported by Abidinus and Polyhistor, gives 625. The former date is advocated by Clinton and Dunker, the latter by G. Rawlinson and Lenormont. End footnote. After a long siege, Nineveh was taken and destroyed, as the enemy broke into the city. Saracos set fire to the royal palace and perished in the flames with his wives and treasurer. End of the kingdom of Assyria. Now Palassar united with Babylonia the whole of northern Mesopotamia on the right bank of the Tigris, the rest falling to the share of Siaxerus, who had already subjugated Armenia and the Iranian portions of the kingdom of Assyria. The Grecian story of the effeminate Sardanapalus, Ctesias in Diodorus II, is the counterpart of their tales about the masculine Semiramis. According to this story, Sardanapalus, on the fall of the city, burns himself upon a magnificent bier 400 feet high which burns for ten days. This story seems to be an application of the myth of the god who burned himself and rose from the flames, whom the Semitic peoples associated with Ishtar, Astart, and whose nature they confounded with hers. 608, 605 to 538. New Empire of Babylon. After the Assyrian conquest of Babylonia, about 710, the latter country continued subject to Assyria, with intervals of rebellion, until the successful combination of Nabopolassar and Siaxerus destroyed the power of Assyria. Babylon then took the lead among the nations of the east, rivalled by Media alone. 604 to 561. Nebuchadnezzar, Nahukudurasur, son of Nabopolassar, during the reign of his father defeated Necho, king of Egypt, at Carchemis on the Euphrates, 605, conquered Syria, destroyed Jerusalem, 586, and subdued Tyre, 585. Enlargement and adornment of Babylon on the east bank of the Euphrates. Construction of a bridge over the Euphrates and of a new palace for the hanging gardens which tradition assigns to Semiramis. Erection of the Median Wall from the Euphrates to the Tigris. Magnificent waterworks. The reservoir at Sippara, Safavain. After Nebuchadnezzar, rapid decline of the dynasty, which became extinct in 555. 538. Babylon, last king Nabonetus or Nabunahid, reigning in conjunction with his son Belsharazur, the biblical Belshazzar, taken by Cyrus. Babylon, a Persian province. End of section 5
section six of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by carl pletz translated by william h tillinghast section six part four phoenicians and carthaginians semitic down to the war of the latter with the romans geography phoenicia phoenica is the grecian name of canaan and was derived from the tribal name phoenus in the narrower sense the name denotes the strip of coast five to fourteen miles wide and one hundred and fifty miles long which lies north of the country of the philistines and the hebrews and west of mount lebanon this strip was inhabited by three tribes one sidonians that is fishers cities sidon sor called by the greeks tyros two arvidites city arvid in greek arados three giblites cities biblis or gebel and Beritos. religion of the phoenicians the god baal bel of the babylonians and the goddess ashera baeotis beleth of the babylonians the divinities of life birth and the genial forces of nature were opposed to the god moloch that is king the babylonian adar the devouring and destroying and yet cleansing fire also god of war and the maiden goddess ashtart human sacrifices to moloch boys and youths to ashtart youths and maidens afterwards baal and moloch were confused into one divinity who under the name of melkart that is king of the city became the guardian divinity of tyre in the same way ashera and ashtart were united into one divinity who when represented as a grim wandering goddess vanishing with the changing light of the moon bears the name dido but when represented as a kind and gentle divinity newly restored to the knowledge of mankind that of anna that is pleasant the political constitution of the phoenician cities was an hereditary monarchy but the royal power was checked by the existence of two senates thirteen hundred period of sidon's greatest power favoured by the situation of their country and urged by an energetic industry which led to the invention or development of many arts and manufactures such as purple dye weaving glass-making mining work in metals and architecture the phoenicians established at an early period certainly not later than fifteen hundred a carrying trade by land to babylonia arabia assyria armenia as well as by sea which time only made more extensive in close connection with the commerce by sea was the foundation of numerous colonies thus in cyprus were founded citium amathus paphos the centre of the worship of ashera whence originated the grecian worship of aphrodite that goddess born of the foam of this sea that is whose cult came to greece by sea other colonies were founded in sicilia rhodes crete cythera as well as on many of the islands of the aegean sea and at points along the coast of greece further west again colonies were planted in melita or malta in sicily on the southern coast minoa greek heraclea on the northern coast solius sella equals cliff panormus Makanoth at the western end of the island matia on sardinia Caralis, on the north coast of africa two cities of leptis hadrumetum utica the two towns of hippo in the country called tarsus or tarshish that is southern spain beyond the columns of hercules straits of gibraltar godder or gades that is walls fortress now cadiz founded about eleven hundred from this point the phoenicians extended their commercial dealings 
still further to the western coasts of africa and to the islands of tin the cassiterides britain footnote english antiquarians of the present day consider it probable that the phoenicians never set foot either in the scilly isles or in britain but received what british tin they did obtain at second or third hand from the celts of gaul the nitae question mark tin was found in the river beds of western gaul in the footnote and the coasts of the german ocean where they bought amber which the native tribes obtained by barter from the baltic mythical representations of these voyages and settlements of the phoenicians are contained in a series of well-known grecian tales story of the rape of europa that is the grim daughter of phoenix that is the phoenician from sidon by zeus in the form of a bull whereby is denoted the moon goddess dido ashtart who flees towards the west story of minos the son of zeus and europa the powerful ruler of crete his wife is pacify that is she who shines upon all story of the minor tower that is bull of minos another conception of baal moloch shut up in the labyrinth to whom athens had to send human offerings daedalus builder of the labyrinth in crete is the personification of that technical dexterity which the hellenes acquired from the phoenicians cadmus too who in search of his sister europa landed in thera and thasos built the cadmia in boeotia and invented the alphabet is the mythical representative of phoenician settlements from which the written alphabet and other elements of eastern civilization were carried to the greeks eleven under tyre though younger than sidon attained the first rank among the phoenician seaboard towns one thousand one to nine sixty seven tyre at the height of its prosperity under king hiram the contemporary of david and solomon and the latter's friend exploring expedition of the tyrians accompanied by the servants of solomon through the red sea to the coast of india ophir hiram filled in the space between the island upon which stood the temple of melkart and new tyre which was also situated on an island and erected buildings on the new land he also narrowed the strait between new tyre and old tyre on the mainland nine seventeen question mark f baal ithophalus high priest of ashtart murdered Thales, the last descendant of hiram and made himself king about seventy question mark years later according to a grecian authority a grandson of this ethbaal decreed in his will that his minor son pygmalion and his daughter elissa should govern tyre in common under the guardianship of their uncle the high priest sikar baal who was to marry elissa the democratic party deprived elissa of her share in the government and pygmalion coming of age murdered sikar baal in consequence of this internal strife and influenced probably by the unfavorable state of the foreign relations advance of the assyrian power towards the mediterranean a large part of the older families left tyre with elissa on an excellent site on the north coast of africa they founded about eight fifty carthage in punic cathada that is the new city between utica in the west and the present cape bon in the east not far from the present tunis double harbour citadel bursa later the foundress elissa became confused with the goddess dido ashtart the protectress of the colony footnote the credibility of this narrative and the interpretations put upon it both as regards the chronology and the facts are contested by o meltzer gesh d carthager book one eighteen seventy nine who admits the truth of these statements only that carthage was a tyrian colony and was certainly founded before the eighth century End of footnote. carthage so far as it comes within the realm of history appears to have been an aristocratic republic with two suffetes or judges frequently called kings and compared with the spartan kings and two senates a large and small only upon occasion of a disagreement between these branches of the government were the people called upon to give their opinion the government tended constantly toward the oligarchical form eight fifty decline of the power of the phoenician cities especially of tyre which was distracted by civil dissensions the phoenicians fell repeatedly under the rule of the assyrians and for a time under that of the egyptians after the fall of the assyrian empire six twenty five six o six 
they became dependent upon the babylonians tyre alone maintaining its freedom until five seventy three favored by the political situation the greeks who had already about one thousand driven the phoenicians out of the aegean sea began to extend their influence in the eastern mediterranean and especially after the second half of the eighth century along the coasts and islands of the western mediterranean and in lower italy and sicily foundation of cyrene and massalia about six hundred attempted settlements upon corsica sardinia and the shores of spain in short the phoenician power was threatened with destruction throughout the entire west brought face to face with this danger carthage which had meantime grown considerably stronger began about six hundred to gather the other phoenician cities under its control to subjugate the country around its own commercial stations and to secure its possession by the establishment of new colonies the carthaginians annexed to their territory the african coast from hippo in the west to beyond leptis in the east and opposed armed resistance to the advancing power of cyrene in the peace which was concluded the altars of the Violini east of leptis were made the boundary the carthaginians subjugated southern spain and sardinia and with etruscan aid drove the phocians from corsica five thirty seven question mark five eighty six to five seventy three tyre successfully endured a thirteen years siege from the land side by nebuchadnezzar but was finally forced to acknowledge the supremacy of the king of babylon five thirty eight after the destruction of the babylonian monarchy by cyrus phoenicia became subject to persia the phoenician cities however retained their independence and their native kings the phoenicians henceforth furnished the principal part of the persian fleet an expedition for the conquest of carthage proposed by cambyses king of persia after the conquest of egypt was rendered impossible of execution by the refusal of the phoenicians to fight against their colony during the persian supremacy sidon was again the first city of phoenicia the carthaginians favoured by the civil dissensions of the greeks in sicily and by the persian war with greece attacked the greek colonies in sicily being secretly in alliance with xerxes question mark four eighty war of the carthaginians in alliance with salinas against the other greek cities in sicily the carthaginian army under hamilcar was utterly defeated and scattered at himera by the tyrants gelan of syracuse Zupacusai and Theron of Agrigentum, Aquilas. Carthaginians purchased peace for two thousand talents, thereby saving their Sicilian cities. Panormus, Solius, Motai. Four hundred nine to three thirty nine. Repeated wars between the Carthaginians and Greeks in Sicily. The Carthaginians called in to assist Agesta against Salinas after conquering Salinas, Amera, Agrigentum and gela secured the supremacy over the western half of sicily a position which they maintained against all attempts of the tyrant dionysius i and timoleon who restored republican liberty to the grecian cities to dislodge them three thirty two capture of the island city Nutara by alexander the great after a seven months siege phoenicia became a part of the great graeco macedonian monarchy and later a part of the kingdom of the seleucidae and for a time of that of the ptolemies three seventeen to two seventy five new wars between the carthaginians and greeks in sicily agathocles tyrant of syracuse sought to bring all sicily under his rule the carthaginians despoiled him of his conquests and besieged syracuse agathocles effected a landing in africa three ten and overran a large part of the carthaginian territory while the syracusans repulsed and annihilated the carthaginian army under the walls of syracuse agathocles returned to sicily his army which he left before carthage was destroyed in the peace with syracuse the carthaginians regained their former possessions in sicily three o six after the death of agathocles party broils in syracuse favoured the advance of the carthaginian power pyrrhus of epirus then in tarentum was called to the aid of the syracusans two seventy eight he was at first successful but offending most of the grecian cities by his severity they took sides with the carthaginians and pyrrhus was forced to leave sicily on the voyage back to italy he was defeated by a carthaginian fleet two seventy six end of section six
Section 7 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Colleen McMahon. The World's Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History, by Carl Pletz. Translated by William H. Tillingast. Section 7. Part 5. Lydians and Phrygians. Lydians, Semitic. Geography. Lydia, in the strict sense, or Maonia, was the middle one of the three divisions of Asia Minor lying on the Aegean Sea, the northern being Mysia, the southern Caria. Rivers, Hermus, Caestrus, Pactolus, Golden Sand, in Lydia. Meander, in Caria. Capital of Lydia, Sardis, at the base of the Timolus Range. The Lydians belonged to the Semitic race, like the Cilicians, and probably the Carians, whereas the other people of Asia Minor were in all likelihood Aryans. The kingdom of Lydia, at the period of its greatest extent, reached to the Halys River, now the Kissel Irmak, and included, beside the countries mentioned above, Bithynia, and Paphlagonia on the Pontus Euxinus, Black Sea, and the inland country of Phrygia. Religion, worship of the sun god Sandon, and the goddesses Bla, Melita Ashera, and Ma, Astarte. The last two became united in one goddess under the name the Great Mother, Sibylla, who was worshipped in Ephesus as Artemis, Diana. Chronology Lydia was ruled by two successive mythical dynasties, the Atyadoe from Attis, son of the god Manus, prior to 1229, and the Sandonido, who traced their origin to the god Sandon, 1229 to 724. The Greeks saw in this latter divinity their Heracles, and called this dynasty, therefore, the Heraclido. The last king of this line, Candalus, was murdered 689 by his favorite, Gyges, in collusion with the king's consort. With Gyges, the dynasty of the Myrmnidae, 689 to 549, came to the throne. Under these sovereigns, the Lydian kingdom, after suffering severely from the Sumerians and being at times subject to Assyria, grew in power and extent. Gyges himself extended his sway over Mysia and to the Hellespont. His two successors conquered Phrygia and carried on an unsuccessful war with the Grecian cities on the seacoast. Alyatus, the fourth of the Myrmnado, warred with Syaxares, king of Media, with success. 610. Indecisive battle between Alyatus and Syaxares. Eclipse of the Sun predicted by Thales of Miletus. In the Treaty of Peace, the Halys was made the boundary between the Lydian and Median kingdoms. The daughter of Aliatus was given in marriage to Astyagus, son of Syaxaris. Aliatus subdued Bithynia and Paphlagonia in the north, Caria in the south, took Smyrna and Colophon, but failed to subdue the remaining coast towns. A vast treasure collected in the royal palace at Sardis. Magnificent buildings. Ruins of royal tombs north of Sardis. 563-549. to 549. Proesis, son of Aliatus, captured Ephesus and afterwards subdued all the Grecian cities of the coast, Ionian, Aeolian, and Dorian, with the exception of Miletus, with which he formed a league. Active intercourse with European Greece. Solon of Athens visited Sardis. After the deposition of his brother-in-law, Astyagus of Media, by Cyrus the Persian, Croesus attacked the Persian Empire. Following the ambiguous advice of the Delphic Oracle, he crossed the Halys. Indecisive battle between Croesus and Cyrus at Pteria. Croesus returned irresolutely to Sardis, whither he was followed by Cyrus, who defeated him in a second battle, captured Sardis, and took Croesus prisoner. 549. Fall of the Kingdom of Lydia, which was united with the Persian Empire. Phrygians. 750 or earlier, an independent monarchy was formed in northwest Phrygia, having its capital at Gordioum. 
its monarchs, the dates of whose reigns are uncertain, bore the names of Gordius and Midas alternately. A Midas, contemporary with Ayatus, about 600 to 579, and a Gordius with Croesus, 570 to 560. Phrygia conquered by Lydia, about 560. Rawlinson. End of section 7. Recording by Colleen McMahon. Section 8 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Carl Pletz, translated by William H. Tillinghast. Section 8, Part 6 indians aryan geography india the central peninsula of the three which project from the southern coast of asia into the indian ocean is a vast triangle having a base and a height of about nineteen hundred miles bounded on the north by the himalaya mountains on the east by the bay of bengal on the west by the gulf of arabia it falls into three geographical divisions one the region of the himalayas the central range forms an almost impassable barrier between india and the mongol tribes of central asia mount everest twenty nine thousand feet on the east this region is separated from burma by the lower ranges of the naga patkoi and yomas ang pass which are pierced by the brahmaputra on the west the sufed ko su Laiman, and the halas separate india from afghanistan and bulakistan but are pierced by the indus river the khyber pass thirty three hundred and seventy three feet and the bolan pass fifty eight hundred feet this region includes nepal and kashmir two the fertile valley of the great rivers which receives the drainage of the northern as well as of the southern slopes of the himalayas river systems indus sutlej provinces of punjab that is the five streams footnote indus ahilam chenab ravi sutlej modern names into footnote sindh ganges provinces of bengal ud raj putana cities calcutta banaras delhi allahabad brahmaputra province of assam deltas of the ganges and brahmaputra three the deccan or southern plateau separated from the ganges valley by the vidhaya mountains five thousand feet and bordered by the east ghats fifteen hundred feet and west ghats three thousand feet rivers godavari krishna kaveri all flowing through the east ghats into the bay of bengal provinces madras bombay mysore etc religion the religion of the early indians as portrayed in the vedic hymns was a worship of nature dayash Pitar, father of heaven varuna the sky indra the rain vapor agni fire marats gods of the storm after the settlement in the ganges valley this primitive faith underwent a change history the indians hindus migrating from the northwest came at first to the valley of the indus and the punjab and then slowly pushed their settlements down the valley of the ganges where they were probably established as early as fifteen hundred b c the native tribes whom they found in the country they either enslaved or pushed into the himalayas on the north and on the to the Deccan in the south dravidians at a later date the hindus spread along the coasts of the deccan and reached ceylon foundation of numerous despotic kingdoms in the conquered district strict separation of the aryan conquerors from the subjugated aborigines development of the royal power and of the priestly influence four principal castes brahmins priests kshatriyas warriors Vizyas, agricultural settlers these three were of pure aryan descent the sudras or servile caste were of aboriginal descent 
Vadasa's slaves transformation of the ancient faith into the religion of brahma brahma the creator vishnu the preserver shiva the destroyer and restorer spiritual tyranny of the brahmans accompanied by a high development of philosophy grammar etc by the brahmans in connection with the explanation of the vedas revelations or services for the various religious ceremonials rig veda the simplest form samaveda yayur veda black and white atharva veda to these were in time attached prose treatises composed by the priests and called the brahmanas one being attached to each veda a second series of editions were the sutras sacred traditions poetry the epics mahabharata ramayana regulation of the entire thought and life in accordance with strict prescriptions which were afterwards about six hundred gathered together into the book of the laws of manu being as it was claimed a divine revelation to him the tribal ancestor of the whole race complicated system of rites and ceremonies prescriptions concerning cleanliness terrors of the doctrine of the second birth magnificent monuments of indian architecture especially the cliff temples which were excavated in the rock both upon and below the surface of the earth later pagodas in the sixth century appearance of the reformer buddha that is the enlightened six twenty three to five forty three properly gautama afterwards siddhartha that is he who has fulfilled his end son of prince Sudodana. buddhism called after its founder was originally a philosophical system without creed or rites having for its object the attainment of moral perfection through its doctrine of the essential equality of all men it was directly opposed to brahmanism the progress of buddhism produced along with certain changes in the old system a strong brahmanistic reaction the war of the religions ended with the expulsion of buddhism from india it maintained itself in kashmir and ceylon only but the loss was offset by great gains in central and eastern asia where it has to-day over three hundred million devotees in tibet china japan etc three twenty seven invasion of the punjab by alexander the great three seventeen to two ninety one formation of great empires of short duration empire of magadha under chadra gutta greek sandra katos and his grandson two sixty three to two twenty six akoka the friend of buddhism after the reign of akoka the punjab fell under the supremacy of the graco bactrian empire in central asia and thus some tincture of greek civilization was imparted to this part of india the bactrian rulers were finally expelled by scythian invaders several dynasties of whom appear to have reigned in the punjab and along the ganges wars of the native prince vikramaditya against the scythians fifty seven b c kanishka greek kanurka was the founder of the last dynasty of scythian kings who were succeeded by an unknown people the guptas another branch of the indo scythians making their way down the indus came into conflict with the guptas and with the general league of the hindus of the south in seventy eight a d in the battle of karor the invaders were utterly defeated and are henceforward not mentioned the guptas reigned in ud and northern india until they were overthrown by foreign invaders traders in the latter half of the fifth century a d End of section eight Section 9 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adrian Stevens. The World's Story, Volume 14. An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plutz. Translated by William H. Tinningast. Section 9. Part 7. Bactrians, Medes, Persians. Arian. Geography. The Bactrians, Medes, and Persians inhabited the plateau of Iran between the Suleiman range in the east and the valley of the Euphrates and Tigris on the west, between the Caspian Sea on the north and the Erythraean Sea, Indian Ocean, on the south. On the western border of this highland, Media, Ekbatana, Med, Hangmatana, i.e. 
place of assemblies. On the southern border, along the Persian Gulf, Persis, Pasagado, Persepolis, Carmenia. On the Erythrian Sea, Gedrosia. On the eastern border, Aracosia, the land of the Parapassinaido, at the foot of the Parapanissus, Hindu Kush. On the northern border, Bactria or Bactriana, Bactra, Parthia, and Hyrcania on the Caspian Sea. In the centre, Aria and Dragania, between the Oxus and the Jaxartes, Sogdiana, Maracanda. East of the lower course of the Tigris, in the lowlands, Susiana, the ancient Elam, with Susa, the principal residence of the Persian kings. Within this broad plateau, a widely accepted theory locates the primeval home of the Aryan or Indo-European or Japhetic race, from which in prehistoric times successive colonies wandered away to the south and west. About 1,000 Zoroaster, Zarathustra, whose doctrine, a spiritual reform of the old Iranic superstitions, was contained in the 21 question mark, books of the Avesta, of which only one has come down to us, the Vendidad, i.e. delivered against the Deiva, the bad spirits. The pith of the doctrine has set forth in the Avesta is the conception of a continuous warfare of the good spirits, whose leader was the good god Ahumazda, or Aramazda, in modern Persian, Ormuzd, and the evil spirits, or Daiva, whose leader was Angromaniu, in modern Persian, Ariman. Over the life and death, welfare or injury of man and his soul after death. Footnote. Avesta is the law itself, Zend the later commentary on the law. Hence, Zend Avesta and the expression Zend language, Zend people. End footnote. In this new doctrine, Mithra, the sun god, originally the highest of the Iranian gods, appeared as a creature of the creator Ahomazda, but nevertheless the equal of the latter in dignity and divinity. Worship of fire, whose blaze scared away the evil spirits of the night, reverence paid to water and the fertile earth, the daughter of Ahomazda. The priests, called Athrava, from Athio, fire, by the Bactrians, and Magians, Maghush, by the Medes, formed a distinct hereditary class, an institution which was copied by the ancient priestly families of Persia after the general acceptance in that country of the Reformed faith, which came to them from Bactria through Media. About 1100. Formation of a powerful empire in Bactria Mythical reminiscences of the deeds of whose kings are perhaps contained in the Shahnameh of the poet Fodusi, about 1000 AD. As early as the 9th century, the Assyrians undertook expeditions against the plateau of Iran, and in the middle of the 8th century, the western portion of this plateau, Media and Persia, became permanently subject to Assyria. 640. Revolt of the Medes from the Assyrians. 640 to 558, Median Empire. The first prince of a Median dynasty mentioned was Dayokis, Old Persian Dayauka, 708 to 655, to whom is ascribed the foundation of the capital Ekbatana. He does not appear, however, to have reigned over the whole of Media or to have been independent but rather to have continued to pay tribute to the Assyrians. His son, Phraortes, Persian Phravartis, 655-633, was the first who united the whole country under one ruler and established the independence of Media. He made the Persians tributary, although their native ruler, Achaemenes, or Hakamanis, who was raised to the throne after the revolt of the Persians from Assyria, retained his crown under the Median supremacy and bequeathed it to his descendants. 
after Phraortes had fallen fighting against the Assyrians, his son Syaxares, Persian Uvaxathra, 633-593, succeeded him and continued the war with Assyria successfully. Inroad of the Scythians After their departure, about 626, question mark, Syaxares subjugated Armenia, war with Aliates, king of Lydia. 606, 625, question mark, Syaxares, in alliance with Mabo Palassa of Babylonia, captured Nineveh and destroyed the empire of Assyria, whose territory on the left shore of the Tigris fell to the Medians. He also conquered eastern Iran. Media, at the death of Syaxares, was the most powerful monarchy of Asia. His son, Iastages, 593-558, last king of the Medes. Cyrus, of the family of the Achaemenido, in the Persian tribe of the Pasargado, which reigned in Persia under Median supremacy, deposed Astyages, whose supremacy passed, 558, from the Medes to the Persians. Herodotus, 1, 107, etc., reports a tradition of the Median descent of Cyrus through his mother Mandane, daughter of Astyages, which is adorned after the Oriental manner with the dream of Astyages, the interpretation of the Magi, the exposure, miraculous rescue, and recognition of the boy Cyrus, the cruel punishment of Harpagus, his treachery, etc. This story is evidently an invention of the Medes, who would not admit that they were conquered by a stranger. According to Stesias, the daughter of Astyages was named Amitis, and was the wife of a Mede, Spitamus. After the deposition of Astyages and execution of Spitamus, Cyrus made her his consort. 558 to 330. Persian Empire, founded by Cyrus, Persian Kurus, 558 to 529. Cyrus strengthened the Persian power over those peoples of Iran which were formerly subject to the Medes and over the Armenians and Cappadocians. War against Croesus of Lydia. After the indecisive battle of Teria, 554 question mark, Cyrus advanced on Sardes, defeated Croesus in a second battle on the Hermus, stormed Sardes, captured Croesus and deprived him of his kingdom but otherwise treated him as a friend and advisor. 554. Footnote. The date of the fall of Sardis is disputed. End footnote. The Grecian story told by Herodotus, 186, of Cyrus's intention to burn Croesus, who, on the pyre, calls to mind his interview with Solon, of his consequent pardon by Cyrus, and the miraculous quenching of the flames by the Delphi Apollo, who had formerly received valuable presents from Croesus, betrays a purpose of bringing Grecian wisdom into strong relief, a proverb of Solon that no mortal is to be called fortunate before death, and of vindicating the Grecian god. It is inconsistent with the command of the Persian faith not to contaminate the sacred fire, Probably Croesus wished to appease the anger of the gods against his people and country, according to Semitic usage, by burning himself. According to the Lydian story, the sun god Sandon does not accept the offer, but puts out the flames with rain. Cyrus returns to Ecbatana. A revolt of the Lydians was quickly repressed. Mazares and Hipparchus made the Grecian coast cities tributary to the Persians, a portion of the Phocioeans migrated to Corsica, driven thence. They went to Elia, Velia, in southern Italy. Hippargus conquered Caria and Lycia. 539-538 War of Cyrus against the Babylonians After a siege of nearly two years, diversion of the Euphrates, Babylon was captured. The Babylonian Empire was incorporated with the Persian. The Phoenicians and Cilicians retained their native rules 
under Persian supremacy, the Jews were sent from Babylon back to Palestine. 529. Cyrus, who was occupied during the last nine years of his reign with wars against the eastern peoples, fell in one of these expeditions. The story of his death, like that of his birth, has been poetically adorned and variously related. According to one tradition, probably of Median origin, Herodotus 1, 202-214. Cyrus fell in battle against Tomiris, the queen of the Mesageto, whose son he had overcome by deceit. She thrust the dissevered head of the Persian monarch into a skin bag of blood that he might drink his fill of blood. According to Stesias, Cyrus died on the fourth day of a wound which he received in a victory over the Derbyses, the son and successor of Cyrus, Cambyses, Persian Cambogia, 529-522, conquered Egypt by his victory at Pelusium. 525. Capture of Memphis. Expedition up the Nile towards Ethiopia. Failure of provisions in the desert compelled him to turn back. The tyrant of Sarini acknowledged the supremacy of Cambyses, but a projected attack upon Carthage by sea was prevented by the refusal of the Phoenicians to lend their ships. Destruction of the army corps dispatched against the temple of Jupiter Ammon. Oasis Siva Cambyses slaughtered the bull Apis in Memphis and manifested in all ways a choleric and bloodthirsty disposition. On the way back from Egypt, he died in Syria, either from an accidental wound or by his own hand. Amagus seized the scepter and proclaimed himself the brother of Cambyses. 522. Bardia, Greek Smyrdis, who had been murdered at Cambyses' command. After a short reign, the usurper was put to death by the princes of the seven Persian tribes, the most influential of whom, Darius, Greek Dariavus, 521-485, son of Histaspes, was made king. The father of Darius, Histaspes, was the head of the younger line of the Achaemenido. The elder became extinct with Cambyses and Bardia, and the rightful heir to the Persian throne, the son, Darius, however, was recognised by the other princes as king. Later, his accession was ratified by the production of auguries. Anecdote of the neighing horse in Herodotus 3.85 Revolt of the Babylonians The city of Babylon recaptured only after a siege of more than twenty months. Self-mutilation of Zopyrus in order to deceive the Babylonians. 518 Question mark. Afterwards, Darius suppressed revolts which had broken out in other parts of the empire, in Media, Persia, Parthia, etc., and conquered the right bank of the Indus. 513. Question mark. Unsuccessful expedition of Darius against the Scythians with a land force of 700,000 men. The fleet of the Greeks of Asia Minor was conducted by the tyrants of the Ionian cities, bridge of boats across the Bosphorus, bridge over the Ister, Danube, after an aimless advance, lack of provisions induced a retreat. Herodotus 4, 130, following. Darius rescued by the faithfulness of Histioas of Miletus, against the advice of Miltiades of Athens, tyrant in the Cherasonesi. Thracia made subject to Persia. Cyrene conquered by a force sent from Egypt. Susa in Susiana, since the time of Darius, the principal residence of the great king, Basilius ton Basilion, Megas Basilius, Persian, Kashayathia, Kashayathia Nam. Whence the modern Persian Shahinsha. Akbatana in Media was the summer residence. Erection of a new royal palace at Persepolis in Persis, where ruins with inscriptions and sculptures have been discovered, as well as at Susa. At Persepolis, too, the tombs of the kings. D. 
divine worship paid to the king, the satisfaction of whose wants was the final purpose of the state. Maintenance of a costly court with an elaborate ceremonial. Construction of great military roads. Completion of the canal from the Nile to the Red Sea, which Ramassu II had begun and Neku had continued. Establishment of postal stations, of course only for the carriage of royal messages. Division of the empire into twenty, question mark, satrapies, each under a satrap. Persian, Kshatrapati, i.e. lord of the province. With regal accommodation in palaces surrounded by extensive gardens, paradisio. Subject cities or tribes, and indeed whole nations, enjoyed their own laws and separate administration, under native though dependent princes. 500-494 Revolt of the Ionian Greeks, incited by Histiaeus of Miletus, who had been accused to Darius and summoned to Susa, and his son-in-law Aristagoras. With the assistance of Athens and Eritrea, Sardis was captured and burned. The Ionians, defeated by the Persian army, were abandoned by their allies from Athens and Eletria. Their fleet was defeated at Lade, opposite Miletus. The Ionians were again reduced to subjection, and the Milesians, by command of Darius, were settled about the mouth of the Tigris. 493-490 War of Darius against the European Greeks Great preparations for a new expedition against Greece. Revolt among the Egyptians. 485. Death of Darius. He was succeeded by his son, Xerxes I. Persian, Kashayasha. 485-465. 480. War against Greece. Xerxes and his eldest son, murdered by Artabanus, captain of the bodyguard, the second son of Xerxes, Artaxerxes I, Persian, Artaxatra, 465-424, called Macrochir, Longimanus, succeeded to the throne. 462-455, Second Revolt of the Egyptians under Inaros, assisted by the Athenians, suppressed by the satrap Megabizus. Ameteus alone maintained himself about the mouths of the Nile. War with the Greeks Beginning of the internal decay of the Persian Empire Revolts of the satraps Mercenary troops The son of Artaxerxes, Xerxes II, 424, after ruling one month and a half, was murdered by his brother, Sogdianus, who after six and a half months was murdered by his brother Ocus, who reigned under the name Darius II. 424-405. Nothus. He was under the influence of his wife Parisatis, third revolt of the Egyptians who maintained their independence for 60 years, 414-354. 405 405-362. Artaxerxes II. Nemon. Revolt of his brother, the younger Cyrus, who, assisted by Grecian mercenaries, attacked the king in the neighbourhood of Babylon. 401. Cyrus fell in the Battle of Kunaxa in personal combat with his brother. 400. Retreat of the 10,000 Greeks. Xenophon. Anabasis. 362 to 338. Artaxerxes III. Revolt of the Phoenicians and Egyptians suppressed. Artaxerxes poisoned by his favourite, the Egyptian Bagoas, who placed on the throne the king's youngest son, Arses, 338-336, whom he likewise murdered in order to put a great-grandson of Darius Nothus in his place. 336-330. Codomanus. Bagoas executed by poison. War with Alexander of Macedonia. Darius murdered by the satrap Bessus while fleeing after the Battle of Gaugamela, 331. 330. 
Destruction of the Persian Empire. End of section 9. Section 10 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adrian Stevens. The World's Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plutz. Translated by William H. Tillinghast. Section 10. Part 8. Parthians. Turanian. Footnote. The use of this name must not be understood as implying belief in the racial unity of all the peoples to whom it is applied. It denotes merely the mass of Asiatics who belonged neither to the Semitic nor to the Aryan family. End footnote. Geography. The Parthian Empire extended from the Euphrates to the Indus, from the Caspian Sea and the Araxes to the Indian Ocean, covering nearly the same ground, and having in the main the same divisions as the Persian Empire, of which it was, indeed, in many ways an avowed imitation. Parthia proper, the region between the Jaxartes and the desert of Iran, the Caspian Sea and the province of Arya, was a satrapy of the Persian Empire. About 250, the Parthians revolted under the lead of Arsaces, the chief of the tribe of the Daho, Scythians, the revolt succeeding. 250 question mark to 247. Arsaces I was raised to the throne. He was succeeded by his brother Tiridates as Arsaces II, 247 to 214, who firmly established the independence of Parthia. His son, Arsaces III, 214 to 196, successfully resisted Antiochus the Great. Arsaces IV, Priapatius, and Arsaces V, Phraates I, accomplished but little of importance. The son of the latter, Mithridates I, 174 to 136, founded the Empire of the Parthians, extending his sway over Media, Susiana, Persia, Babylonia, Bactria. Subject nations were permitted to retain their native kings in subjection to Parthia. The Parthian civilization was rude and of a low order. 136 to 127. Phraates II. Arsaces the seventh repressed a revolt of Babylonia, but fell fighting against the Turanians. The incursions of these nomadic tribes became more frequent under Artabanus, Arsaces the eighth, one twenty seven to one twenty four, who likewise fell in battle against them. They were, however, effectually checked by Mithridates the second, Arsaces the ninth. 124 to 87, who also extended the power of Parthia in other directions, until towards the close of his reign he was defeated by Tigranes of Armenia. Under Phraates III, Arsaces the Twelfth, 69 to 60, the Parthians first became embroiled with Rome, war with this power breaking out in 54. Under Orodes I, Arsaces the fourteenth, fifty four to thirty seven, expedition of Crassus, expedition of Antonius, thirty six, against Phraates the fourth, Arsaces the fifteenth, from thirty seven BC to one o seven AD, Parthia was ruled by a series of ten monarchs, whose reigns were mostly occupied with struggles for the succession. Vologeses the first, fifty to ninety. Armenia lost, an attempt made by Khosroes Arsaces the twenty-fifth, one o seven to one two one A.D., to recover Armenia, brought about the successful Parthian expedition of Trajan, whose conquests were, however, abandoned as soon as made. Vologeses the third, Arsaces the twenty-seventh, 
149 to 192 AD, became involved in a war with M. Aurelius, which terminated in the complete submission of the Parthian. His successor, Vologases IV, 192 to 213 AD, lost northern Assyria to Rome. 215 to 226 AD. Arteoanus III, Arsaces XIII, last king of Parthia. In his reign, Parthia suffered severely at the hands of Caracalla, but, after his death and the defeat of Macrinus, had regained its former power when the empire was brought to an end by the success of an insurrection of the Persians under Artaxerxes, son of Sasan, who defeated and slew the Parthian monarch. The Tartar Empire was replaced by the Aryan Kingdom of the Sassanidae, or the New Persian Empire, 226 to 652 AD. End of section 10. Section 11 of an Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World's Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Carl Pletz, translated by William H. Tillinghast, Section 11, Part 9, Chinese, Turanian, Geography, China in the Broad Sense, or the Chinese Empire, Embracing Manchuria, Mongolia and Tibet, as well as China proper, is bounded north by Asiatic Russia, east by the Sea of Japan, the Yellow Sea, and the Sea of China, south and southwest by the Sea of China, Cochin, China, Burma, west by Kashmir and east Turkestan, China, land of the Ceres among the ancients, Cathay in the Middle Age comprises less than half of the chinese empire being about one thousand four hundred and seventy four miles long by one thousand three hundred and fifty five wide vast alluvial plain and delta in the northeast mountainous and hilly in south river swang ho yellow river yang si kiang si kiang provinces one jili or pe jili with peking the capital of the empire to kiangsu the most populous and best watered of the provinces with the cities nanking shanghai three gun kwe four kiangsi five che kiang with the city ningpo six fuking comprising the island of formosa taiwan seven hu pi eight hu nan nine ho nan ten shan tung with the Tai Shan Mountain, eleven Shan Si, twelve Shen Si, thirteen Kan Sa, fourteen Si Chuan, fifteen Kuang Tung, with the cities Canton, Macau, Hong Kong, properly Yang Kiang, sixteen Quang Si, seventeen Yun Nan, eighteen Kwai Chao, nineteen Xing King. Religion, uncertainty concerning the oldest religion of the Chinese by some writers it is considered little higher than fetishism while others see a monotheistic belief in the worship of tai their religion embraced a worship of ancestors of deified rulers and of spirits generally classed in antitheses of opposing qualities yang and yin heaven and earth male and female from whose interaction all created beings sprang ideas of future life indistinct no system of rewards and punishments system of offerings never human sacrifices in the fifth century b c appeared the philosopher confucius kung fu si five fifty one to four seventy eight who taught no new theology and did not remodel the old religion but whose ethical code and personal influence secured for him an enthusiastic following it was a revival rather than a reformation of the ancient faith enunciation of the golden rule contemporary with confucius was lao tzu the author of a system of ethical philosophy taoism 
the way or method of living which men should cultivate as the highest and purest development of their nature Legge. at a later time there grew up a system of gross and mystical superstition which took the name of taoism deified lao tzu and became one of the recognized religions of the empire buddhism introduced into china about a d sixty five where it has degenerated into a low superstition but still numbers many devotees and has deeply affected the older religions begging priests mohammedanism has also its adherents the common religion of the lower classes is the old ancestor and spirit worship complicated by the introduction of elements from all the sects above mentioned no state religion toleration of all faiths chronology the chinese regard themselves as aborigines foreign scholars derive them from wandering bands of taters or from the people of tibet and farther india it is probable that the first settlements were made in the valley of the huang ho the chinese possess an intricate system of chronology which earlier writers trusted almost implicitly but which modern scholars have severely criticized the dates assigned before eight hundred b c are probably wholly untrustworthy chinese analysts place the creation between two and three millions of years before confucius and divide the intervening space into ten epochs in the eighth of these are placed the famous emperors yu chao shi nest builder su jin shi the discoverer of fire fu he chin nung inventor of the plough and yao who first drained the valley of huang ho these sovereigns are to be regarded as largely mythical as are the dynasties of haya twenty two o five to seventeen sixty six and shang seventeen sixty six to eleven twenty three eleven twenty three to two fifty five chow dynasty during the time of this dynasty we reach historic ground development of a feudal system the imperial domain lay in the middle of the empire whence the name applied to the empire middle kingdom under sing wang birth of confucius five fifty one b c two fifty five to two o six dynasty of tsin famous for the energetic monarch che wang ti two forty six to two ten who extended the empire to the sea defeated the mongols built a chinese wall fourteen hundred miles long fifteen to thirty feet high fifteen to twenty five feet broad two thirteen che wang ti ordered the destruction of many thousand historical and philosophical books two o six b c to two twenty one a d dynasties of east and west han brian period of chinese history the power of the feudal lords limited the empire consolidated and strengthened and extended westward to russia and turkestan conquest of northern korea one o nine a d annexation of hainan this period was succeeded by one of great confusion two twenty one to two sixty five a d epoch of the three kingdoms wai in the north wu in the east and shu in the west wu ti two sixty five a d reunited a large part of the empire and founded the dynasty of Xin, but the country soon relapsed into a divided state which continued until yang kian five ninety a d prince of sui in the northern kingdom of wai extending his conquest southward united the whole empire under his sceptre and founded the dynasty of sui end of section eleven section twelve of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by avai in december two thousand twenty the world's story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by karl plötz translated by william h tillinghast section twelve part ten japanese footnote japan tsipangu in the middle age is a name given to the empire by foreigners it is probably of chinese origin End footnote. geography the japanese empire dai nippon is a chain of islands which skirts the eastern coast of asia opposite korea manchuria and amur it comprises four large islands kyushu shikoku hondo or honshu the principal island yezo and some three thousand small islands 
Footnote. Hondo is the name recently applied to the main island by the Japanese government. Previously, the Japanese had no name for this island. Nippon, the name frequently given it by foreigners, is the name of the whole empire. Sakhalin was given to Russia in 1875 in exchange for the Kuril Islands. End footnote. Nature of the country. Rocky, mountainous, volcanic. Highest mountain, Fujiyama, 12,000 feet, in the center of the east coast of Hondo. Rivers numerous but small, among the largest, Tonegawa, Shinanogawa, Kagawa, Tigawa, Lake Biwa in Hondo. Principal cities, Kyoto, Yedo or Tokyo, Yokohama, Osaka. Religion The most ancient religion of Japan bears the native name of Kami no Michi, the way of the gods, but is better known abroad by the Chinese term Shinto. It consisted of a theology which comprised the gods of heaven, the Mikados, many deified mortals, animals, plants and natural objects, and of a ritual for the worship of these deities. The chief command of the religion was implicit obedience to the gods, especially to the Mikado. It had no moral code. It was emphatically a state religion and was often used as a political engine. In 552 AD, Buddhism was introduced into Japan, where it spread rapidly. Development of a score or more of sects among others Shinshu, which teaches salvation by faith in Buddha. Buddhism for a time overshadowed the older religion, but the present government has fully reinstated the Shinto faith. Chronology The origin of the Japanese is uncertain. They invaded the islands from Asia and conquered them from the savage Ainos whom they found there. The present Japanese are certainly a mixed race, containing Turanian and Malay elements. While the mythical history of Japan comprises a dynasty of gods, followed by a dynasty of rulers descended from the sun goddess and who are sometimes assigned reigns of hundreds of thousands of years each, the earliest state of what is believed in Japan to be authentic history is 660 BC. The dates are probably untrustworthy until much later. 660 to 585 BC Jimmu Tenno, the first Mikado, being the fifth in descent from the sun goddess. Footnote His true name was Kan Yamato Iware Hiko no Mikoto. After the introduction of Chinese characters, the long native names of gods and emperors were transcribed into the shorter Chinese equivalents. It also became customary for the Mikados to receive after death a different name from that which they had borne while living. The first Mikado received the name Jimmu, Spirit of War, to which was joined one of the official titles of the Mikado, Tenno, Lord of Heaven. Mikado, the most general title of the emperors, is derived either from Mi, Honorable, and Kado, Gate, compare Sublime Port and Pharaoh, or from Mika, Great, and To, Place. End footnote. He was leader of the invasion and conquered Kyushu, Shikoku, and a part of the main island. Jimu is regarded by many foreign scholars as a mythical character. He was the founder of an unbroken dynasty, of which the reigning Mikado, Mutsuhito, is the 122nd, 123rd counting Jingu, sovereign. The 10th Mikado, Sujin, 97 to 30 BC, introduced reforms, reorganized the administration of the empire, and generally advanced the civilization of the people. Intercourse opened with Korea. Succeeding emperors continued the war with the native Ainos, who were pushed further and further to the north. 
especially famous is the reign of the twelfth Mikado, Keiko, 71 to 130 AD, whose more famous son, Yamato Dake, the warlike, conquered the great eastern plain, the Kanto. The fourteenth Mikado, Chinai, dying suddenly, was succeeded by his wife, the renowned Jingu Kogo, 201 to 269 AD, sometimes called the fifteenth Mikado, although never formally crowned. She suppressed a rebellion in Kyushu and herself led an army to Korea, which she reduced to submission. Diplomatic Relations with China Her son and successor, Ojin, 270 to 310 AD, was a great warrior and is still worshipped as the god of war. Introduction of Chinese literature and civilization, which at this date was far in advance of the Japanese. From this time to the 6th century, the annals of Japan are marked by no great events. End of section 12「Section 13 of An Outline of Universal History」This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Devorah Allen The World's Story, Volume 14 An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plotz Translated by William H. Tillinghast Section 13 B. Western Peoples Part 1. Celts Aryan Celts is the name given to that race which, at the dawn of authentic history, occupied the extreme west of Europe. They belong to the Indo-European family, and, if the Asiatic origin of that family be accepted, were the first branch to enter upon the westward migration. A. Continental Celts. Gauls. Geography. At the time of the Roman conquest, 59 to 51, Gaul, or that part of Europe occupied by the Celts, Celtoi, or Gauls, Galloi, was divided among three great groups of tribes, Belgians, dwelling between the Lower Rhine, the Forest of Ardennes, the Marne, and Seine. This people have been claimed as Teutons, but the weight of evidence assigns them to the Celts. Footnote. The Belgians are also claimed as non-Aryans of the same race as the Aquitanians. End of footnote. Tribes. Remi, Susiones, Nervii, Menapii. Gauls dwelling between the Seine, Marne, Middle Rhine, Rhone, and Garonne. Footnote. In spite of Caesar's statement that the Gauls were called Celts in their own language, the two names are not considered synonymous. It is probable that the Gallic tribes formed a division distinct from the Celtic tribes, using Celt in the narrow sense of inhabitant of Gaul. The attempt has even been made to draw the geographical boundary between them. And a footnote. Tribes. In the valley of the Seine, Sequana, Parisii, with the city Lutetia Parisiorum, now Paris, Senones. In the valley of the Loire, Liger, Namnites, Turones, Carnutes, Boyai, Edwi, Averni, west of the Seine, Treviri. In the valley of the Seon and Rhone, Sequani, Alabroges. The Aquitanians, between the Garonne and the Pyrenees, were not Celts but Iberians. In Switzerland, Helvetii, Vindelici. Religion. Soon after the conquest, the theology of the Gauls was largely superseded and corrupted by the introduction of the Roman gods. Little is therefore known of the pure Celtic religion, whose nature has consequently become a favorite subject for dispute. It was a pantheism which had its cycle of great gods, its local divinities, its deifications of forests, rivers, and fountains. Among the great gods are the following, with their Roman equivalents. Bormo, Granus, 
Apollo, with his companion, the goddess Demona. Sagomo, Canulus, Mars, with the goddess Nematonia. Belisama, Minerva. Teramicus, Jupiter. Complicated and imposing ceremonial, conducted by the Druids or priests, who were accorded at least equal honors with the nobles. They did not form a hereditary class, but were recruited from the people. Exemption from military service and taxes. Use of writing with Greek alphabet. Exercise of jurisdiction. Human sacrifices. Civilization. That the Celts of Gaul had reached quite an advanced stage of civilization is clear from the readiness with which they accepted the higher civilization of Rome, and from the fact that their social state, as depicted by Caesar, exhibits a degeneracy which was not seen again in northern Europe until the decay of the Neustrian state under the Merovingians in the 5th and 6th centuries A.D. Footnote. The stage of development in civilization attained by ancient peoples must be largely determined by the degree of complexity found in their social and political systems. In our day, when material comforts and conveniences form a so much larger part of the popular idea of civilization than they ever did before, it is well to remember this in judging the civilizations that are gone. End of footnote. Chronology Before the conquest, the history of the Celts of Gaul is the history of their collisions with the southern nations. The Celtic migration was slow, and large bodies were left behind at various points as in Bohemia and throughout Germany, where many traces of Celtic occupation survived the Teutonic conquest. According to some writers, the Celts immigrated in two bands, the Goidelic or Gadelic Celts being the more northerly, and the Brythonic or Chimeric Celts the more southerly. This is but a surmise. Not earlier than 2000, the Celts reached the western shores of Europe. Their principal settlements were made in central France. They here attained their highest culture, and from this point detachments went forth to conquer new lands. There were four principal immigrations. One, to the British Isles, date unknown. Two, to Spain, where they mingled with the Iberian inhabitants and formed the Celt-Iberians. Celts in Spain were known to Herodotus in the 5th century B.C., 3. To Northern Italy. The legendary history of Rome places this event in the reign of Tarquinius Priscus, or about 600 B.C. Tribe followed tribe until the whole of Northern Italy was occupied, Gallia Cisalpina. Tribes, Biturages, Milan, Senomani, Brescia and Verona, Boiai, Bologna, Senones, coast between Rimini and Ancona. 390, Conquest of Rome by the Senones under their Brennus, that is, military leader. 283, Extermination of the Senones by the Romans. Defeat of the Boii on the Vadimonian Lake. 238, General League of Cisalpine Gauls against Rome. Defeat of the League at Telamon, 225. Capture of Milan by Scipio. Formation of Roman colonies at Placentia, Cremona, Nutina. In the Second Punic War, Hannibal induced the Gauls to take up arms, but in the Battle of Mutina, 193, the last resistance of the Boii was broken and northern Italy was rapidly Romanized. 4. To Greece and Asia Minor. In 278, a band of Gauls under Abrenus ravaged Macedonia and Greece. After a feudal attack upon Delphi, the survivors made their way by land to Asia Minor, where they settled in the interior and gave their name to Galatia. Of the Celts of Gaul, little is known until the Roman conquest. Some time before this, it is probable, the pressure of the Teutonic migration had made itself felt in the West, but the details of the conflict are unknown. Celts and Teutons became here and there interspersed, but in general, the Rhine was the boundary. About 125 to 121, the Romans conquered southern Gaul and made it a province, Gallia Narbonensis. 
while the Celtic origin of the Cimbri may not be admitted without question, it is certain that Gallic tribes played a considerable part in that great invasion of Italy, 113 to 101. 58 to 51, Conquest of Gaul by Caesar, after which the history of Gaul belongs to that of Rome. B. Celts of the British Isles, Britain. Geography. The island of Britain forms an irregular triangle, and is bounded east by the German Ocean, south by the Straits of Dover and the English Channel, west by St. George's Channel, the Irish Sea, North Channel, and the Atlantic Ocean. It falls into three geographical divisions, corresponding somewhat to the later political divisions. 1. The Extreme North beyond the deep indentations of the Frith of Clyde and the Frith of Forth, is mountainous and barren, with numerous small lakes, Loch Ness, Loch Tay, Loch Lomond, and sharply cut coasts on the west. 2. The southern and eastern portion, hilly in the north and west, on the east a broad plain, well watered and fertile, eastern rivers, Humber, Ouse, Trent, Witham, Welland, Nen, Ouse, running through a broad fenland into the Wash, Thames. Western rivers, Severn, Mercy, Island of Wight. In early times, the greater part of this plain, the modern England, was covered with forests, of which scanty traces remain. The Andredsweald covered a large part of the counties of Surrey and Sussex. North of the Thames, a huge forest extended nearly to the Wash, of which Epping and Hainault forests formed a part. The fens about the Wash were much more extensive than now. 3. The broad western promontory of Wales, mountainous with small rivers, island of Anglesey. Religion and Civilization The Celts of Britain were ruder than their brethren of Gaul, and never reached the same stage of civilization but they seem to have resembled the continental Celts in customs and religion. Druids. Bards. History. A. Mythical. Inordinate pride of ancestry, a fertile imagination, and an acquaintance with biblical and classical history enabled the British bards and priestly historians to compose for their race a mythical past, unique in its extent, its detail, and its disregard of time and space. Gaul was colonized by Mesquiche, son of Japhet, son of Noah, about 1799 Anno Mundi, A.M., under the name of Samotkis. Mesquiche ruled Gaul 109 years when he conquered Britain in 1908 A.M., and reigned over both countries 47 years. He was followed by six sovereigns of his race, but on the accession of the seventh, Lucius, 2211 A.M., Britain was wrested from his rule by Albion, a descendant of Ham. He and his successors reigned over Britain until 2896 AM, or 1108 BC, when the line of Japhet recovered the island in the person of Brute, great-grandson of Aeneas of Troy. Brute built Troynoan, afterwards Ludstown, London. He was followed by his descendants, among whom we may mention Bladud, founder of Bath, Lair, 841 to 791, Therix and Porex, 496 to 491, with whom his line expired. Britain for a time divided into five kingdoms, was finally reunited under Malmusius Dunwall, the son of Cloten King of Cornwall, 441 to 401, whose son Brennus left his island home to sack Rome, assault Delphi, and found the kingdom of Galatia. Footnote. Brennus killed himself after the repulse from Delphi. His army settled in Galatia. End of footnote. Among the successors of Malmusius were Coil, 160 to 140, Pyrrhus, 66 to 64, and Lud, who in some mysterious manner began to reign in 69, Cassivelaunus, Expedition of Caesar, Cymbeline, 19 B.C. to 16 A.D., Caractacus, Vortigern, 445 to 455, 485 A.D., 
Arthur, 508 to 542. Finally, the list merges in the historical line of the kings and princes of Wales. B. Probable. The Britons of historic times were Celts, who came to the island from Gaul at two periods. The first invasion was very early, and the invaders were Celts of the Goidelic, Gadelic, or Northern branch. From the testimony of sepulchral monuments, it is conjectured that the Celts found two races in Britain, a small, dark-haired race, perhaps of Iberian stock, and a large, light-haired race of Scandinavian origin. The Goidelic Celts conquered without exterminating the previous inhabitants, and held the land many centuries, until a new invasion of continental Celts occurred. This time it was the Brythonic, or Chimeric, Celts of the southern stock, who crossed the channel, probably not very long before the expedition of Caesar, and dispossessed their kinsmen of the southern and eastern portion of the island. Tribes, Cantii, the most civilized, Atrabatii, Belgoi, Damnonii, Silures, Trinobantes, Iseni, Brigantes, etc. The ancients received their first direct knowledge of Britain from Pythias of Massilia, who landed on the island in the 3rd century BC. That the Phoenicians ever visited Britain is doubted by English scholars, who contend that they obtained their tin either from the rivers of Gaul or from the Gallic tribes who imported it from Britain. With the two expeditions of Caesar, 55 to 54 BC, the actual history of Britain begins. The effect of the invasions was transitory. 43 AD, Claudius began the conquest of Britain in earnest, and his generals reduced the country south of the Avon and Severn. 58, Revolt of Boadicea, leader of the Iceni, her defeat. 78 to 85, Agricola, under Vespasian and Domitian, carried the Roman arms far into Scotland and built a wall from the Frith of Forth to the Frith of Clyde as a defense against the wild tribes of the north. Henceforward, Britannia formed a tolerably quiet part of the Roman Empire. Roman fortresses, towns, and villas covered its soil in profusion. 121, Hadrian built a wall from the Tyne to the Solway. In 139, Antoninus strengthened the wall of Agricola. In 210, Severus added new defenses to that of Hadrian. 180, legendary conversion of Lucius, king of the Trinobantes, to Christianity, after which the new religion spread throughout the country. A church was organized and bishoprics founded at Canterbury and York. With the decay of the empire, its power in Britain declined. Troops were withdrawn to assist in defending the continental borders or in supporting the claims of rival aspirants for the crown. During the third century, the attacks of the Picts and Scots in the north grew more and more severe, while the southern and eastern coasts suffered from the ravages of the Frank and Saxon pirates. Count of the Saxon shore, the officer in charge of the coast between the Wash and Southampton water, which was most exposed to these ravages. Footnote. Comes Litoris Saxonisi per Britannium. An attempt has been made, Lappenberg, Kemble, to show that this name indicates the settlement of Saxons upon this shore long before the Teutonic conquest. What people, it has been asked, would name a portion of their country after its worst enemies? A reference to our Indian frontier, by which is meant land held by the whites but molested by Indians, might dispel this objection. The argument from coinage is stronger, but on the whole this assumption does not seem to be proved. End of footnote. From 286 to 294, Britain was independent under Serausius, who proclaimed himself Emperor of Britain. 360, Scots from Ireland ravaged the western shores. 410, Honorius renounced the sovereignty of Britain. The withdrawal of the legions left Britain to her own resources. A period of civil dissension and exposure to foreign inroads followed, broken by the Alleluia victory of the Britons accompanied by St. Germanus over the Picts, 411. 
Finally, the king of the Damnonii, Vortigern, Gorthigen, either by usurpation or election, obtained the sovereignty over a large part of the island, and, as the story goes, invited the invasion of the Teutonic conquerors. Ireland Geography Lying west of Britain, Ireland is bounded on the east by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel, on all other sides by the Atlantic Ocean. It is a low plain, fringed with hilly tracks upon the coast, abounding in lakes, Loch Corrib, Loch Mask, Loch Erne, Loch Neig, Lakes of Killarney, Loch Dirg, Loch Ri, and rivers, Boyne, Liffey, Barrow, Blackwater, Shannon. Religion and Civilization In Ireland, as in Britain, we find Celtic inhabitants, Celtic religion, and Celtic culture, but both in a still more primitive form than in England. So much so, indeed, that it may be the Celts of Ireland were the best representatives of primitive Aryan civilization. Druids, Bards. History. Again, the historian is confronted with a vast mass of very valuable tradition mingled with a great amount of priestly invention. The Irish historical books speak of five invasions of Ireland. 1. Partholan led a force from central Greece, which ruled Ireland 300 years and then died of the plague, and were succeeded by 2. Nemed from Scythia, who also died of the plague. 3. Firbolgs, who came under five chiefs and settled in various parts of the island. 4. The Tuatha de Danann of the race of Nemed, who defeated and nearly exterminated the Firbolgs. 5. Milesians, or Scots, who under Gallum, son of Briogan, came from Spain, and conquering the Tuatha de Danann, divided Ireland among the sons and other relatives of Gollum. The ancestry of Gollum goes back to Noah. The historical interpretation of these legends seems at present to be that Ireland, at the commencement of the Christian era, was occupied in the north by Goidelic Celts, Cruithni Picts, in the east and center by British and Belgic tribes, Chimeric, and in the southwest, Munster, by a people of southern extraction, Iberians? Between the numerous petty kingdoms thus established, incessant war prevailed, with the details of which the legendary history is filled. Tuathal died 160 A.D., a powerful king who reigned over Leinster and Meath, and warred with the rival kingdom or kingdoms in Munster is probably historic. Irish Invasions of Britain Settlements in Wales, Devon, and Cornwall, and especially in the north. Ireland was never conquered or even invaded by the Romans, though Agricola had planned an Irish expedition. The Irish were converted to Christianity in the 5th century. Palladius, sent to Ireland 431 AD, died soon after. St. Patrick, Sukath or Mon, took up the work and brought it to a successful conclusion. Establishment of numerous monasteries, which in the next century attained wide renown for the learning of their members. End of section 13. Section 14 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adrian Stevens. The World's Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plötz. Translated by William H. Tillinghast. Section 14. Part 2. Grecian History. A Geographical Survey of Ancient Greece. The peninsula of Greece, Hellas, bounded to the north by Macedonia and Illyria, and on all other sides by the sea, east, Mare Aegeum, south, Mare Maatun and Mare Creticum, west, Mare Ionium, is divided into four principal regions, Peloponnesus, 
Central Greece, Thessaly, Epirus. A. Peloponnesus, island of Pelops, connected with the mainland by the narrow isthmus of Corinth, washed on the north by the waters of the Corinthian Gulf, is divided into nine districts. One, Achaia, formerly inhabited by Ionians in twelve communities, or cantons, Agium, capital of the confederacy, Patro. 2. Elis or Elia, in Aeolic dialect, Varlis, drained by the Alpheus and Peneus. It is subdivided into Elis proper, or hollow Elis, Elis and its harbour, Silene, Pisatis, Olympia, not a city, but a temple of Zeus, in a walled grove, Altis, with places for games, altars, and various buildings, and Trifilia. 3. Messenia, Pylos, the home of Nestor, opposite the island of Sphacteria, Messene, built in 369 BC, the hill fortresses of Ithome and Ira. 4. Laconia, with the mountain range of Tagetus, ending in the promontory Tainarus, Sparta, on the right bank of the Eurotus, north of Sparta, Salacia, on the coast of Helos and Githium, the harbour of Sparta. 5. Argolis, comprised many cantons, politically independent of one another. Argos, with its harbour, Nauplia, on the Gulf of Argolis, nearby Tiryns, with Cyclopedian walls. Hermione, Trozen, Epidurus, on the Sarosian Sinus, inland Mycenae, with Cyclopean structures. The Lion Gate, the so-called treasure house of Atreus. 6. Fliasia, Flius. 7. Corinthia, Corinth, formerly Ephyria, with the citadel Acrocorinthus. 8. Sicyonia, Sicyon. 9. Arcadia, the mountainous region in the interior, with the ranges Silene and Erymanthus on the borders of Achaia, Mantinea, Tegia, Megalopolis, the latter founded in 370. b. Central Greece. Footnote. The expression Hellas propria first appears in the Roman period. The Greeks never used Hellas for the name of this particular part of the country. End footnote. Also divided into nine districts. 1. Megaris, since the Dorian conquest, belonging ethnographically and politically to Peloponnesus, Megara, and its harbour, Nessoa. 2. Attica, with the mountains of Parnes, Brilissus, Pentelicus, Hymenetus, and the promontory of Sunium, the rivulets of Cephisus and Ilissus. Athens, with the Acropolis, Propoloa, Parthenon, Erechtheion, the fortified harbour of Peroas, connected with the city by the long walls, Tamakra Techi, Taskeli, the two unimportant harbours, Munichia and Zia, and the open bay of Phaleron, which served as a roadstead. Attic Deems, Eliosus, Marathon, Dakelia, File, etc. 3. Boeotia, with mountains Helicon and Cithron, Lake Copais, traversed by the Cephisus, Thebes, Eptapulos, with its citadel the Cadmia, Thespio, Lucra, Plateau, which separated itself very early from the Botian League and allied itself with Athens, Haliartus, Coronia, or Comenos. On the coast, Aulis, Delium, and not far distant, Tanagra. 4. Phocis, at the base of Mount Parnassus, Delphi, with the oracle of the Pythian Apollo, Chrysa, with its harbour, Kira Elatia. 5. Eastern Locris, 
Locroi Epuoi, for the time divided by a part of Focus into the southern region of the Opuntian Locrians, with the town Opus, and the northern of the Epignamidian Locrians, that is, they who dwell on the mountains of Gnemis, with the town Thronium, six western Locris, Locroi Esperioi, called by the other Greekans Locroi Ozolai, the stinking, Amphissa now Pactus, seven Doris, between the mountains of Oita and Parnassus, the country of a small body of Dorians, who at the time of the Dorian invasion remained in the north, called from its four unimportant villages the Tetrapolis, eight Aetolia, Caledon, Pluron, and Thermum, afterwards the place where the assembly met at the time of the Aetolian League. Nine, Arcania, with the promontory Actium Stratus, near the river Achilus, which separates Arcania from Aetolia. C. Thessaly, watered by the Peneus, valley of Tempe with the mountain range of Pindus in the west on the border of the Epirus, in the south Othyrus, in the east Pelion Ossa, in the north Olympus and the Cambunian mountains. Five divisions from south to north. One, for Theotis, in the most southern part Malis, on the Sinus Maliacus, was the Pass of Thermopylae, that is, Gate of the Warm Springs, Lamia. 2. Thessaliotis, Pharsalus. 3. Pallas Giotis, Pharo, Cranoan, Larissa on the Peneus. 4. Hestiaotis. 5. The eastern coastland, Magnesia, Iolcos, on the Sinus Pagaiosus, Demetrius. D. Epirus, in historic times inhabited by Illyrian tribes, not of pure Grecian blood, principal tribes, Molossians, in whose territory was Ambrasia, not far from the Ambrasian Gulf, and the Dodona, oracle of Zeus. Thesprotians, Pandosia on the Acheron, Caonians. In Macedonia, which lay north from Thessaly, the following places are to be noted. Pydna, Pella, the royal residence since the reign of Archelius, formerly Aegei or Edessa, enjoyed this distinction. On the peninsula Chalcidis, Olynthus, Potido, Stagyrus. In Thrace, Amphipolis, near the mouth of the Striamon, Philippo, Abdera, Perinthus, Heraclea, Byzantium. In the Thracian Chersonese, Sestos, opposite Abydos in Asia Minor. Most important islands. In the Aegean Sea, 1. Crete, Ecatompolis, Knossus, Gnosus, and Gortin. 2. Thera, a colony of Sparta, itself mother city of Cyrene in Africa. Milos, 3. The Twelve Cyclades, Paros, Naxos to the north, the small Delos, Mount Synthus, Sanctuary of Apollo, Sithnos, Chios, Andros, Tenos, etc. In the Saronic Gulf, 4. Aegina, 5. Salamis, in the Sea of Euboa, 6. Euboa, with the promontory of Artemisium in the north, Chalcis, Eritrea. In the Thracian Sea, 7. Lemnos, 8. Samothrace, 9. Thassos. On the coast of Asia Minor, from north to south, 10. Tenedos, not far from Ilium or Troy, in the district of Troas, 11. Lesbos, Mytilene, Methymna, 12. Chios, 13. Samos, opposite the promontory of Mycale. 
14. Cos. 15. Rhodes. In the eastern part of the Mediterranean, the island of Cyprus. Cities, originally Phoenician, afterwards Greek. Salamis, Shalem, Paphos and Amethus, centre of the worship of Aphrodite, Venus, Amethusia. In the Ionian Sea, from south to north, 1. Cythera, south of Laconia with Temple of Aphrodite, 2. Zakynthos, 3. Cephalenia, called by Homer, Samos, 4. Ithaca, 5. Lucas, 6. Corsira, Kerkura, perhaps the Sheria of Homer. End of section 14. Section 15 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World Story, Volume 14. An Outline of Universal History by Karl Plutz. Translated by William H. Tillinghast. Section 15. B. Religion of the Greeks The religion of the early Greeks was a pantheistic nature worship, distinguished among others by the multiplicity of its deities and their intricate gradation, as well as by the wealth of biographical detail which the imagination of the poets provided for them. The great gods, Olympic deities, were twelve in number male divinities zeus the god lord of the sky and ruler of all other gods as well as of men poseidon god of the sea apollo probably originally the highest god of some local district the divinity of wisdom of healing of music and poetry but not until later the sun god ares god of war Hephaestus, god of fire, and of work accomplished by the application of fire, set apart from the other gods by his lameness. Hermes, god of invention, commercial skill, cunning, bravery. Female divinities. Hera, consort of Zeus. Athena, a maiden goddess sprung from the head of Zeus, the embodiment of wisdom and of housewifery. Artemis, goddess of hunting, afterwards connected with the moon, as her brother, Phoebus Apollo, with the sun. Aphrodite, goddess of sensual love, probably introduced from the east. Hestia, goddess of fire, especially of the hearth fire. Demeter, earth mother, presiding over agriculture. In the lower rank of gods may be mentioned Dionysus, god of wine and drunkenness, Hades, god of the lower world, the graces, the muses, the fates, the furies, etc. The fields and forests, the oceans and the rivers were crowded with nymphs and hamadryads, naiads and nereids, while creatures of a lower order, satyrs, among whom Pan rose to the level of a god of the second rank, and monsters, cyclops, gorgons, centaurs, etc., abounded. Reverence was also paid to the heroes, ideal representations of famous men, real or imaginary. Such were Cadmus in Thebes, Theseus in Athens, and Hercules, the most widely known of all. The gods were worshipped by invocation and by sacrifices offered in accordance with a rigid ritual at altars which could be improvised anywhere. There were, however, permanent altars for all the divinities in temples where the statue of the divinity was also enshrined. These temples were frequently erected on lofty and commanding sites, and upon their construction and decoration was lavished the highest skill in architecture and sculpture. 
brilliant colouring was also employed upon the temples each family tribe and race each city district and country had its recurring festivals of special honour to the gods panathenii at athens religious festivals of all greece olympian zeus every fifth year in july or august at olympia in elis pythian apollo every fifth or ninth year at delphi ithmian neptune every five years on the isthmus of corinth nemean every third year at nemea in argolis these festivals were the centre of grecian national life amphictionic council the most important of the amphictioni a religious conference which met at delphi and represented the political side of the panhellenic religion consultation of oracles for obtaining the counsel of the gods especially at delphi mysteries or rites of secret religious societies the most renowned at eloisis no hierarchy of priests yet those who had charge of the sacrifices and more especially of the oracles often attained great influence ideas of future life vague and unsatisfactory the more advanced minds among the greeks undoubtedly attained to the idea of the essential oneness of divinity grecian history can be divided into four epochs one before approximately eleven o four b c e mythical period down to the thessalian and dorian migration two eleven o four to five hundred b c e formation of the hellenic states period of constitutional struggles down to the persian wars three five hundred to three three eight b c e persian wars and internecine strife for the hegemony down to the loss of independence at the battle of charonia four three three eight to one four six b c e greco macedonian or hellenistic period down to the subjugation of greece by the romans destruction of corinth end of section fifteen recording by alan mapstone section sixteen of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by karl pletz translated by william h de lingast section sixteen c first period mythical time down to the thessalian and dorian migration x to eleven o four question mark the greeks footnote Gricen, Gricen, was the name given to the greeks by the people of italy it was the name of a tribe in epirus or the illyrian name for the hellenes in general End of footnote or as they call themselves the hellenes belong to the indo-european or aryan family the greeks state that the original inhabitants of their country were the pelasgians the meaning of this name is much disputed according to some scholars it denotes the band which afterwards divided into the italians and hellenes another view regards the pelasgians and hellenes as the same people but holds that the latter name is applied to those tribes which endowed with peculiar abilities and inspired with peculiar energy distinguished themselves above the mass of a great people while they extended their power within the same by force of arms so that their name became in historic times the one generally accepted 
others again regard the name pelasgian as semitic and so applied originally to the phoenician inhabitants of the coast especially in the minyi of orcomenos and afterwards erroneously transferred to the illyrian aborigines of epirus acadia etc dodona in epirus with the oracle of zeus the god of the sky was the oldest centre of the pelasgian life and religion remains of pelasgian buildings called by the greeks cyclopean are found in tyrans in argolis and in orcomenos in boeotia our earliest historical information shows the hellenes divided into various tribes of these the achaeans were most prominent during the heroic times and their name was therefore used by homer to denote the entire race in historic times on the contrary the dorians and ionians occupy the foreground the other tribes are then classed together under the name aeolian and the dialects which were neither dorian nor ionian are known as aeolian the following mythical genealogy seems to have been invented at a very late period and to have originated at delphi helen son of deucalion descendant aeolus that is the many-coloured doris zuthus that is the exile descendant ion achaeus we have no authentic information about the manner of the hellenic migration into greece according to one well-founded theory a part of the immigrants and among them the ancestors of the dorians forced their way over the hellespont into the mountainous region of northern greece where they established themselves as shepherds and tillers of the land other bands among whom were the ancestors of the ionians having descended from the highlands of phrygia by way of the valleys to the coast of asia minor were there transformed into a race of seamen and gradually spread themselves over the islands of the archipelago to the mainland of greece the former formed the western the latter the eastern greeks remembrance of the fact that western greece received its civilization from the east gave rise at a later period to stories about unauthentic immigrations sea crops according to the original story octophanus king of attica and builder of the cecropia acropolis of athens was afterwards in consequence of that identification of grecian and egyptian mythology which is illustrated by the conception of neith goddess of sais as pallas athena falsely represented as an egyptian immigrant from sais the truth seems to be that the cliffs by the elysis which were called the cecropia formed the first fortress of the inhabitants of the region upon which their altars and sanctuaries found protection and around which the first beginnings of political life in attica grouped themselves afterwards the cecropia was personified under the name cecrops according to the legend cecrops was succeeded by erichthonios the latter by erechtheus the two becoming soon united into one person in whom the erechtheon the temple of poseidon erechtheus on the acropolis is personified the legend makes erechtheus the founder of the festival of panthenia and conqueror of eumolpus that is sweet singer of eleusis the centre of the worship of demeter story of her daughter core in the lower world proserpina the eleusinian mysteries eleusis was united with athens into one community erechtheus according to the legend was succeeded by aeneas the latter by aegeus the father of theseus the national hero of the ionians a later legend tells how danaeus brother of egyptus came from upper egypt to argos he too with his fifty daughters the danaides 
who with the exception of hypernestra murdered their husbands the sons of egyptus and were for this crime condemned to fill the bottomless tub belongs to the native mythology the dionides are the springs of argos which in the summer-time exert themselves in vain to satisfy the soil the water which gushes from them being dried up in the chalky earth according to the legend the descendants of lincius and hypermnestra ruled in argos on the other hand the legend of the migration of the pelopidae from lydia to greece seems to have a historical foundation pelops son of king tantalus who ruled the country about the sipolis came to ellis in peloponnesus his sons atreus and thyestes with the help of achaeans from pathiotis made themselves masters of tyrans and mycenae which had been founded by perseus of the sons of atreus agamemnon reigned over the whole of argolis while menelaus became king of sparta and messina the buildings and sculptures in mycenae which are ascribed to the atridae resemble assyrian art and assyrian art could have come to greece earliest by way of lydia cadmus the mythical founder of the theban state is the personification of phoenician colonization or at least of the civilization which hellas had received from phoenicia the national heroes of grecian legend the myth of heracles son of zeus and alcmena grew up out of the union of various religious historical and ethical elements heracles was in the beginning an actual divinity whom tradition in the course of time degraded to a demigod in him are united the phoenician melkart and sandon the sun-god of asia minor and his heroic deeds are for the most part adaptations of the deeds ascribed to these two divinities heracles is at the same time the popular symbol brought by the phoenicians to the eastern greeks and from them to the western greeks of the pioneer activity of the ancient settlements a portion of the mass of legends connected with heracles and after his transformation into a greek is explained by later historical relations the dorians adopted him as their tribal hero their kings called themselves his descendants heraclidae from him they derived their rights to the peloponnesus hence his rights in the legends not only over mycenae in opposition to eurystheus but also over other parts of the peninsula augeus in ellis tyndarios in sparta the poetry of a later time regarding heracles as an ethical conception presented him as the model of heroism moral force and renunciation especially of willing obedience the twelve labors at the behest of eurystheus the choice of hercules theseus son of aegeus the descendant of cecrops is the family hero of the ionians and of the athenians in particular he cleared the road from treason where according to the legend he was born to athens especially the isthmus of robbers periphetes sinis skyron damastes or procrustes so that the ionians of the peloponnesus and of attica thenceforward could assemble on the isthmus at the sacrifices to poseidon theseus put to death the minotaur in crete and rescued the athenian youths and maidens sent as a sacrifice to him he conquered at marathon the wild bull which is said to have likewise come from crete he repulsed the amazons who made an attack upon athens for the purpose of avenging the rape of antiope these three myths express the historical fact of the liberation of attica from the tribute which it owed to the phoenicians of crete and the smaller islands who offered human sacrifices to their god moloch the origin of the story of the amazons is to be found in the virgin servants 
of the phoenician goddess ashtart who at the religious ceremonies executed dances in armour the legend moreover ascribes to theseus the union of the inhabitants of attica into one state and the separation of the people into the three orders eupatridi nobles geomori peasants and demiurgi artisans whereas the arrangement of the four ancient classes phyli geliantes nobles hoplites warriors argadius artisans e g corius shepherds was referred by the athenians to the mythical tribal ancestor of the ionian tribe ion the grecian legends adopted minos also originally of phoenician origin and transformed him into a hero of the dorians who dwelt in crete since one thousand and a wise legislator and suppressor of piracy advanced civilization existed in crete before fifteen hundred concerted enterprises of the heroic time expedition of the argonauts the golden fleece phrixos son of the king of the minyi athamas of iokos in thessaly whom his father was about to sacrifice to zeus in order to obtain rain fled with his sister hella on the ram with the golden fleece who was given them by their mother nephili hella during the journey fell into the sea which is now called hellespont sea of hella near abydos phrixos reached colchis on the pontus euxenus and king etes the ram was sacrificed the golden fleece preserved in a grove of the god ares guarded by a dragon jason from iolcos incited by his uncle peleus sailed in the ship argo to colchis at the head of a band of heroes consisting according to the original myth of minyi alone but according to the later legends accompanied by heracles theseus castor pollux orpheus etc they gained possession of the fleece by the aid of the enchantress medea daughter of etes returned to iolcus peleus murdered at the instigation of medea according to a later continuation of the legend flight of jason and medea to corinth where jason fell in love with glauca the daughter of the king medea poisoned glauca and killed her own children medea went to athens and became the consort of aegeus this myth seems to have been originally purely symbolical the golden ram which nephili that is the cloud sends is a representation of the fertilizing power of rain clouds the cloud ram departs to his home the land of the sun god his fleece a pledge of blessing is brought back by jason the healer the bringer of blessings with the help of the daughter of the son of the sun eetes who is learned in magic this myth was afterwards expanded and localized in a manner which hints at the early voyages of the pelasgic minyi the principal site of the wealth and power of the minyi was orcominos in boeotia but the gulf of pagasi on which iolcus is situated is the scene of their early intercourse by sea war of the seven against thebes the story of oedipus appears in its simplest form in homer and was expanded by attic tragic poets oedipus son of jocaste and laos king of thebes a great grandson of cadmus is exposed in infancy in consequence of an oracle which prophesied injury to his parents he was rescued and brought up by polybus in corinth at delphi he kills his father without recognizing him solves the riddle of the sphinx what creature is there which goes on four two and three feet man in childhood in manhood in old age becomes king of thebes and marries his own mother when his crime is made known to him he puts out his eyes his daughters antigone and ismene quarrels of his sons eteocles and polynices polynices attacks thebes with his allies adrastus tydeus amphiarius capanius Hippomedon, parthenopeus 
the hostile brothers fall in personal contest of the other princes all perish but creon the uncle of the brothers who becomes king of thebes war of the epigoni ten years later expedition of the epigoni sons of the seven thebes captured and plundered thersander son of polynices made king of thebes eleven ninety three to eleven eighty four trojan war priam was king of troy or ilium in asia minor his consort was hecuba hecabe of his fifty sons the following appear in the legend hector whose wife is andromache and paris alexandros the latter abducts helena wife of menelaus of sparta the noblest princes of greece unite to bring her back agamemnon of mycenae brother of menelaus and leader of the greeks Sothenelus of tyrants nestor of pelos achilles king of the myrmidons from phthia in thessaly son of peleus and the nereid thetis patroclus ajax and teucer sons of telamon of salamis the younger ajax son of oileus leader of the locrians diomedes of argos son of tydeus odysseus of ithaca son of laertes idomeneus of crete grandson of minos etc among the allies of the trojans from asia minor are sarpedon and glaucus leaders of the lycians troops from mycia menia in lydia patha lagonia and phrygia also thracians and peones from the other side of the strait the historical kernel of this great grecian legend is perhaps the fact of a military expedition of grecian tribes against the trojans and the conquest of troy everything else in the story is mythical perchance the aeolian colonization of historic times and the ensuing contests with the native population gave rise to the romance of the trojan war which tradition then removed to the time before the dorian migration the prehistoric existence of a powerful city in the neighbourhood of troy and its name troia and alion is certain connected with the tale of the trojan war are the stories of the return of the grecian princes the murder of agamemnon by his wife clytemnestra and her paramour and the vengeance of his children orestes and electra the ten years wandering of odysseus and his many adventures polyphemus lastragonus circe calypso the phaeacians etc end of section sixteen this recording is in the public domain section seventeen of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world's story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by karl pletz translated by william h dillingast section seventeen d second period from the thessalian and dorian migration to the beginning of the persian wars eleven o four question mark to five hundred migration of the thessalians from epirus to the valley of the peneus thenceforward called thessaly of the former inhabitants aeolians part became serfs penestai part fled the country a portion of the latter conquered boeotia the previous inhabitants of boeotia probably pelasgians as for instance the minya in orcomenos and the cadmiums in thebes were partly subdued partly scattered in various settlements their name is henceforward unknown to history the dorians were likewise driven away by the thessalians they had inhabited the country about the othrys and eta and the small mountainous region where they maintained themselves after the invasion and which was known as doris that portion of them which emigrated also took the southern way strengthened by aetolian bands they crossed to the peloponnesus between naupactus where they constructed vessels and the promontory of ryan this is the so-called dorian migration 
or the conquest of peloponnesus by the dorians and aetolians eleven o four question mark according to the story under the leadership of the heraclidae temenus cresphantes aristodemus descendants of heracles the conquerors crossed the northern portion of the peloponnesus without making a settlement and turned towards the countries on the western coast the inhabitants of these regions the epi being subdued the aetolians established themselves here and founded a new commonwealth called ellis out of the mixture of the aetolians and epi sprang the new tribe of the ally the dorians passed through southern arcadia probably up the valley of the alpheus and established themselves in the south and east of peloponnesus the native population consisting of achaeans and aeolians were in part expelled in part placed in subjection while in some regions they gave up certain territories to the newcomers by treaty the last was the case in laconia where the native chiefs made treaties with the invaders and thereby received for a time recognition of their princely rights and support in their supremacy so arose in peloponnesus one after another but slowly and after much fighting and many revolutions the following dorian communities one messenia cresphantes two sparta procles and eurysthenes sons of aristodemus three argos Temenus, at first the most powerful state at the head of a league to which epidaurus and Cretan, under their own rulers belonged four phileus five sicyon six corinth these three containing many of the old inhabitants who lived among the new inhabitants under the same laws outside of peloponnesus seven megara and eight the island of aegina the remains of the old population the achaeans who were driven from their homes expelled or subjugated the aegialian ionians who inhabited the northern coast of peloponnesus the whole region was henceforward called achaia ten sixty eight question mark codrus the last king of athens fell a voluntary sacrifice in battle against the dorians according to the legend codrus was the son of the nestorian melanthus who had fled from pylos to athens the immediate consequence of these migrations and conquests was the practice of colonization on a great scale which at first was carried on by the tribes which had been expelled from their homes but in which the conquering dorians soon took active part the pelasgic population driven from thessaly settled partly on the peninsula chalcadice partly in crete and partly on the coast of mysia the minyi from iochus and orchomenos occupied lemnos imbrus samothrace more important were the aeolian ionian dorian colonies which settled along the coast of asia minor and its islands one thousand to nine hundred question mark aeolian and achaean colonies mytilene and mythimna on the island of lesbos chime and smyrna on the mainland of asia minor smyrna afterwards became ionian the ionians who were driven away by the achaeans fled first to attica but finally founded along the coast of lydia twelve cities with a common sanctuary at panionium on mycale the most important of which were miletus mother city of more than eighty colonies ephesus phocia colophon and occupied the islands of samos and chios dorian colonies along the coast of caria harley carnassus and canidus dorians and achaeans founded settlements in crete rhodes where they gradually drove out the phoenicians in melos and in thera whence in six thirty one the colony of cyrene was sent out to the north coast of africa one thousand question mark footnote the grecian statements concerning the epoch of homer 
differ almost five hundred years from one another End of footnote. homer and his successors homerody iliad and odyssey constitution of society and government during the heroic period and at the beginning of historic times we find everywhere a patriarchal monarchy the hereditary property of families who derive their descent from the gods in the historic times gradual formation in all states of a republican constitution partly through the extinction partly through the expulsion of the old dynasties this republican constitution was at first aristocratic later in most states democratic frequently reaching the latter state through the intervening supremacy of a tyrant a name applied to every one who attained supreme power in an illegal manner and originally not conveying the idea of an arbitrary or cruel government the democracy of antiquity was not however a form of government in which the majority of the inhabitants but in which the majority of the citizens took part in the conduct of the commonwealth in most of the greek states the majority of the population consisted not of citizens but of slaves democracies in the modern sense were almost unknown in ancient times in doric sparta the population consisted of three classes strictly distinct from one another one spartiati comprising oioi that is those having full rights and apanaoinus that is those of less means who could not furnish the required contribution to the sissites divided into three phyli each composed of ten obi these were the dorian conquerors who occupied the fertile portions of the laconian territory the valley of eurotas and the lowlands extending to the sea to lacedaemonians or periosi that is they who dwell round about descendants of those achaeans who had submitted to the conquerors by treaties they were free but paid dues as tributary property holders and small landowners and were without political rights but were however bound to military service three helots prisoners question mark serfs of the state they were divided among the spartiati by lot until their lands paying to their lords a fixed portion of the harvest the number of the perioisi was almost four times that of the spartiati while the number of the helots was perhaps from two to three times as great as that of the peri e si eight twenty question mark constitution and laws of lycurgus lycurgus according to tradition of royal descent and guardian of the young king Carolaeus arranged the relation of the three classes as described above according to settled principles his code of laws was for the spartiati alone the form of government was an aristocratic republic in spite of the two hereditary kings generals high priests judges both kings must be of the heraclid race one a member of the agedi from agis son of eurystheus the other of the Eurypontidae from Eurypon, grandson of procles the council of elders twenty gerontes at least sixty years of age elected for life under the two kings as presiding officers had won the previous discussion of everything that was to be laid before the popular assembly two jurisdiction over capital crimes the popular assembly alia consisting of all spartiati over thirty years of age who had not lost their political rights had no right of initiation and decided without debate at a later period the five e fours that is inspectors for the five wards who had probably existed before lycurgus acquired great power assignment of an hereditary landed estate to every spartan family which had lost its possessions since the conquest equal division of the helots or slaves of the state for the purpose of tilling these lands no new division of all landed property tradition makes lycurgus divide the land into nine thousand four thousand five hundred question mark lots 
for the spartia tai and thirty thousand for the perii sai establishment of social unions or compulsory clubs Hakniai, whose members ate together even in time of peace fiditia or sisitia children were brought up in common and the young men of the spartan warrior nobles dwelt together the cryptia an organized guard over the helots by young spartans no actual hunting of the helots seven seventy six first olympiad that is the first year in which the name of the olympian victor was recorded the first was cor Roybus. olympian games raised to greater importance since eight twenty by the participation of sparta question mark nemean games since five seventy three in honor of zeus isthmian games poseidon since five eighty two and pythian games apollo enlarged after five ninety oracle of apollo at delphi founded according to tradition at the command of the god by Cretans, that is dorians from gnosis amphictyonis societies for common worship performance of sacrifices the most important of which was the delphic seven thirty four foundation of syracuse by the corinthian archaeus seven forty three to seven twenty four question mark first messenian war aristodemus king of the messenians defence of ithome those messenians that did not emigrate became tributary a part of the land was confiscated as conquered territory seven o eight foundation of tarentum by the spartan philanthus six forty five to six twenty eight second messenian war aristomenes defence of ira for nine years the athenian bard tertius accompanied the spartans after the fall of ira the greater part of the messenians fled to sicily Zankel also was occupied by them but does not appear to have received the name masana before the fifth century the remaining messenians became helots in athens government of the nobles eupatra d since the death of codrus ten sixty eight question mark the chief officers of state were the archons at first ten sixty seven to seven fifty three chosen for life from the family of codrus exclusively afterwards seven fifty two to six eighty three elected for ten years the first four only being of the family of codrus the rest taken from the eupatri d in general from six eighty two on there were nine archons chosen every year and serving only one year taken from the eupatri d alone and chosen by them alone they were one archon eponymous that is he from whom the year is named the presiding officer to basilius that is king of the sacrifices high priest three polar marcus at first leader of the army afterwards when the military command was entrusted to strategies by turn only superintendent of military affairs the other six were the the t judges heads of the department of justice circa six twenty one laws of the archon draco no alteration of the constitution only reform of the criminal law and the law relating to debts introducing great severity frequent use of the death penalty and heavy fines hence later known as the law of draco written with blood six twenty four question mark insurrection of chilon who with the assistance of his father-in-law theagenes tyrant of megara seized the acropolis chilon and was driven into banishment by the archon megacles of the family of the alcaminidae and his followers were put to death while clinging for protection to the altars on account of this sacrilege the archons for the year were banished religious purification of athens by epimenides of Cnosis. solon of the family of the nelidae gained great influence by the recapture of salamis which had been taken by the megarians and through his share in the first sacred war six hundred to five ninety against chrysa and cura whose inhabitants had robbed the temple of apollo in delphi the amphitionis destroyed both cities after a long contest the inhabitants were enslaved in their land consecrated to the pythian apollo growing dissatisfaction in athens with the government of the nobility 
and internal disorders the citizens were divided into three parties one the great landowners of the plain the eupetridae two the peasants of the mountainous districts three the inhabitants of the coast a well-to-do middle class five ninety four solon while archon eponymous being authorized by a special enactment to negotiate between the aristocracy and the people proposed and carried out at first the saisakthia that is the removal of burdens whereby debts secured by mortgage were reduced about twenty seven per cent by the introduction of a new standard of coinage the attic or eubean talent one thousand seventy eight dollars eighty seven cents instead of the aginitum talent one thousand six hundred and thirty dollars and fifty cents personal security for debts was abolished and all money fines as yet unpaid were remitted amnesty for all who had been deprived of their political rights Atimoy. return of the alcamedidi the constitution and laws of solon were established for the citizens politi only excluded from all political rights were one the metisai foreigners not citizens but living in athens under protection of the government who were regarded in law as minors and required to be represented by a patron who was a citizen in all legal transactions the slaves do loy the two latter classes formed the great majority of the inhabitants in her most prosperous days the citizens of athens may be estimated at ninety thousand the metisai at forty five thousand the slaves at three hundred and sixty thousand so that in the period of most extreme democracy the sovereign people formed a small minority of the population division of all citizens for purposes of military service and the exercise of political rights into classes according to income received from property in land no regard being paid to movable property of any kind the unit of measure was the medimnus fifty two point fifty three litre for grain and vegetables the metratus thirty nine point thirty nine litre for wine and olive oil the following four classes were formed one pata cosio medimni men whose estates brought in a minimum of five hundred mendemni and metrates two knights ipis yield of the states three hundred to five hundred mendemni three zugaiti that is they who work their land with one span of mules yield of estates at least one hundred and fifty mendemni four thetes comprising all who owned land yielding less than one hundred and fifty mendemni or possessed no land but were either day labourers in the country or artisans sailors tradesmen in the city taxation consisted in the duty of the citizens as arranged in these four classes to systematically supply ships horses and arms for military service the members of the first three classes served as hoplites heavy armed foot soldiers members of the first two classes served also in case of need as cavalry furnishing their own horses while members of the first class furnished ships for the fleet at their own expense for which purpose they were enrolled in forty-eight na the thetes were to be called upon to serve as light on foot or upon the fleet only to defend the country from invasion there was no other regular taxation of citizens state officials served without pay and the other expenses of the commonwealth were covered by the yield of the mines which were state property by fines by a poll tax laid on the meti sea and by the harbour dues when extraordinary taxes were necessary they were adjusted on the basis of the classes described above the fourth class however being exempt after the time of solon the nine archons were taken from the first class every citizen had a vote in their election the council Ulo, of four hundred formerly chosen from the eupetridae alone was henceforward open to all citizens of the first three classes over thirty years old the popular assembly Asia, consisted of all citizens over twenty years old the areopagus 
from arios pagos footnote the hill only was so called by the ancients the court was known as o n a p o p a l o h u g i in the footnote hill or ares or mars the ancient court which had jurisdiction over murder and arson and a general supervision over the entire administration of the state was after this time composed of archons who had retired from office legal matters were adjusted by the heliasts so called from the halls heliaia where they sat bodies having something of the nature of both judge and jury and consisting of citizens over thirty years old chosen by the famas the t out of a list of six thousand citizens which was formed by lot this democratic constitution of solon paved the way from aristocracy to democracy in itself it was essentially conservative since the larger landed estates were nearly all in the hands of the nobles solon also established a code of laws for regulating the entire civil life which was not completed until later solon left athens for ten years travels in eastern asia crete and egypt new party divisions in athens the nobles were led by lycurgus the middle class by the almionid megacles the poorer classes by pisistratus who in spite of the opposition of solon who had returned to athens and was now an old man constantly gained new supporters and finally made himself master of the acropolis five sixty to five twenty seven pisistratus tyrant of athens emigration of athenian nobles under miltiades the elder to the thracian chersonese solon left athens again and went to asia minor conversation with croesus and sardes he died five fifty nine at soli in cyprus question mark pisistratus ruled in athens under the forms of the solonian constitution which he did not revoke he managed that the people should always choose archons who suited him driven out by a coalition of the nobles and the moderates five fifty nine he returned five years later five fifty four a second time exiled in five fifty two he again regained his power after eleven years absence and ruled without further interruption from five forty one to five twenty seven new emigration of noble families particularly that of the alcmionidae pisistratus conducted his government until his death with mildness and wisdom and bequeathed it to his son hippias five twenty seven to five ten under whom platii seceded from the boeotian league and entered into alliance with athens five nineteen the boeotians were defeated by the athenians hippias conducted the government after the manner of his father until his brother hipparchus was murdered by harmodius and aristogeiton in five fourteen see thucydides six fifty four to fifty nine where he criticizes the traditional tale of harmodius and aristogeiton hippias took a cruel revenge was driven out of the city by the exiled nobles cleisthenes at the head of the alcmenidae in connection with a spartan army under cleomenes he took refuge with darius king of persia five o nine reforms of cleisthenes son of megacles grandson of cleisthenes of sicyon this was not only a change in the constitution but a social reform as well the constitution of solon was not however repealed but only further developed in a democratic manner without as yet introducing equal political rights of all citizens the solonian arrangement of classes for purposes of taxation remained the archonship was as before restricted to the first class and membership of the council to the first three classes with the consent of the delphic oracle now indebted to the alcmionidae for the erection of a new temple the four old athenian tribes pelai gileontes hoplites argadius e gigorius which solon had left in existence were set aside and there were substituted for them ten new tribes which were political and religious unions these new tribes did not form connected territorial divisions each tribe consisted of ten deans or local communities which however were not contiguous but were scattered about the country and interspersed with deans belonging to other tribes 
in all there were a hundred deems later one hundred and seventy four this arrangement was designed to break up the local influence of the aristocracy and put an end to the old patriarchal condition of things whereby only nobles and large landowners could hold the position of demarche the presiding officer of a community henceforward every two deems formed a nauquery which was expected to fit out and man a trireme a vessel with three banks of oars whereas the old division vatica made in six eighty two into forty eight nauquerys had been based on the old politico-religious division into tribes and fratries these fratries twelve the subdivisions of the old tribes two lie were untouched by the reform of cleisthenes but they were reduced to the condition of religious corporations for keeping lists of births marriages and deaths but without political importance the council boulot was increased from four hundred to five hundred members fifty for each tribe and each of these sets of fifty presided in the council for the tenth part of a year priatani the members of these presiding committees of fifty were called priatanis instead of four popular assemblies in a year as formerly ten were held henceforward five o eight the athenian nobility headed by isagoras with the help of a spartan army under cleomenes brought about a short reaction cleisthenes fled the acropolis was delivered to the spartans by a treacherous archon a revolt of the athenian populace compelled cleomenes to make a disgraceful capitulation withdrawal of the spartans without arms and surrender of the leaders of the aristocracy the latter were put to death and cleisthenes was recalled five o six an expedition of the spartans against athens under their kings cleomenes and demiratus at the head of their peloponnesian allies was broken up by the sudden withdrawal of the corinthians and the lack of harmony between the spartan kings the allies of the spartans the boeotians and the chalcidians from euboea were defeated by the athenians the latter conquered a part of euboea and apportioned four thousand peasant holdings among attic farmers who retained their athenian citizenship the athenian democracy derived an accession of strength from a reduction in the powers of the archons the place of holding the popular assembly was changed from the market-place agora where according to a custom sanctified by its antiquity the first archon presided to the rocky hill of the Penix, and the duty of presiding in the popular assembly and in the council was fixed upon an officer apistirons who was chosen by lot from the praetani for the time being and who was changed every day this officer also held the keys of the acropolis and of the archives it is uncertain how far cleisthenes had introduced the use of the lot in selecting state officials of course only from the numbers of qualified candidates election of ten strategi one from each tribe each of whom had by turns the chief command of the army which formerly belonged to the archon polemarchus the right of appeal from the decision of the thesmotheti to the heliasts which had been introduced before solon for certain cases was now extended to all cases establishment of the ostracism used until four seventeen that is the power of the sovereign popular assembly to decree by means of a secret ballot with bits of pottery pose the banishment of any citizen who endangered the public liberty without process of law footnote the ostracism was in no sense a sentence or juridical decision but a purely political act of the highest power in the state End of footnote. in peloponnesus during this period of internal development at athens sparta had become the first power soon after the first messenian war an essential increase in the powers of the ephors had taken place under king theopompus about five sixty another reform had been accomplished by the gerant chilon with the aid and religious consecration of epimenides of Cnosus, which completed the aristocratic form of government at sparta and gave increased strength to the commonwealth the ephors received an extraordinary disciplinary power over every individual not excepting even the kings the power of the latter gradually dwindled to a shadow after the victory at thuria five forty nine the power of 
argos which in the seventh century it again attained under king phidon a transient increase was broken and the argive league was dissolved the spartan state which was everywhere the opponent of tyranny and the protector of republican aristocratic governments became the leader of a league of the peloponnesian states and claimed the hegemony over all the hellenic cantons End of section seventeen section eighteen of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world's story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by carl Platz, translated by william h tillinghast section eighteen e third period from the beginning of the persian wars to the loss of independence by the battle of cairo nigh five hundred to three thirty eight five hundred to four forty nine persian wars five hundred to four ninety four revolt of the ionian greeks against the persians the assistance rendered them by athens and eritrea was the immediate cause of the attempt of the persians to subjugate european greece four ninety three to four seventy nine attack of the persians upon the greeks four ninety three four ninety two question mark first expedition of the persians against greece under mardonius the land force subdued the coast of thrace the fleet conquered the island of thasos alexander king of macedonia submitted voluntarily the persian army surprised by a thracian tribe suffered great loss the fleet was for the most part destroyed by a storm off the promontory of athos mardonius thereupon decided to return construction of citadels on the thracian coast to serve as points of support in future campaigns byzantium sestos abdera received persian garrisons four ninety one the persian heralds who required signs of submission water and earth were sacrilegiously murdered at sparta and athens the cyclades and aegina promised submission to persia the athenians received from the spartans aeginetan hostages four ninety second expedition of the persians against greece under Adafernes, the young nephew of darius and an older general the mede Dottus. a fleet of six hundred triremes and the same number of transports with one hundred thousand infantry and ten thousand cavalry on board crossed the aegean sea after destroying the city of naxos the persians landed in euboea the city of eritrea was stormed and taken by treachery those of the inhabitants who were not put to death were sent as prisoners to the great king at susa by the advice of hippias the persians landed on the east coast of attica and encamped in the vicinity of marathon at athens the entire military power of the city nine to ten thousand hoplites was called to arms under the ten strategy of the ten tribes among whom were aristides the mysticlus and miltiades the younger who had been recalled from the chersonese the athenians across the brylissus and advanced to meet the persians they encamped in face of the enemy for nine days in a position strengthened by entrenchments and whence they covered the road to athens reinforced by one thousand plataeans they attacked the persians without waiting for the arrival of the assistance which had been sought from sparta it is probable that the persians had at this time embarked a portion of their army especially the cavalry in order to attempt a second landing in the immediate neighbourhood of athens after hard fighting the athenians defeated the enemy in the battle of marathon four ninety twelve september under the leadership of miltiades the plan of the persians to surprise athens from the sea was prevented by a forced march of the army back to the city 
the persian fleet returned to asia minor hippias died in lemnos four eighty nine ill-considered and unsuccessful attack of miltiades who had been clothed with unrestricted power as military commander upon peros miltiades on his return to athens wounded was brought to trial at the complaint of xantippus and condemned to pay the costs of the expedition amounting to fifty talents which sum was paid by his son cimon after the death of his father aristides and themistocles were now the leading statesmen at athens the latter devoted special attention to increase and improvement of the fleet the necessity of which was proved to the athenians by an unsuccessful war with aegina which occurred at this time and for which they were obliged to hire ships from the corinthians on the motion of themistocles the income from the silver works at laurium were spent upon the fleet and twenty triremes were built every year four eighty three as the growing rivalry between aristides and themistocles endangered the common weal at the suggestion of the council the assembly decided between the two men by the ostracism aristides was condemned to ten years exile from athens by more than six thousand votes themistocles urging the fortification of piraeus a strong wall was built the foundations of which are yet visible which also enclosed the small harbours munichia and zia on the southeast of piraeus radical reform of the naval department the nauqueries which had not been able to furnish all the ships needed by the state since the year five hundred b c were dissolved and their place supplied by a new arrangement known as the triarchies the building of ships and the supply of the more essential portions of their equipment were undertaken by the state the completion of the equipment the repairs and the supplies of the crew during service of one ship was assigned as a service to the state Kyturgia, to one well-to-do citizen who in return was appointed triarch or commander-in-chief of the ship whereas in the nauqueries the expenses of the ships had fallen exclusively upon the pentacosio medimni that is the large landowners all citizens whether landowners or not whose property exceeded a certain standard could be called upon for this purpose and were entitled to the honour of the triarchy four eighty one to four eighty third expedition of the persians against greece under xerxes this expedition planned by darius was carried out by his son xerxes after extensive preparations pisistratus son of hippias and demaratus the deposed king of sparta accompanied xerxes on the expedition construction of a canal at acanthus by the force and the fleet and the subject thracians to avoid the storms about mount athos bridge over the hellespont between sestos and abydos built by phoenician and egyptian labourers erection of large magazines in asia minor and on the coast of thracia four eighty one the troops from the eastern and southern parts of the empire assembled at Quetala in cappadocia whence they were conducted to sardes by the king in person four eighty in the spring departure from sardes about nine hundred thousand men marched through mycia passage of the hellespont lasting seven days marched through thrace and macedonia passage of the fleet more than thirteen hundred triremes among which were over four hundred grecian ships from asia minor through the canal at acanthus after the greeks had given up the plan of defending the pass of tempe the persian army traversed thusly without opposition not only the thessalians but also the boeotian cities with the exception of platee and thespii sent the king symbols of submission four eighty july battle of the greeks under leonidas at thermopylae that is warm gates a pass at the fort of calodromus near hot springs against the army of xerxes the spartan king leonidas defended the pass of thermopylae with about six thousand hoplites among whom were three hundred spartiati and one thousand lacedaemonian prior east side against the overwhelming force of the persians 
while one thousand phokians guarded the footpath over eda the persians guided over this path by the traitor Ephaltes, drove back the phokians and attacked the grecian army in the rear leonidas ordered the perii and the troops of the allies to retire and died a heroic death with his three hundred spartiati and seven hundred thespians who refused to leave him the thebans who had fought under leonidas against their will laid down their arms part of them were cut down part branded at the king's command and sent back to thebes at the same time indecisive sea fight at artemisium four eighty a promontory and temple at the northern point of euboea during the first day about two hundred and eighty grecian ships under conduct of the spartan eurybiades fought against the persian fleet under achaemenes which was weakened through losses by storms and the dispatch of two hundred ships around the southern end of euboea night put an end to the indecisive battle loss of the two hundred persian ships which were sent around euboea on the second day the grecian fleet reinforced by fifty-three triremes had a victorious contest with skelechian ships on the third day also the battle remained undecided although the persians attacked with their whole fleet on receipt of the news of the capture of the pass of thermopylae the grecian fleet hastened to the gulf of salamis the peloponnesian army having established itself on the isthmus began the construction of a wall across the isthmus instead of coming to the assistance of the athenians xerxes traversed central greece without meeting with resistance locrians and dorians submitted he ravaged the land of the phocians the detachment sent to delphi was however driven back with the help of a thunderstorm boeotia was treated as a friendly country thus b e and platii alone were destroyed the athenians abandoned their city leaving only a garrison in the acropolis the fortifications of the piraeus being incomplete the fleet conveyed the old men women and children with all personal effects to salamis aegina and argolis in which latter place the athenian children were provided with schooling at the expense of the inhabitants return of the exiles permitted xerxes entered the city the acropolis was taken by storm the temples thereupon and the city burned to the ground four eighty twenty september naval battle of salamis the grecian fleet now united and strongly reinforced three hundred and seventy eight triremes seven fifty oared vessels was under the command of the spartan eurybiades the grecians being through the contrivance of the strategists themistocles surrounded by the enemy and forced to fight won a brilliant victory over the persian fleet which still numbered seven hundred and fifty question mark vessels the island of persitalia which the persians had occupied was recaptured by aristides who had hastened from aegina to take part in the combat the greeks lost forty the persians two hundred ships the persian fleet anchored in the bay of phaleron retreat not flight of xerxes mardonius was left in thessaly with the best part of the army two hundred and sixty thousand men four eighty november xerxes after suffering great loss through drought and lack of provisions reached the hellespont where he found the fleet which transported the army the bridge having been carried away by storms the grecian fleet instead of pursuing the persians as themistocles wished laid unsuccessful siege to the city of andros the athenians returned to their city and at once began its reconstruction four seventy nine fourth expedition of the persians against greece after mardonius had in vain offered the athenians through alexander of macedonia a separate peace with recognition of their independence he entered attica and advanced on athens strengthened by a reinforcement under artabazus and by contingents from his allies in northern greece thessalians boeotians a part of the phocians and the argives the athenians being a second time faithlessly left in the lurch by the spartans retired again to salamis whatever had been rebuilt in the city the persians destroyed finding the whole peloponnesian force of thirty thousand hoplites and twice as many 
light-armed troops having crossed the isthmus mardonius retired and took up a favourable position in boeotia on the asopus more than ten thousand athenians plataeans and thespians joined the hellenic army pausanias was the leader of the spartans and of the whole force he commanded the most imposing army that hellas had ever seen the hellenes however had no cavalry four seventy nine september battle of plataea after long delay and much marching back and forth pausanias who had twice entrusted the most dangerous positions to the athenians under the command of aristides decided to retreat without offering battle being however attacked by mardonius and compelled to defend himself he fought bravely at the head of the peloponnesians and being well supported by the athenians gained a decisive victory mardonius fell rout of the persians their camp captured by the greeks the grecian army advanced before thebes the leaders of the persian party were given up and executed on the isthmus at the beginning of the campaign against mardonius a grecian fleet under the spartan king leotychidas xantippus commanding the athenians under him had been dispatched to patrol the aegean sea at the call of the samians the fleet sailed for asia minor and took the offensive against the persians four seventy nine to four forty nine offensive war of the grecians against the persians the persian admiral mardantes distrusting the greeks of asia minor who were in his fleet did not venture to accept the naval battle offered him near samos he beached his fleet at the promontory of mycala opposite samos and entrenched himself the grecian marines landed and utterly defeated the persians in the battle of mycala four seventy nine on the day of the battle of plataea question mark captured the camp and burned the persian ships several of the island cities particularly samos lesbos and chios and afterwards the grecian coast towns of asia minor joined the hellenic league the Peloponnesians returned home the athenians and ionians conquered sestos in the thracian chersonese rebuilding and enlargement of athens which in spite of the objection of the peloponnesians was surrounded with strong walls stratagem of themistocles completion of the fortification of piraeus where a large city grew up four seventy eight question mark reform of aristides from which dates the real supremacy of the democracy in athens the state offices were open to all four classes alike under the command of pausanias the united fleet of peloponnesians athenians and ionic greeks of asia minor conquered byzantium and acquired a rich booty the overbearing demeanour of pausanias toward the other members of the league and the winning manner of the athenian leaders aristides and cimon brought it about that after the recall of pausanias by the ephors four seventy seven question mark the hegemony chief conduct of the war was transferred from sparta to athens and a hellenic confederacy simaki was formed the political head of which was athens and whose religious centre was the temple of apollo in delos where the treasury of the league was also established the smaller states contribute money only instead of furnishing contingents of ships rivalry between themistocles and cimon the supporters of the latter procured the ostracism of themistocles he retired to argos while their suspicion attached to him of being implicated in the treasonable intrigues of pausanias the latter threatened with imprisonment by the ephors took refuge in the temple of athena at sparta and there died of starvation four sixty seven question mark themistocles driven from argos went to Corcyra thence to the pyrus and finally to susa where he offered the persian monarch his services against his native land artaxerxes the first gave him a princely domain in asia minor where he died for sixty after the retirement of aristides from political life and his death which occurred soon after four sixty seven question mark cimon became the leader of the athenian commonwealth he began the construction of the two long walls tarkhetch 
one of which connected the city with piraeus and the other with phaleron footnote onken athen versus hellas 172 holds that the walls were begun during the banishment of cymon so also ad schmidt das perikleiska zeitalter 157 who however places the banishment of cymon in 461 into footnote cymon the victorious leader of the fleet of the league captured those places on the thracian coast which were still occupied by the persians i n four sixty nine chastised the pirates of skyra and carried the bones of theseus to athens captured naxos which had revolted from the league and now lost its independence as punishment four sixty seven defeated the fleet and army of the persians in the battle of the Eurymedon in pamphylia four sixty five cimon conquered the Caronesi and punished the island of thasos which had seceded from the confederacy four sixty four earthquakes in sparta insurrection of the laconian helots a portion of whom joined the messenian helots and occupied ithomi four sixty four to four sixty six third messenian war in which the spartans were forced to implore the help of athens which was furnished at the instance of cimon but was afterwards sent back by the suspicious spartans four sixty one the athenians offended allied themselves with the argives the principal enemies of the spartans in the peloponnesus in athens rivalry between cimon head of the aristocratic party and pericles the son of xanthippus leader of the democracy the latter party succeeded in establishing the payment of citizens serving in the army or as judges and the bestowal of alms of the state upon the poor at festivals out of the public treasury the beginning of the decline of the athenian democracy the athenians sent aid to the egyptian rebel inaros against the persians the expedition came to an unfortunate end the athenian army being surrounded on one of the islands of the nile and compelled to surrender four sixty the law of Ialtes took from the court of areopagus the censorship over the state which had been entrusted to it by solon and limited its sphere of action to its judicial powers four fifty nine after this democratic victory cimon was banished from athens by ostracism about this time between four sixty and four fifty four the treasury of the confederacy was transferred from delos to the acropolis of athens the contributions of the members of the league thereby acquired the character of a tribute paid to the athenians the confederates became for the most part subjects of athens which became the capital of a great coast and island empire four fifty nine megara threatened by corinth aegina and epidaurus was placed under the protection of the athenians who connected megara with his port nicaea by long walls four fifty eight the athenians after suffering a defeat in argolus gained two battles at sea over the allied corinthians epidaurians and agentans blockaded aegina and energetically defended megara this great development of power on the part of athens caused a war of the spartans and boeotians against athens four fifty seven to four forty five a spartan army under nicomedes the guardian of the young king blistoanax had been sent to central greece to protect the dorian tetrapolis against the attacks of the phocians who were compelled to give up their conquests the spartan army cut off from a return over the isthmus by the athenians retired to boeotia where it assisted the boeotians against athens four fifty seven battle of tanagra a spartan victory which they neglected to utilize they concluded an armistice with athens and returned to sparta very soon the athenians again invaded boeotia defeated the thebans at enophyta four fifty six and replaced the aristocratic governments in most cities by democratic which were friendly towards athens the phocians and opuntian locrians joined athens aegina was forced to surrender to the athenians after a long siege gave up its ships of war and became tributary four fifty six the athenians laid waste the coasts of laconia 
and conveyed the messenians whom the spartans had granted a free departure from methome to naupactus where they formed a settlement reconciliation between pericles and cimon the latter recalled after an exile of nearly five years four fifty four four fifty one question mark the influence of cimon brought about an armistice between athens and sparta for five years and a new naval expedition against the persians cimon conducted two hundred ships to cyprus he died during the siege of gideon after his death his fleet gained a brilliant victory over the persian that is phoenician Kilikian fleet and the hostile troops on the land in the double battle of salamis in cyprus four forty nine new party struggles in the boeotian cities the aristocrats who had been driven out by the athenians returned the athenians called to the assistance of the democrats were defeated at coronia four forty seven the old aristocratic constitutions were restored not only in boeotia but also in locris phocis and megara which became free from the supremacy of athens after the expiration of the five years armistice the spartans sent an army under their young king pleistoanax to attica in order to assist the eubians in a revolt against the athenians pericles bribed the advisers of the young king and secured the withdrawal of the army then hastening back to euboea with an athenian army he subdued the island anew four forty six second assignment of euboean lands to athenian citizens four forty five thirty years peace between athens and sparta by this peace or more properly armistice the peloponnesian and athenian leagues acknowledged themselves to be two distinct and independent confederacies about this time or at least after the death of cimon negotiations for peace were opened between athens and persia and an athenian embassy under callias was sent to susa no formal peace however was concluded but peaceable intercourse under a tacit recognition of existing political relations gradually took the place of a state of war the athenians gave up cyprus and sent the egyptian rebels to further aid they continued to control the aegean sea and the grecian coast towns of asia minor were mostly their allies or subjects in any case practically free from the persian sceptre the so-called peace of cimon wherein the king of persia is said to have formally acknowledged the independence of the greeks of asia minor and promised to send no more ships of war into the aegean would seem to be the invention of a later time four forty four at athens thucydides the son of melasius not the historian of the same name became the leader of the aristocratic party his party attempted to secure the ostracism of pericles but when the votes were counted it was found that thucydides was banished four forty four to four twenty nine athens under the administration of pericles who although never archon conducted the government of the city by his influence in the assembly and in his official capacity as strategist as superintendent of the finances tamius or epimelites and as superintendent of public buildings and other public works four forty to four thirty nine revolt and subjugation of samos four forty three foundation of thurii in southern italy on the ruins of sybaris four thirty seven foundation of amphipolis on the strymon completion of the fortifications of athens by the construction of a third long wall parallel with the first leading to the piraeus magnificent buildings especially on the acropolis the hall of the caryatids in the erechtheion the propylia the parthenon or hecatompedon the bronze statue of athena promachos a colossal figure over fifty feet high by the age of pericles is commonly understood the whole time of his political activity four sixty five to four twenty nine or even the entire period from the persian expeditions to the peloponnesian war this was the most brilliant epoch in the history of athens not only in its political power its trade and commerce but in art and literature the tragic dramatist aeschylus five twenty six to four fifty five sophocles four ninety six to four o five euripides four eighty to four o six later the comic dramatist aristophanes four fifty six question mark to three eighty question mark 
the historian serodotus of halicarnassus four eighty four to four twenty four question mark thucydides four seventy to four hundred question mark the sculptor phidias the architect sictinus calacrates menasicles the painter palaenotus the philosopher socrates four sixty nine to three ninety nine zeno of elia anaxagoras protagoras aspasia of miletus four thirty one to four o four peloponnesian war causes envy of the dorian confederacy at the power of athens the ambition of the athenians and the discontent of those of their allies who had been reduced to subjects immediate causes one the interference of athens in the war between cor Chira and corinth four thirty five to four thirty two which had broken out concerning epidamnus afterwards derhachium in illyria a colony of cor Chira the democrats of epidamnus hard pressed by the exiled nobles in alliance with illyrian barbarians implored aid from their mother city cor Chira, in vain but obtained help from corinth the mother city of cor Chira. enraged at this the cor Chiraeans took sides with the aristocracy of epidamnus defeated the corinthians at actium four thirty four and captured epidamnus corinth and cor Chira vied with one another for help from athens the athenians decided in favour of Colchira, and took part at first with ten afterwards with thirty ships in the battle of Cybota, four thirty two between the corinthians and corchirians wherein the corinthians at first victorious afterwards retired before the athenians to the inhabitants of potidea a corinthian colony on the peninsula of chalcodyke revolted from the athenian league four thirty two and received support from corinth the corinthians were however defeated by the athenians at olynthus and potidea were surrounded and besieged the corinthians supported by the megarians who since four thirty two question mark had been excluded from all attic harbours and markets and by the agenetans entered their complaint against the athenians at sparta the popular assembly at sparta having voted that the athenians had broken the treaty the peloponnesian congress resolved on preparation for war military power of both parties achaia and argos remained neutral at first the peloponnesians were joined by the megarians the oceans the pontian locrians phocians independent allies of the athenians platui corchira xanchuntus chios lesbos thessalians archonians the athenian league including almost all the islands and coasts of the archipelago and the regions beyond had been transformed by naval stations and garrisons into an extensive empire four thirty one the war footnote the first period of the peloponnesian war down to the peace of nicias four twenty one commonly known as the archidamnian war is called by thucydides five twenty five o oh, De End of footnote. began with the surprise of patii by the thebans the gates were opened by treachery but the thebans were driven out of the city many were captured or cruelly slaughtered four thirty one to four twenty five five invasions of attica by the peloponnesians four under the spartan king archidamus the fifth under ages while the athenian fleet laid waste the coasts of peloponnesus the inhabitants of attica took refuge in athens piraeus or encamped between the long walls the genetans were entirely driven away from their island by the athenians and their land divided among athenian citizens the country around megara was harried by an athenian army four thirty a pestilence resembling the plague broke out at athens of which pericles died four twenty nine in the spring of this year capture of potidea cleon footnote not a tanner but an owner of manufactories who carried on his business by means of slaves courteous history of greece three sixty one end of footnote came forward as the leader of the democratic party the head of the aristocratic party was nitius four twenty eight revolt of mytilene in lesbos mythimna remained faithful to the athenians 
before the arrival of the help promised by the peloponnesians mytilene was compelled to surrender by the athenians under pachys four twenty seven the athenian assembly decreed that all citizens of mytilene should be put to death a sentence which on the following day was restricted to the aristocrats more than a thousand were slain the city was razed and the land on the island with the exception of the territory of Mathimna, divided among athenian citizens four twenty seven platyi forced to surrender the survivors of its brave defenders two hundred and twenty five in number were executed by the spartans bloody party contests in corcyra where victory at last remained with the democrats successful expedition of the athenians under demosthenes to assist the arcanonians against the ambrochiots who received help from the peloponnesians four twenty five demosthenes landed in messenia and fortified the ruined fortress of pylos the spartans under brasidas occupied the island of Phacteria opposite pylos the athenian fleet under nytius cut off their retreat spartan envoys in athens offered peace but their proposals were rejected at the instigation of cleon who being appointed by the people strategists in place of nytius took Sphacteria by storm and brought two hundred and ninety two of the enemy among whom were one hundred and twenty spartiati with whom to athens the athenians threatened to put the prisoners to death whenever the peloponnesians should invade attica again four twenty four the island of kithera occupied by the athenians from kithera and from pylos to which latter place the athenians conveyed messenians from naupactus the laconian territory was harassed incessantly the athenians invaded boeotia but were defeated by the boeotians adelium socrates alcibiades expedition of the spartans under brasidas by land to macedonia and thrace with the design of putting an end to the supremacy of the athenians there revolt of several towns from athens brasidas captured amphipolis on account of which the athenian general thucydides the historian who lay with a squadron at thasos was banished the athenians sent cleon to thrace cleon was defeated in the battle of amphipolis four twenty two by brasidas and fell during the fight brasidas died of his wounds four twenty one peace of nicias concluded for fifty years both sides restored conquests and prisoners a condition which was however but imperfectly executed although sparta even entered into alliance with athens to force this peace upon their confederates the war broke out again in three years when alcibiades persuaded the athenians to join the league which argos had formed with several peloponnesian states in order to oppose the oppressive ascendancy of sparta the united argives and athenians were defeated in the battle of mantinea four eighteen by this victory the spartans regained their supremacy in peloponnesus four sixteen the athenians captured melos and put all the citizens to death four fifteen to four thirteen expedition of the athenians against syracuse suggested by the request of augusta for help against salinas and syracuse hermocrates which was granted by the advice of alcibiades a fleet of one hundred and thirty four triremes carrying thirty six thousand men inclusive of sailors among which number were five thousand one hundred hoplites sailed for sicily under alcibiades nicias and lamachus after the occupation of naxos and katana alcibiades was recalled to answer to a charge of participation in a sacrilege mutilation of the hermi ridiculing the eleusinian mysteries he went to argos was condemned to death in his absence and his property was confiscated seeking revenge on his enemies he forthwith went over to the side of sparta four fourteen nicias gained a victory before syracuse and besieged the city with some success death of lamachus at the advice of alcibiades the spartans sent a small fleet under Gallippus to the assistance of syracuse the athenians attacked the city by storm and were repulsed four thirteen 
they suffered from sickness and want reinforced by seventy-three triremes and five thousand hoplites under demosthenes they were nevertheless defeated in two naval battles in the harbor of syracuse their fleet was surrounded the remnants of their army on the retreat by land on the asinaris were in part cut to pieces and part captured four thirteen september nicias and demosthenes were executed in syracuse seven thousand prisoners were sent to the quarries catumii four thirteen march by the advice of alcibiades the spartans occupied and fortified the village of decalia in attica the last nine years of the peloponnesian war are therefore known as the decalian war four thirteen to four o four the spartans made forays from decalia into all parts of attica distress of the athenians flight of slaves financial difficulties of the government the influence of the aristocratic party revived establishment of a new board of ten councillors pro bu koi footnote their functions are a matter of dispute compare grote history of greece seven three sixty two end of footnote regulation of the finances renewed preparations for war alcibiades induced chios erythrae glazomeni and miletus to revolt he was instrumental in forming an alliance between the spartans who declared their willingness to abandon to the persian king all greek cities formerly subject to him and the persian satrap tissaphernes who paid a subsidy to the spartans a new athenian fleet appeared off the coast of asia minor and defeated the peloponnesian fleet near miletus but was prevented from taking the city by a squadron from syracuse four twelve the athenian fleet increased to one hundred and four ships anchored off samos alcibiades being suspected and maligned by the spartans went to tissaphernes over whom he soon exercised great influence at the same time he intrigued with the oligarchs in the athenian army whom however he only kept in suspense and finally deceived in the meantime for eleven march the oligarchs overthrew the democratic constitution at athens by a coup d'etat a new oligarchical council of four hundred citizens was established the popular assembly was limited to five thousand members the payment of all state salaries with the exception of the pay of citizens serving in the army was abolished the oligarchy entered upon negotiations for peace with sparta and endeavoured to break up the new order of things by executions and banishments their rule however was of short duration the army before samos refused to recognize the alteration of the constitution elected new leaders thrasybulus and recalled alcibiades who assumed command but refused to lead the fleet against the oligarchs in athens and insisted that it should remain in the face of the enemy at athens the oligarchical rule of the new council of four hundred was broken after it had lasted four months without direct interference on the part of the army the old council of five hundred was re-established the popular assembly remained limited to five thousand members until four ten question mark the abolition of salaries was not repealed the spartans broke off all connection with tissaphernes and entered into alliance with pharnabazus satrap of bithynia the athenians under thrasybulus defeated the peloponnesian fleet under mindarus and pharnabazus in the four eleven july sea fight at the promontory of kinosima near abydos three months later alcibiades defeated the peloponnesians in a second sea fight at abydos four eleven alcibiades taken prisoner by tissaphernes soon escaped assumed command of the athenian fleet again and annihilated the peloponnesian fleet in the battle of Kizikus, four ten february where he also gained a brilliant victory over the enemy after he had escaped to the land having subdued the coasts of the hellespont and propontis and captured byzantium four o nine four o eight june alcibiades returned to athens in triumph the sentence of alcibiades was repealed and he was appointed commander by land and sea with unlimited power he guarded with the army the festal procession of two luces which had been for a long time discontinued alcibiades conducted the athenian fleet 
to asia minor the spartan lysander had in the meantime assumed the command here and the brother of the future king of persia arta xerxes the second the younger Cyrus, son of darius the second a friend of the spartans had become satrap of asia minor while Alcibiades was engaged on a foraging expedition in the country around phokia the athenian fleet was involved by the junior commanders in an engagement and defeated by lysander in the battle of notium in the gulf of ephesus four o seven on account of this misfortune alcibiades was deposed from his command he retired to the hellespont and died in four o four the new spartan admiral Calacratides surrounded the athenian fleet under conan at mytilene the athenians with the greatest exertions fitted out a new fleet which hastened to the aid of conan the united athenian fleet completely defeated the peloponnesians in four o six september in the great battle of argenusai small islands off the coast of asia minor east of lesbos six of the victorious generals were sentenced to death in athens for having abandoned shipwrecked troops in a storm and not buried the bodies and were actually executed lysander again appointed admiral by the spartans defeated and annihilated the athenian fleet in four o five august question mark in the battle of egospotami goat river opposite lamp Sacus, conan escaped with eight ships slaughter of three thousand athenian prisoners lysander having first completely destroyed the athenian power on the coasts and islands and everywhere established oligarchical constitutions appeared with the peloponnesian fleet before piraeus while the peloponnesian army enclosed athens on the land side starvation caused the surrender of athens and end of the war four o four april the walls of piraeus and the long walls between the city and the harbours were torn down all ships of war but twelve were delivered to the enemy the democracy was overthrown and the government entrusted to thirty men of the oligarchical party four o four to three seventy one second hegemony of the spartans four o four to four o three government of the so-called thirty tyrants of whom the best known is Critias at athens the thirty instead of forming a new constitution endeavoured to secure the permanent control of the state and to strengthen their power by receiving a spartan garrison in the acropolis and by numerous executions at last one of the thirty baramenes was put to death at the instance of critias thrasybulus assembled the democratic fugitives in phyle defeated the troops of the thirty and seized piraeus critias was slain ten more moderate oligarchs took the place of the thirty through the mediation of pausanias king of sparta an understanding was reached between thrasybulus and the oligarchs in athens the remainder of the thirty were put to death general amnesty re-establishment of a moderate democracy the government was rearranged by the revision of the laws made by euclides four o three four o one to four hundred retreat of the ten thousand under xenophon three ninety nine socrates four sixty nine to three ninety nine executed in athens by poison his scholar plato four twenty seven to three forty eight three ninety nine to three ninety four war between the spartans and persians the persian satrap tissaphernes attempted to punish the greek cities of asia minor for their share in the expedition of the younger Cyrus. the spartans came to the aid of the cities at first under thyabron then under Der Kilidus, finally under agesilaus the latter forced his way into asia and defeated tissaphernes who was executed by command of his successor tithrostes persian gold produced the corinthian war against sparta three ninety five to three eighty seven whose harmos governors had made themselves universally hated coalition of thebes corinth and argos joined by athens the spartan lysander fell at harliardus in boeotia in battle with the allies three ninety five the lacedaemonian fleet was defeated in the battle of conidus three ninety four by the athenian conon and the persian satrap pharnabazus the spartan harmos were driven from the grecian cities of asia minor 
agesilaus was recalled traversed thrace macedonia and thessaly and defeated the allies in the battle of coronea in western boeotia three ninety four conon and the persian satrap far nabazus plundered the coasts of laconia conon rebuilt the long walls with persian money after some years of fighting in which hippocrates and cabrias were the athenian leaders the peace of antalcitus three eighty seven was concluded between the grecian states and the persians it took its name from the spartan admiral who was sent as envoy to susa the grecian cities of asia minor and the islands of glazomene and cyprus were abandoned to the persians the athenians retained control of lemnos imbros and skyros only all other states and islands were to be independent under spartan and persian guarantee three seventy nine to three sixty two war between thebes and sparta caused by the occupation of the cadmea in thebes three eighty three by the spartan phoebitus who was urged to take this step by the aristocratic party in thebes as he was conducting an army through boeotia against olynthus the theban democrats had taken refuge in athens whence under pelopidas they liberated thebes in three seventy nine and compelled the spartans to withdraw from the cadmea cleom brodus and anagesilaus were dispatched to boeotia but met with little success the spartans attempted to surprise piraeus this induced the athenians to enter into open alliance with thebes they founded a new confederacy Simaki, embracing seventy communities under more just conditions than those of the first league three seventy eight the spartans were repeatedly defeated at sea by the athenians cabrius phocion and timotheus peace between sparta and athens cleombrotus invaded boeotia anew but in the battle of leuctra three seventy one he was defeated by epaminondas and fell on the field three seventy one to three sixty two hegemony of the thebans three seventy first invasion of peloponnesus by the thebans under impomenondas and pelopidas in order to protect the arcadians who had revolted from sparta megalopolis founded an attack by the thebans on sparta proved unsuccessful but they ravaged laconia and proclaimed the independence of the messenians foundation of messene the athenians came to the aid of the spartans retreat of the thebans three sixty nine second theban invasion of peloponnesus three sixty seven third invasion sicyon revolted from sparta the third invasion produced a momentary alliance of achaia and thebes the corinthians and phliasians concluded peace with thebes in the north the thebans sent several expeditions against the tyrant alexander of sphere for the liberation of the thessalians on the second expedition pelopolis was captured but soon set free by epaminondas on a new expedition he fell as victor at kynocephali three sixty four fourth expedition of the thebans against peloponnesus epaminondas fell in the battle of mantinea as victor against the spartans and their allies among others six thousand athenians three sixty two general peace between the grecian states which the spartans alone refused to accept not being willing to acknowledge the independence of messenia agesilaus went to egypt to the assistance of the rebels under tacos whose fleet was commanded by the athenian cabrius agesilaus died on the voyage home three sixty rise of the macedonian power three fifty nine to three thirty six philip son of amyntas had passed three years three sixty eight to three sixty five in thebes as a hostage and had there learned to appreciate grecian culture and military science through intercourse with epaminondas and other men of note after the death of his brother perdiccas he succeeded him as king of the macedonians at the age of twenty-three gifted with courage and a clear political insight he strengthened the royal power in a country torn by party strife defended the borders against the restless paeonian and illyrian tribes and established a standing army phalanx after he had given his own state a firm organization he turned his attention to extending his power along the thracian coast and by cunning trickery encroached on the athenian territory he captured amphipolis three fifty seven pinda 
potidia gained possession of the thracian mines concluded an alliance with olynthus against the athenians and founded philippi three fifty seven to three fifty five social war of the athenian league against athens since three seventy eight athens had regained much of her former influence it was speedily lost chios Kos, rhodes and byzantium revolted cabrius perished in the harbour of chios iphicrates and timotheus leaders of the athenians the latter were forced to acknowledge the independence of their former allies three fifty five to three forty six second holy war against the phocians who had been condemned by the amphictyonic council to pay an enormous fine for having used the holy land of cura which was consecrated to the delphian apollo the thebans managed to have the collection of the fine entrusted to themselves the phocians plundered the temple of delphi and were thereby enabled to maintain by means of mercenary troops a long and dubious war against thebans locrians and thessalians leaders of the phocians follow melus died three fifty four ono marcus his brother phalus and son phalicus after a long contest ono marcus fell three fifty two in battle against philip of macedonia whose entrance into central greece was prevented by an athenian army at thermopylae at a later period philip was called upon by the thebans for assistance against the victorious phalicus the phocians forced by philip who had subdued the thessalians and secured thermopylae to lay down their arms their cities were deprived of their walls by a decree of the amphictyonic council the inhabitants were separated into villages and made tributary to the delphian god philip was elected to the amphictyonic council in place of the phocians philip whose power had steadily increased had been at war with athens since his occupation of amphipolis in athens demosthenes three eighty three to three twenty two since three fifty one when he delivered his first philippic was the soul of an organization of a national opposition to the threatening power of macedonia olynthus having revolted from philip and made peace with athens was hard pressed by the king and begged aid from athens the three olynthiac orations of demosthenes before the arrival of the athenian assistants philip captured olynthus by treachery and destroyed the city three forty eight as well as a large number of smaller places in chalcidike and sold the inhabitants as slaves the opponents of demosthenes eubulus and eschenus formation of a macedonian party in athens negotiations with philip which in spite of the opposition of demosthenes led to the shameful peace of philocrates three forty six which left all conquests in the hands of the king a complaint being entered at athens by hyperides against philocrates he went into exile demosthenes lodged a complaint against the Shkines, who was declared not guilty three forty three philip endeavoured to extend his power to the propontis and the pontus euxinus and founded numerous colonies in thrace philippopolis the national party at athens succeeded in forming a league of hellenic states among others megara achaia corinth under the lead of athens against philip the king besieged parent and byzantium in vain the athenians declared war against him sent a fleet and an army to byzantium and forced him to raise the siege athens derived her supply of grain from the countries on the black sea hence her sensitiveness in regard to byzantium which was the key to the euxine three thirty nine to three thirty eight third holy war against amphissa at the instigation of philip Eschenus, the amphictyonic council had decreed the punishment of the locrians of amphissa for having occupied some ground which was consecrated to apollo philip entrusted with the execution of the sentence by the amphictyons seized elatia which commanded the entrance to boeotia great dismay in greece the athenians fitted out a fleet and an army at the instance of demosthenes who went in person to thebes and induced the thebans to form an alliance with athens the allied thebans and athenians were defeated in the battle of chironia three thirty eight august by philip whose son alexander decided the battle by annihilating the holy band of the thebans 
philip punished the thebans severely and placed a garrison in the cadmia to the athenians he granted a favorable peace peace of damodes he advanced into peloponnesus took a large part of her territory from sparta and divided it among the messenians argives and arcadians macedonian hegemony at a national assembly at corinth where the spartans only did not appear philip caused himself to be chosen leader with dictatorial power of the grecian forces against the persians strategos autocrator ton elenon in other respects the grecian cantons were to retain their autonomy a congress Synedrion, at corinth should adjust their differences End of section eighteen section nineteen of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world's story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by carl pletz translated by william h tillinghast section nineteen f fourth period graeco macedonian or hellenistic epoch down to the subjugation of greece by the romans three thirty eight to one forty six after the murder of philip who was on the point of beginning the war against persia by pausanias three thirty six the macedonian throne was occupied by his son who had been educated by aristotle three eighty four to three twenty two and was now twenty years old three thirty six to three twenty three alexander the great he forced the greeks to transfer to him the hegemony and the command against the persians quickly reduced the revolted thracians tribalians geti and illyrians in the north appeared on the news of a grecian uprising of the athenians and thebans for the second time in greece defeated the thebans destroyed thebes with the exception of the house of the poet pindar five twenty two to four forty two and sold the inhabitants as slaves the terrified athenians submitted and were pardoned antipater left as vicegerent in macedonia in three thirty revolt of the spartans put down by antipater in the bloody battle of megalopolis where five thousand spartans under their king agus the second met a heroic death three thirty four spring expedition of alexander against persia which was not merely a war of conquest but also a scientific expedition and a journey of discovery alexander crossed the hellespont at abydos with thirty thousand infantry and five thousand cavalry generals perdiccas clitus parmenio hephaestio crateris ptolemaeus antigonus defeated the persian satraps and memnon leader of the grecian mercenaries of darius completely in the battle of the granicus a rivulet in troas three thirty four rescue of alexander by clitus advancing through mysia and lydia alexander proclaimed the freedom of the grecian cities and islands from persian rule conquered miletus and harlequinasus and traversed caria and lycia prevented from the advancing further by the steep mountains he went northward through the land of the pisidians to phrygia by way of calini gordium the gordian knot and through cappadocia to calicia bath in the kidnus at tarsus he was taken ill but speedily recovering potion of the physician philippus he passed through the syrian gates to mary 
andras on the coast in syria meantime the persian king darius the third had approached from the euphrates with a large army and got to the rear of the macedonians on hearing this alexander turned back from syria and gained a brilliant victory over the persians in the battle of isis in kilikia three thirty three november an immense number of persians fell the rest were captured or scattered darius escaped but his mother his wives and daughters fell into the hands of the victor in order to completely destroy the persian power at sea alexander conquered syria phoenicia where he besieged tyre for seven months and palestine advanced into egypt without opposition and went from pelusium to memphis foundation of alexandria on a well-chosen site expedition across the libyan desert to the oracle of zeus amon in the oasis of siva leaving egypt alexander passed through palestine and syria by way of damascus crossed the euphrates at thapsacus traversed mesopotamia crossed the tigris and defeated the persian army which outnumbered his own twenty times in the battle of gargamela or arbella three thirty one october not far from the ruins of nineveh while darius fled northward alexander crossed the tigris a second time entered babylon without resistance traversed babylonia crossed the tigris a third time captured the capital of persia susa in susiana and traversed persis capture of parsagadi and persepolis in the spring of three thirty alexander set out in pursuit of darius crossing medea to ecbatana in the north he hastened through the caspian gates to parthia there in the neighbourhood of hecatompolis darius codomanus was murdered three thirty by the satrap bessus who fled to bactria and assumed the royal title after an expedition northward to hyrcania against the grecian mercenaries alexander traversed parthia toward the east turned southward for the purpose of punishing an insurrection of satraps and crossed area and drank in Prophasia, discovery of the conspiracy of philotus who was condemned by the army and executed his father parmenia was put to death in ecbatana three thirty at alexander's command alexander now crossed arachosia in a northeasterly direction crossed the paraponesus or indian caucasus in the spring of three twenty nine foundation of a new alexandria advanced into bactria pursued bessus who had retreated beyond the oxus but was delivered to alexander and ultimately crucified alexander went northward as far as the jaxartes the modern sur daria where he founded alexandria escata after some short expeditions against the nomads scythians on the other side of the jaxartes he remained for some time in sogdiana murder of clitus in three twenty eight in maraconda now samarkand after which he went to bactria marriage with roxana daughter of a bactrian prince alexander began at this time to adopt oriental clothing and customs three twenty seven expedition of alexander to india having once more crossed the peroponesus alexander after sharp fighting with the mountain tribes reached the indus crossed it and entered the punjab country of five rivers in alliance with the indian prince taxiles at the battle of the high daspis three twenty six by tasta now ahilam he defeated porus and took him prisoner treated him however with magnanimity and replaced him on his throne as a dependent prince foundation of nikea and bukafala alexander went eastward as far as the hyphasis by paca now bejasa or bayas when the macedonian soldiers refused to go farther and compelled him to return to the high daspis construction of a fleet of some two thousand ships which conveyed a portion of the army down the hydaspus to the akasinus now Janob, while the remaining part with two hundred elephants marched along the shore contest with the mali alexander's rash bravery and severe wound after his recovery the fleet and army proceeded 
and finally reached the junction of the united punjab rivers with the indus in three twenty five army and fleet went down the indus Praterus returned to persis with a part of the army by the short route to the west alexander continued with the fleet and land force to the delta of the indus where the fleet under nearchus entered the indian ocean ebb and flow of the tide nearchus coasted to the west and discovered the entrance to the persian gulf while alexander conducted the rest of the army through the desert of gedrosia baluchstan after terrible suffering and severe loss he arrived in carmania met Quateris, and later nearchus on the coast the latter was dispatched to discover the mouths of the tigris and euphrates three twenty four january return of alexander to persis arraignment and punishment of the avaricious and cruel governors who had given up the king and his army for lost arrival in susa here alexander disclosed his great plan of hellenizing the east uniting the victor and the vanquished into one great nation and founding a great macedonian persian universal empire on a basis of equality of the graeco macedonian and the oriental population marriage of alexander with the eldest daughter of darius the third and the youngest sister of Artaxerxes the third while hephaestion took to wife the youngest daughter of darius the third eighty macedonian officers married persian ladies of good family and in consequence of rewards offered by the king ten thousand macedonians took persian wives great plans for opening commercial relations with other nations and for their construction of roads on a large scale alexander as successor of the great king required to be worshipped as a divinity a mutiny of the macedonian army three twenty four july at opus on the tigris was squelled by alexander's courage and wisdom the veterans were disbanded after receiving great rewards and sent to macedonia under crateris while antipater was to bring new troops thence death of hephaestion alexander undertook the exploration of the euphrates three twenty three june death of alexander the great at babylon which he had destined for the capital of the new empire three twenty three to two seventy six wars of the diadochi successors of alexander these long and complicated contests which broke out immediately after the death of alexander destroyed the newly founded universal empire but carried on successfully in another way the work which alexander had begun of hellenizing the east and spreading grecian language and culture hellenistic language he koina dialectos so that the new persian empire which afterwards grew up on this ground was very different from the old persian monarchy and a worthy rival of its great opponent the empire of rome Pedicus became regent in asia for alexander's half-brother philip aridius and his posthumous son by roxana alexander antipater and craterus shared the regency of the west the other generals received lieutenancies ptolemaeus egypt antigonus pamphylia phrygia and lycia eumenes alexander's secretary paphlagonia and cappadocia which however he had first to subdue cassander caria leonatus phrygia on the hellespont the plan of peridicus who married alexander's sister to make himself king caused a league of the other generals against him perdiccas was murdered by his own troops while on an expedition against ptolemaeus three twenty one the new regent antipater made a new assignment of the lieutenancies wherein seleucus obtained the satrapy of babylon after the death of antipater three nineteen a war followed between his son cassander and the aged pallas Burkhan over the regency and tigonus in league with cassander was victorious in asia over eumenes who was betrayed by his own soldiers and whom he executed while cassander was victorious in europe three sixteen lysimachus made himself master of the lieutenancy of thrace antigonus wishing to bring the whole empire under his sceptre a war three fifteen to three o one broke out between antigonus and the other generals in the course of which antigonus and his son demetrius poly or Cates, assumed the royal title three o six their example was followed by seleucus lysimachus cassander during this period a time abounding in horrors every member of the royal family of alexander perished mostly by murder 
his ambitious and cruel mother olympias was condemned to death at the instance of cassander and stoned by the relatives of her own victims after a long contest attended with varying success the war against antigonus was ended by the battle of ipsus three o one in phrygia antigonus fell his son demetrius fled and led for many years an adventurous life as a pirate in europe the war still lasted after the death of cassander two ninety seven his two sons quarrelled about the succession demetrius took the opportunity to seize the supreme power in macedonia and greece he lost his power indeed through arrogance and desire for conquest after a reign of seven years but his son antigonus gonatus after a changeful career gained permanent possession of macedonia two seventy seven thus after many divisions and the formation of many sovereignties of but short duration there grew up out of the macedonian persian universal empire five monarchies of decidedly hellenistic character in which greek was the language of the court and the government of inscriptions and coinage and of the educated classes and in some of which grecian art literature and learning reached a high development nevertheless these five monarchies from their formation to their fall bore the imprint of the deepest moral decay these five states to which we must add the republic of rhodes and the grecian cantons were one egypt under the ptolemies or lagadi with its capital at alexandria ptolemius the first three twenty three to two eighty five called soter that is saviour because he sent aid to the rhodians or lagi that is son of lagus founder of the kingdom ptolemius the second two eighty five to two forty seven called philadelphus from being the husband of his sister arsinoe foundation of the museum with the alexandrine library ptolemius the third two forty seven to two twenty one called eugetes that is benefactor by the priests temporary conquest of korea lycia kilikia cyprus ptolemius the fourth philopater two twenty one to two o five decline of the power of the monarchy ptolemius the fifth epiphanes two o five to one eighty one egypt becomes dependent on the romans two syria under the sulikadi capital at first sulikia on the tigris afterwards antiochia on the orontes seleucus the first nicator three twelve to two eighty one founder of the kingdom antiochus the first soter two eighty one to two sixty one antiochus the second theos two sixty one to two forty six seleucus the second two forty six to two twenty six seleucus the third two twenty six to two twenty two antiochus the third the great two twenty two to one eighty seven defeated at magnesia one ninety by the romans antiochus was compelled to accept a peace which struck the kingdom of the seleucidae from the roll of the great powers the following states separated themselves from the syrian realm of the seleucidae and did not belong to the hellenistic system of states two seventy eight a the confederacy of the galatians in asia minor between bithynia phrygia laconia and cappadocia founded by gallic tribes who during the wars of the diodoci had ravaged macedonia and greece crossed the hellespont and in two seventy eight settled in asia minor they consisted of the three tribes of trochmi tectasagus and tolistoboe each under four tetrarchs with the three capitals tavia ancyra and pasinas in the first century before christ diotarus became king of all galatea which augustus made a roman province two fifty b the parthians who under the arsacadi two fifty b c to two twenty six a d conquered all lands between the euphrates and the indus and formed a dam in the east first against the hellenistic and afterwards against the roman power one sixty seven c the jews under the maccabees the two following countries were never dependent on the empire of the seleucidae a pontus which had it is true submitted to alexander the great but was recognized as independent under its own kings of persian descent of the archimena d it was claimed by the evictors at ipsus the last kings were mithridates the sixth the great and his son parnaces b armenia although kings of armenia first appear after the battle of magnesia one ninety three the kingdom of pergamum 
under the atala di capital pergamus in messia founded by philotirus two eighty three to two sixty three who had been appointed governor by lysimachus eumenes the first two sixty three to two forty one attalus the first two forty one to one ninety seven eumenes the second one ninety seven to one fifty nine founder of the library of pergamus attalus the second one fifty nine to one thirty eight attalus the third one thirty eight to one thirty three who bequeathed the kingdom to the romans for bithynia capital nicomedia founded by nicomedes the first two seventy seven to two fifty xylus two fifty to two twenty eight prusius the first two twenty eight to one eighty three with whom hannibal took refuge prusius the second one eighty three to one forty nine nicomedes the second one forty nine to ninety one nicomedes the third ninety one to seventy five who bequeathed the kingdom to the romans five macedonia under the descendants of demetrius peliketes capital pella antigonus gonatus two seventy seven to two thirty nine demetrius the second two thirty nine to two twenty nine antigonus doson two twenty nine to two twenty philip v the third two twenty one to one seventy nine defeated by the romans at cano one ninety seven perseus one seventy nine to one sixty eight after the battle of pydna one sixty eight macedonia became a dependency of rome in one forty six it was made a roman province six the island of rhodes since the battle of ipsus three o one an independent state since the second century b c dependent ally of the romans made a province by the emperor vespasian seventy one a d seven the greek cantons under the lead of athens made a feudal attempt immediately after the death of alexander the great to throw off the macedonian yoke from the city of lamia and thessaly in the neighbourhood of which the war was principally waged it was known as the lamian war three twenty three to three twenty two the greeks were at first successful under leosthenes and defeated leonatus but were defeated by antipater and craterus at cranon south of apeneus the cantons submitted one after another the athenians were compelled to receive a macedonian garrison in Menichia and to give up their democratic constitution phocion and demades the political leaders citizenship was regulated by a property census demosthenes fled and took poison on the island of caloria argolus during the war between cassander and Pales percon the democratic party regained its supremacy in athens and phocion was executed later however demetrius of phaleron the political companion of phocion became under macedonian supremacy the ruler of the athenian commonwealth three seventeen to three o seven in the course of the wars of the diadochi demetrius Poliorcetes gained possession of athens several times and made the acropolis the scene of the greatest debauchery three o seven to two ninety five the last attempt to throw off the macedonian yoke and regain its old importance in greece was made by athens under glaucon and cremonides in two sixty three b c but it was defeated after a three years war and continued to be tributary to the macedonians thenceforward athens had no political influence in greece it retained however its autonomy as regarded its municipal administration and continued to be the seat of culture and learning thessaly during this period was a macedonian province epirus was for a time a separate state afterwards it was allied with macedonia most of the cantons of central greece and peloponnesus became allies more or less dependent on the macedonian sovereigns the complete subjugation of greece by macedonia was prevented by the aetolian league founded about two eighty and the achaean league which was renewed at the same time the latter grew to considerable power and acquired the hegemony in peloponnesus after it was joined by sicyon two fifty one which was freed from its tyrants by aratus and by corinth two forty three which aratus had freed from the macedonian garrison jealous of this hegemony the aetolian league and sparta which had completely lost her ancient simplicity of life and was in the hands of a wealthy oligarchy joined forces against the achaean league the young king august the fourth paid with his life for his attempt to induce a reform of the spartan state two forty one a similar attempt made by king cleomenes 
the third had better success though for a time only he caused the e force to be surprised and put to death banished eighty oligarchs and established a reformed constitution cleomenes conquered argos and mantinea and waged successful war against the achaean league aratus sought aid against sparta from the macedonian king antigonus doson and delivered the acropolis of corinth into his hands the spartans were defeated in the battle of Selassia in laconia two twenty one cleomenes escaped by flight and died in egypt two twenty the macedonians entered sparta restored the oligarchy and forced upon the spartans an alliance with the achaean league now under macedonian supremacy the latter was immediately afterwards involved in a war with the aetolian league during which the spartans took sides against the achaeans and peloponnesus was horribly ravaged two twenty to two seventeen about this time the aetolian league formed an alliance with the romans against philip the fifth third of macedonia who was allied with hannibal first macedonian war philopemen who has been called the last of the greeks became strategus of the achaean league in two o seven and defeated the spartans under their tyrant machinidus in the battle of mantinea two o six and slew the tyrant in the second macedonian war the achaean league likewise joined the romans against philip the fifth third who after the battle of cynocephali one ninety seven was forced to abandon the hegemony of greece the romans proclaimed the freedom of all the grecian cantons but they gave support everywhere to that party which devoted itself to the advancement of roman interests and caused themselves to be frequently appealed to as arbitrators after the death of a second tyrant of sparta the cruel nabus philopemen humbled the spartans again and forced them to re-enter the achaean league but was soon after taken prisoner and put to death in a war against the messenians who had revolted at the instance of dinocrates one eighty three after the death of philopemen decline of the power of the achaean league which made a final exertion in the so-called achaean war against the romans which ended with the defeat of the greeks at leucopetra on the isthmus and the capture and destruction of corinth one forty six the corinthians were sold as slaves a part of their land was given to Sicyon. the rest became the property of the roman state the remaining greek cantons were treated with kindness and for the most part retained their own administration and jurisdiction but were subject to the roman governor of macedonia it was not until later twenty seven that peloponnesus and central greece seemed to have become a roman province under the name of achaia end of section nineteen chapter twenty of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by carl pletz translated by william h tillinghast section twenty part three roman history a geographical survey of ancient italy italia was first used as the general name of the larger part of the peninsula which is traversed by the apennines and extended to the macra and rubicon since the middle of the third century before christ as applied to the whole peninsula as far as the alps italia was first employed in scientific usage by polybius about one fifty it was not used officially and in a political sense until after the time of augustus it was divided into upper italy central italy and lower italy one upper italy traversed by the patus po and the athesis or Adigus, Adige, Etch, and containing the lakes, Lacus, Verbenus, Lago Maggiore, Lacus, Larius, Lago di Como, and Lacus, Benacus, Lago di Garda, comprise the following three districts, which before Augustus were not reckoned a part of political Italy: one Liguria, Vercelli, 
vercelli torresia later augusta torre norm torino turin genoa genova two gallia cisalpina also called degada in distinction from transalpine gaul which was known as gallia bracata divided by the patis po into a gallia transpadana comum como medio lanum milano milan ticinum pavia on the ticinus a branch of the po cremona on the po mantua on the mencius a branch of the po near which was the village of andis the birthplace of virgil verona on the athesis b gallia cis padana placentia piacenza at the junction of the trebia and the patis mutina modena parma bononia bologna ravenna in ancient times a seaport three venetia padavium padua birthplace of livius aquilia two central italy lying between the little rivers macra and rubicon in the north solaris and fronto in the south was usually divided into six districts etruria latium campania on the mara tyrrhenum or inferum umbria picanum samnium on the mara adaria to come or superum the tiber running from north to south divided etruria on the right from umbria and latium on the left bank the name of samnium is however more correctly applied to the southern inland district of central italy so that the sabellic tribes who were related to the samnites and picentus formed geographically a separate seventh group under which were included the vestini marucini and frentani extending to the adriatic coast and the inland districts of the sabines p ligni and marci one etruria inhabited by the etruscans rosenna or tuscans in twelve communities under kings or lucumos these formed a confederacy whose federal constitution seems to have been exceedingly loose the most important places in etruria were from north to south pisi volateri aretium arezzo cortona perusia perugia west of which lake tressa menace populonia on the coast clusium ciusi falcinii torquinii valerii Cari Veii to Latium and the smaller district of the Latini, Roma on the left bank of the Tiber, a part of the modern city, Trastevere and Borgo is on the right bank, but the principal part of the city is still on the left bank, traditionally said to be built on seven hills, Monts, Capitolinus, Palatinus, Aventinus, Celius, Esquilinus, Calls, Viminalis, Quirinalis, Footnote the expression seven hill city applies properly to old rome the palatine city its transfer to the servian and republican rome is the result of a later misunderstanding the description of the city of the time of constantine leaves out the two calls quirinalis and viminalis and increases the number of months to seven by adding the vaticanus and the janiculus which lay outside of the city proper End of footnote on the southern summit of the mons capitolinus the capitolium with the temple of jupiter capitolinus and the tarpeian rock on the northern summit separated from the southern by the intermontium the arx with the temple of juno monita at the foot of the capital the forum romanum the market-place consisting of the forum proper and the comitum with the speaker's platform rostra named from the prows of the ships from antium between the two in the last century of the republic the forum was surrounded by temples and basilicas for example basilica julia the imperial forms were not open places but masses of buildings and columned porticos the palatinates with the palaces of the emperors east of this the amphitheatrum flavium Colosseum, for eighty thousand spectators north from the capitolinus to the tiber lay the field of mars campus martius during the republic an open field used for military practice athletic sports and political gatherings after caesar and during the imperial period covered with splendid buildings now the centre of the modern city the buildings on the right bank of the tiber did not belong to the herbs proper they were situated partially on the mons janiculus partially on the mons vaticanus where the vatican and the church of st peter now stand eastward stood by the tiber the mausoleum hadriani where the castle of st angelo now stands 
finally must be mentioned the island of the tiber sixteen great artificial roads ran from rome in various directions via appia and via latina to the south via valeria to the east via flamina to the north via aurelia to the west etc ostia the harbour of rome on the left bank of the tiber existed at the time of the kings under the emperors a second harbour portus on the right bank of the tiber laurentum lowinium ardea usuessa pometia aricia on the via appia will latri not far distant all but longer on the slope of mount albanus near the lake of albania tusculum near the present friends scotti cabii tiber tivoli on the anio a branch of the tiber thadini north of rome south of the brook alia in the land of the equi pre nesta afterwards a latin city again in the land of the hernici anagnia in the land of the volskii fregelli arpinum the birthplace of marius and cicero on the coast antium and terracina angzer south of the pomptine marshes in the land of the arancii formae minna terni on the lyris gerigliana suessa aranca near the mons massicus and the ager falernus famous wines three campania traversed by the volturnus volturna with the mountains scaurus and vesuvius near naples two bays separated from one another by a rocky isthmus sinus cuminus bay of naples and sinus pistanus bay of salerno along the coast the turnum cumi founded by a colony from calchas in euboea in ten fifty misenum near the promontory of similar name putioli putsuoli by e near lake lucrinus famous as a watering-place parthenope or Paliopolis, the oldest part of neapolis naples herculaneum and pompeii buried in seventy nine a d by lava and ashes from Silesuvius, solemnum on the sinus pestanus the chief city of the picentus who had been transferred thither inland capua not the modern capua but santa maria maggiore with an immense amphitheatre nola for umbria on the coast or reminum remini pisarum senna gallica singa gaglia inland sentinum iguvium spoletium five picenum and cora on the coast asculum picenum six samnium in the wider sense in the land of the sabini and the turnum birthplace of Sallust, curis riate in the land of the p lini cor finium solmo birthplace of ovid in samnium proper po viarnem asernia beneventa former malventum caudium in the neighbourhood of the caudine pass ferculi caudini three lower italy also called greater greece hellas e megala magna graeca was divided into four districts apulia calabria in the east lucania and brutium in the west footnote this form instead of brutii brutius ager has however no ancient authority the byzantines after the tenth century a d gave brutium the name calabria after the normans have dispossessed them of calabria proper and the eastern peninsula was known after that time as apulia End of footnote. one apulia lucaria osculum apulum cani venusia birthplace of horse near mount volter to calabria brundisium brindisi the port of departure for greece tarentum three lucania prestum po sidonia with notable ruins of temples meta pontum heraclea four brutium sabaris destroyed in five ten by the crotonians thurii afterwards built in its neighbourhood croton not far from the promontory of lacinium locri epizaphirii regium that is rent from regnum the present regio consentia cosenza on the river brucento italian islands sicilia separated from italy by the fretum siculum strait of messina formerly called sicania also trinacia with its three capes or promontories pelorum in the north pacinum in the south and lilibium in the west on the eastern coast from north to south masana formerly zancol toro menium teor mina catana catania at the base of etna syracuse syragosa at the time of its greatest extent comprising five cities or situated on an island and hence also called 
nassos which now forms the whole city with the spring of arethusa acratina tyca neapolis and Pipoli, at first a suburb on the south coast camarina gela agrigentum acragas now gergenti between gela and agrigentum the promontory of echnomus not far from the mouth of the southern river himera salinas on the west coast libibium drepanum erix on the north coast panormus now palermo himera mile in the interior of the island henna sardinia sardo Caralis, cagliari corsica curnos alalia later the roman colony of alaria of the smaller islands the following are noteworthy one melita now malta and gaudos now gazzo south of sicily to the insuli egatus on the west of sicily not far from the promontory lilibium three the insuli iolii now the liparian islands the largest lipara north of sicily four capri e now capri and inaria now ischia at the entrance to the bay of naples five the pontian islands pancha pendataria six ilva now elba End of section twenty section twenty one of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world's story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by carl plutz translated by william h tillinghast section twenty one b religion of the ancient romans the romans possessed an ancient religion entirely distinct from that of greece it was a common inheritance of the italians though probably early receiving etruscan and grecian elements in the last centuries of the republic the theogony of greece was imported into roman literature and to some extent into state religion at still later time under a policy of tolerance all forms of faith and superstition were represented in the great capital the religion of the romans was a polytheism but their deification of nature was not so detailed nor were their deities so human as was the case among the greeks their faith had a sterner aspect the practical side of religion was more natural to them than the poetic side they honoured and utilised their gods but they wove few fantasies about them the great gods were jupiter god of the sky father of gods and men juno his wife goddess of maternity minerva goddess of intellect presiding over the arts mars god of war the most representative of the italian divinities bellona goddess of war Vesta, patron of the Roman state, goddess of the national hearth, where burn the sacred fire. Ceres, Saturnus, goddess and god of agriculture. Ops, goddess of the harvest and of wealth. Hercules, god of gain, presiding over the sanctity of contracts. Mercurius, god of traffic. Neptunus, god of the sea venus seems not to have been one of the original italian divinities she first appears as a goddess of agriculture but was soon identified with aphrodite the grecian goddess of love of the lesser gods there were many watching over every act of individuals and of the state and over every stage of growth and development such were tellus sylvanus terminus quirinus janus the god of the beginning and end represented with a double face gate of janus in the comiturm open in time of war closed in time of peace lares and penates presiding over the family and the home sol luna etc worship the worship of the romans consisted of a round of ceremonies prayers sacrifices games 
of strictly prescribed form and with the object of securing the good will averting the anger or ascertaining the intentions of the gods in private life these ceremonies were performed in the family and were conducted by its head the pater familias in matters affecting the whole people the state which was a larger family conducted the worship in early times the king presided at the ceremonies under the republic a rex sacrificulus was appointed to perform those religious acts which were formerly the exclusive right and duty of the king the state maintained at public cost one colleges of sacred lore having general supervision over religion and all matters connected therewith the most important of these were the college of the pontifices four in number afterwards nine and sixteen the highest religious power in the state with them rested the decision as to which days were suitable for the transaction of business public or private and which not dies fasti et ne fasti hence they controlled the calendar whereby they with the augurs became important instruments in the hands of the government the pontifices also decided among the actions made necessary by the auguries at their head stood the pontifex maximus who appointed the rex sacrificulus and the flamines and vestales college of auguries initially four then nine and sixteen who consulted the will of the gods as revealed in omens by the observation of the flight cries and manner of feeding of certain birds college of fetales twenty in number presiding over the relations between the romans and other peoples they conducted the conclusion of treaties acted as heralds and performed the ceremony of declaration of war by throwing a blood-tipped spear into the hostile territory footnote when the growth of the roman dominion had made this a matter of difficulty a plot of ground in rome was set apart to represent hostile territory and into this the spear was hurled End footnote dumviri sacrorum having the charge of the sibylline books the haruspices exercised the art of interpreting the will of the gods from the examination of the entrails of slaughtered victims they were an etruscan institution two colleges of officiating priests flamines who presided in various temples with chapters of assisting priests salai or dancing priests of quirinus and mars the latter having charge of the sacred shields of mars and silai vestal virgins guardians of the sacred fire of vesta six maidens who had taken the vow of virginity luperci fratres arvales etc besides the observance of sacrifices and the offering of prayers the priests had charge of conducting various public games lupercalia february the fifteenth ferii latinae saturnalia december and others end of section twenty one recording by alan mapstone Section 22 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Carl Plutz. Translated by William H. Tillinghast. Section 22. C ethnographical sketch of italy at the extreme south the iapigians their descent is not certainly established though they undoubtedly belong to the indo-european family and probably to the ilian race in historic times the remnants of the tribe appear 
in striking contradistinction to the true Italici, in process of rapid Hellenization. To the Indo-European family belonged likewise the inhabitants of central Italy, the Italici proper, who were divided into the Latin and the Umbro-Sabellian Oscan tribes. They were the next of kin to the Hellenes. The Italici entered Italy by land. The Latini occupied the western lowlands, Latium connected with Latus. The Umbro-Sabellian tribes spread themselves over the eastern part of central Italy. Umbrians, Picentes, Sabines, Marci, Hernici, Volsci. Footnote. The Ossoni, or Unzi in Campania, probably belonged to the Latin race as well. Also perhaps the Italici in the narrower sense, who dwelt originally in the western part of Lower Italy and the Siculi. End footnote. The main division of this group, the Samnites, occupied the mountain region which was named after them and drove back the Iapygians. From the Samnites several tribes branched off. So the Campanians, called after the plain, Campus, which they settled along the Tyrene Sea. Peculiarly distinct from the Latin and Sabelline Italici in language, religion and customs were the Etruscans, in their own language Racena. Up to the present time all attempts to establish their ethnographical position have failed to reach settled conclusions. The attempt recently made to prove them members of the Indo-European family and the Etruscan language closely related to the Latin must, it would seem, be regarded as a failure. Perhaps the Etruscan people were formed by the union of two different tribes, one of which came to Italy over the Rhaetian Alps, while the other came by sea. Before the invasion of the Celts, Etruscans dwelt north of the Apennines, on both sides of the Po, between the territory of the Veneti, as far as the Adigi, and the Ligurians. The whole of Upper Italy was occupied by Celtic tribes, about 500 BC, which gradually forced the Etruscans and Umbrians southward. Besides all these migrations into Italy from the north by land, colonization of no mean extent began very early on the part of the Hellenes in Sicily and Lower Italy by sea. The Dorians, Chalcidians, i.e. Ionians, and the Aeolians were principally engaged therein. Roman history can be divided into five periods. One, 753 to 510 BC, mythical time of the kings. 2. 510 to 264 BC, development of the constitution by struggles between patricians and plebeians, subjugation of Italy proper, central and lower Italy, down to the beginning of the Punic Wars. 3. 264 to 146 BC, Epoch of the Punic Wars and beginning of the universal rule of Rome, down to the destruction of Carthage and Corinth. 4. 146-31 BC. Firm establishment of the universal supremacy of Rome, by the conquest of the East, Spain and Gaul. Epoch of the Civil Wars, down to the beginning of the absolute rule of Octavian, in consequence of the Battle of Actium. 5. 31 BC to 476 AD. Sway of the Roman Caesars, down to the fall of the Roman Empire of the West. The last period extends into medieval history. End of section 22. Section 23 of An Outline of Universal History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The World Story, Volume 14, An Outline of Universal History by Karl Pletz. 
translated by william h tillinghast section twenty three d first period mythical epoch of the kings seven fifty three to five ten footnote according to verer's era seven fifty three according to cato's seven fifty one but to change years of the city into years before christ seven fifty four or seven fifty two must be used as the minuend both dates belong to the conventional chronology in the footnote foundation of rome according to the roman legends king numitor of alba longa the descendant of aeneas who had settled in latium with some trojan refugees was deprived of his throne by his brother amulius who put his son to death and caused his daughter rhea silvia to become a vestal virgin in order that the line of numitor should perish the twins romulus and remus the sons of rhea silvia and mars the god of war were by command of the king thrown into the tiber then overflowing its banks their cradle being caught by the roots of a fig tree the children were rescued from drowning were suckled by a she-wolf and brought up by the royal shepherd faustulus as they grew up romulus and remus led other shepherds on the hunt and in forays for booty at the festival of the lupercalia they were surprised by robbers romulus was taken prisoner brought before numitor and accused of having plundered his fields numitor recognized his grandsons the latter thereupon attacked the usurper amulius at the head of their band slew him and placed the rightful king their grandfather numitor again on the throne of alba longa with the king's permission the twins founded a city on that place on the bank of the tiber where they had been exposed festival of parilia or parilia april twenty one celebrated as the anniversary of the foundation in a quarrel as to who should give his name to the city remus was killed romulus being now the only king called the city after himself roma surmises about the real origin of rome the results of modern scientific investigations leave not the least doubt that the roman story of the foundation of the city is not historical but an invention having not the slightest basis of fact it is perfectly clear that in reality rome and the romans did not derive their name from the founder of the city but that on the contrary the name romulus was formed by the inventors of the legend from the name of the city and the people all tribal heroes are of divine origin that those of the romans should be sons of mars the god of agriculture and of war needs no explanation the legend of the exposure of the twins and of their miraculous preservation and recognition bears a striking resemblance to the story of the youth of Cyrus, the fabulous descent from the trojan aeneas ascribed to the family of the founder of rome was an invention of grecian writers stesichorus in the sixth century to meus in the third century b c the tale of the building of rome by emigrants from alba under guidance of two princes of divine birth was a naive attempt to explain the growth of a city in the barren and unhealthy roman campagna by connecting it with the common metropolis of latium nothing can be considered historical except that rome was as regards the greater part of its population a latin settlement the city was founded or rather gradually arose at a wholly unknown time and under wholly unknown circumstances the settlement was formed very near the border of latium and just at the head of navigation for small vessels of the tiber the natural highway of commerce for latium without regard to the sterile character of the immediate neighbourhood this gives probability to the supposition that rome in its earliest days was a border trading post of the latins not that rome was ever a mercantile city after the manner of corinth and carthage it was merely a trading village where the imports and exports of latium which was essentially an agricultural district were exchanged 
the opinion that the roman people was a mixed race cannot be maintained when it is considered that the development of the roman language political institutions and religion was free and individual to a degree seldom equalled of the three tribes or townships gowan would seem to have united to form rome the romneys identical with romani the titianes and the lucaries the first was certainly the third in all probability latin the second was it is true sabine but it was soon completely blended with the latin elements as the roman language shows the royal epic according to the roman legend seven fifty three to seven sixteen romulus warrior king establishment of a retreat on the capitolinus appointment of one hundred senatores or patris fathers whose descendants are called patricians the three centuries of knights romneys titianus and lucaries rape of the sabine women war with the sabines following their king titus tatius seized the fortress on the capital through the treachery of tarpeia battle between the romans and sabines interrupted by the sabine women who had been carried off union of the romans and sabines in one double state under the common rule of romulus and tatius until the latter's death war of romulus with bydini and vi romulus is translated during a thunderstorm and henceforward worshipped as the god quirinus seven fifteen to six seventy three numa pompilius of curies elected after a year's interregnum by the romans from among the sabines peaceful king arranges the religious services of the romans according to the advice of the caminus prophetess egeria his consort temple of janus appointment of the five pontifices the first of whom is the pontifex maximus the flaminus the tialis the four auguries the four vestal virgins afterwards increased to six six seventy three to six forty one tullus hostilius warlike king war with alba longa contest of the horatii and curatii decides in favour of rome to which alba is obliged to submit war with vi and bydini treachery of the dictator of alba metius fufetius who is torn in pieces destruction of alba longa the inhabitants are transferred to rome six forty one to six sixteen ancus marcius grandson of numa at the same time peaceful and warlike et numai et romuli memor development of the institution of the Thetiales. successful war with four latin towns the inhabitants of which are settled on the aventine for this reason ancus marcius is represented in the traditional story of the kings of rome as the founder of the class of the plebeians fortification of janiculum construction of a bridge of piles pons sublicius over the tiber foundation of the harbour of ostia six sixteen to five seventy eight tarquinius priscus who with his wife tanaquil emigrated from the etruscan city of tarquinii and for whom grecian descent from the bacchidae of corinth was afterwards invented he became guardian of ancus son and was elected to the throne commencement of the construction of the temple of jupiter on the capitoline hill construction of the cloacae the senate increased to three hundred members the number of equites doubled circus maximus successful wars with the sabines latins and etruscans after the murder of tarquinius by the sons of ancus five seventy eight to five thirty four servius tullius becomes king through the cunning of tanaquil he was the son of the slave woman acrisia and a god was educated like a prince by tanaquil in consequence of the utterance of an oracle and became the son-in-law of tarquinius wars with vi rome joins the latin league construction of the wall of rome establishment of the census and the division of the centuries servius tullius murdered by his son-in-law tarquinius superbus five thirty four to five ten represented by tradition as a cruel despot 
tarquinius superbus that is the haughty subjugates the latin league conquers suessa pometia completes the temple of jupiter capitolinus and gains possession of the city of gabii by the deceit and treachery of his son sextus tradition ascribes to him the acquisition of the sibylline books embassy of titus and aaron's tarquinius the king's sons to the oracle at delphi they are accompanied by their cousin l junius brutus who represents himself as feeble-minded in order to protect his life against the cruelty of the king a story which was invented to explain the name of brutus siege of ardea the rape of lucretia wife of l tarquinius colatanus that is from colatia by the king's son sextus leads to the expulsion of the tarquins and the abolition of monarchy the insurrection is headed by l junius brutus whom the legend makes tribunus celerum although he was commonly considered an imbecile over the body of lucretia who died by her own hand he called the people to arms and incited the army against the king who found the city gates closed upon him and went into exile Louis one fifty seven to sixty historical facts of the epoch of the kings there is no doubt that the constitution of the oldest roman state was a patriarchal monarchy and that after the new settlement had become an independent community the highest power in rome was exercised by a line of sovereigns elected for life rex from the same stem as regeri to govern but neither the number nor all the names of the traditional kings nor yet the deeds ascribed to the reign of each still less the chronology of their reigns can be considered historically authentic the artificiality of the first four reigns which are alternately warlike and peaceable is self-evident doubtless the extension of the roman territory and rome's hegemony over the latin league was not acquired without severe contests and brilliant deeds of arms but the story has come down to us in a fabulous form and has been arbitrarily revised the destruction of alba the ancient metropolis of latium is an historical fact the contest of three roman against three alban brothers their cousins is probably only a personified designation of a war between two closely related towns with similar political divisions as regards the last three reigns it can be considered historical that the royal family of the tarquins was of etruscan origin that under its rule rome made an important advance in power and civilization that the division of the people into classes the erection of the so-called servian wall portions of which are still in existence and the construction of the first cloacae date from their reigns at the commencement of the actual history of rome there is found to exist a sharp division of the population into patricians or citizens with full political rights and plebeians or free inhabitants without political rights like the lacedaemonian periae and the athenian mitikai the traditional legend gives no explanation of this important fact but only two hints at one and those contradictory the citizens having full rights are evidently the descendants of the original settlers the victors and later conquerors since according to roman usage marriages of equals in rank confer the rights of citizenship on the children those having such rights call themselves patricii that is children of the fathers the people who were not included in these families but stood under their protection who were compelled to have a protector patronus were distinguished by the name clientes from cluerae their descendants increased by the former citizens of latin towns conquered in war formed gradually a second roman community whose members were not citizens these were called the plebeians the plebs or plebes connected with pleo plenus that is the masses the great mob as the majority of the population of conquered cities were compelled to enter the plebeian class whether they were settled in or near rome or remained in their old homes it is incorrect to imagine the plebs composed of poor people entirely there were from the beginning many wealthy 
and respected families among them under the oldest constitution of rome which is commonly called from the legend the constitution of romulus the patricians alone formed the municipality and the military force the populace connected with populari to ravage since they alone performed military service they were divided into curiae districts at first ten in number after the union of the titius and lucares with the romnus thirty each curia being divided into ten families or gentis the assembly populace of the citizens or patricians were called by the king when he had an announcement or an inquiry to make formed the comitia curiata to this body citizens under sentence had the right of appeal for pardon provocatio only however with the consent of the king the comitia elected the king who after election exercised absolute power having to consult the community only when changes of the existing law or the commencement of an offensive war were in question the senate council of the elders seniores senatores was an advisatory body named by the king but representing the gentis after a manner this oldest form of the community was essentially altered by a reform conducted during the reign of the last dynasty and which tradition has coupled with the name of servius tullius military service and payment of the tributum was thereby made obligatory on all landowners whether they were citizens or merely inhabitants of the class of metici every freeholder between seventeen and sixty years of age was now liable to service the cavalry composed of citizens continued as before but there was added to it a force of double its strength which consisted wholly or in great part of plebeians the wealthiest landowners were drawn upon to furnish the cavalry no regard at all was paid to political or class differences in making up the infantry but the kind of armour to be furnished by the warriors was regulated in accordance with a property classification this is the Surian classification footnote the census was not expressed in money until the time of appius claudius b c three twelve late in history of rome page twenty two note five translator in the footnote for military service and taxation of patricians and plebeians according to their property census a cavalry equites six pure question mark patrician twelve plebeian and patrician centuries in all eighteen hundred horse all of the first class b foot soldiers podites c table page ninety two it appears from the number of centuries that is companies in the different classes that the division of the land at that time was such that more than half the farms contained twenty jugere or more and a farm of that size was considered the standard in the five classes one hundred and sixty eight centuries of foot soldiers each of one hundred men equals sixteen thousand eight hundred men that is four legions of four thousand two hundred men each two legions juniores first levy seventeen to forty six years old for service in the field and two legions seniores second levy forty seven to sixty years old for garrison service to be added are three centuries of fabri pioneers tuberkinus and cornucinus musicians two centuries akensi velati unarmed substitutes two centuries proletarii and capita kensi making with the cavalry one hundred and ninety three centuries as the population increased the number of centuries was not enlarged but the separate divisions were strengthened by the addition of new recruits without doing away entirely with the standard number this new military body arranged in classes and centuries was henceforward consulted by the king in regard to offensive wars as the army had been when divided into curiae this was at first the only privilege which the new citizens shared all other rights were reserved to the comitia curiata which consisted exclusively of patricians it was not until later at the beginning of the republic that the new arrangement of the community acquired political importance and that a new popular assembly the comitia centuriata developed out of the new military organization 
the reform ascribed to servius had originally a purely military character it gave the plebeians at first scarcely any rights but only burdens it opened the way however whereby they became true citizens the inhabitants who were not landowners be they clientes or foreign metici were henceforward distinct from the land-owning plebs the inhabitants who owned no land were called after the money which they had to pay for protection ariarii for purposes of conscription the city and township were divided into four wards tribus so that each legion contained the same number of recruits from each ward every four later every five years a new census was taken which closed with a sacrifice for a purification lustrum whence in later times lustrum denoted a space of five years End of section twenty three section twenty four of an outline of universal history this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the world story volume fourteen an outline of universal history by karl pletz translated by william h tillingast section twenty four e second period struggles between patricians and plebeians subjugation of italy proper to the beginning of the punic wars five ten to two sixty four five ten question mark expulsion of the tarquins rome a republic according to roman tradition the consuls for the first year of the republic were five o nine question mark lucius junius brutus and l tarquinius colatinus the latter it is said being related to the exiled royal family soon fell under suspicion and was replaced by l valerius poplicola the first consul suffectus to whom tradition ascribes the lex valeria de provocatione ne quis magistratus civum romanum adversus provocationem necret neva verberaret on the same authority the first dictator was titus lartius five o one against the sabines the grecian historian polybius calls the consuls of the first year five o nine question mark lucius junius brutus and marcus horatius footnote polybius three twenty two the statement of polybius that the first treaty between rome and carthage fell in the first year of the republic is disputed by momsen roman chronologie bis auf kaiser second edition page three twenty but is strongly defended by nyssen jahr bucher fuhr philologie eighteen sixty seven and others end of footnote we know absolutely nothing which is historically authenticated about the details of this revolution this alone is certain that the arbitrary rule of the last king brought about his expulsion and the banishment of the whole gens tarquinia the family sepulchre has been discovered in Cairo in etruria the fear lest the commonwealth should be transformed into a tyranny seems to have united the patricians and plebeians for a short time we are better informed about the nature of the constitutional change since on this point inferences can be drawn from the institutions which we find in existence in historic times the change in the constitution was as far as this is possible in a revolution conservative in character the sovereign reigning during life was replaced by two rulers holding office for a year taken from the patricians they were called at first praetors judicus or consulus later the latter name only was applied to them footnote the derivation of consul and praetor is doubtful consul denotes either administrator of the state qui consulate 
republicae or merely colleague praetor denotes general qui praesit exer kitui like the german herzog or one who presides over the state qui priet priest republicae see margaret momsen worm man alter tumor to page seventy one following end of footnote they exercise generally regal power imperium that is sovereignty in war and peace auspicia republica that is supplication of the gods in behalf of the state convening the popular assembly and the senate taking the census appointment of senators and the two patrician quaestors the latter whose office was established during the time of the kings exercised the functions of criminal police and soon acquired the administration of the state treasury under the supervision of the consuls the consuls were assigned twelve lictories as a public indication of their official power according to the lex valeria de provocatione footnote the habeas corpus act of the romans latin history of rome page fifty three translation end of footnote five o nine all citizens had right of appeal from sentences of death pronounced by the consuls which were not delivered according to military law to the people even against the will of the consuls and this appeal was not to the old populace composed of patricians but to comitia centuriata the assembly of the new military and political community founded by the servian constitution the comitia centuriata acquired moreover in consequence of the violent alteration of the constitution the right to elect the consuls or rather according to old roman interpretation the right of designating them to the consul who presided over the election who thereupon appointed them cry are the comitia centuriata acquired also the right of accepting or rejecting bills laid before it but the six patrician sentries of equites remained an important right of voting first on any proposed measures the senate performally consisting of patricians exclusively was now enlarged or rather brought up to its legal number by the admission of plebeians from the equites that is the wealthy hence the formula patris et conscripti the nature of the changes which the comitia curiata underwent in consequence of the revolution is much disputed it is certain only that it soon sank into complete insignificance according to the view which is most commonly received it retained at first the right of approving the elections or resolves of the comitia centuriata a privilege expressed by the formula patris that is patriciae octoris fiunt others understand the expression patris to apply to the senatories and claim the right of approval mentioned above for the senate footnote according to momsen history of rome one two sixty four all new citizens that is all landowning plebeians were in consequence of the revolution five ten admitted to the comitia curiata and the old body of citizens or the patricians and thereby lost the right of debating and deciding for political purposes in an assembly apart from the rest of the citizens this opinion is opposed by other scholars who maintained that plebeians were first admitted to the comitia curiata toward the end of the republic momsen thinks that the right of approval belonged to the smaller purely patrician senate while the larger senate increased by the addition of plebeian conscripti was during the first years of the republic an advisory council for the consuls End of footnote. at a time of special danger the consuls were replaced by an extraordinary official the dictator or magister populi who was not elected but appointed by one of the consuls dictatorum ticari without the participation of the citizens practically however the senate commonly played an important part in the selection as soon as danger was over the dictator resigned his office dictatura se abdicare which he could not hold longer than six months in any event the dictator appointed his magister equitum master of the horse 
the sign of his power which was thoroughly royal was twenty four question mark lictors appeal from his decisions was allowed only in cases where it had been permitted against the king five o nine b c according to the roman legend a conspiracy of young patricians was discovered in rome which proposed the restoration of the monarchy execution of brutus son five hundred and eight unsuccessful war of the romans against the etruscan king porcena of clausium the romans were defeated and compelled to purchase peace by a surrender of territory and complete disarming roman story of horatius cocles the brave defender of the bridge over the tiber of the heroic courage of mucius skywola that is left-handed the well-known story is probably only an attempt to explain the name and clylia in livius two nine through thirteen when the etruscans advanced further into latium they were defeated by the latins and their allies from lower italy before Aurichia, and could not maintain themselves on the left bank of the tiber in consequence of this etruscan defeat rome seems to have freed itself from the disgraceful peace imposed upon it and to have gradually regained its former powerful position four ninety six question mark tradition of a great victory of the romans over the latins by a small lake regillus near tusculum won by the dictator aulus pastumius with the aid of the discori livius two nineteen the inner history of the roman community for this period deals with two contests one political and one social one contest of the patricians who gradually developed into and hereditary nobility against the new citizens or plebeians the latter who could it is true become senators conscripti but were excluded from the offices of state and from the priesthood aimed at complete political equality since the offices of state in rome as among the ancients generally were administered without pay hence honores officers of honour it was essentially the wealthier plebeian families alone who were interested in this contest to the social contest between the well-to-do property owners and the owners or renters of small farms who were growing poorer or had been deprived of their possessions the use of the ager publicus that is the public land acquired by conquest comprising both cultivated land and pasture belonged legally to the patricians only in fact the senate made exceptions in favour of the rich plebeian houses which had become members the small plebeian landowners and renters were strictly excluded from the privilege very seldom on occasion of new conquests a distribution of land was made among the poor plebeians but the greater part of the state domain was leased to the patrician landowners for a moderate rent which was probably hardly ever regularly collected and these estates were soon treated as private property gradually the tillage of the large farms was given over to slaves and the plebeian tenants were thereby driven from their holdings the plebeian owners of small peasant holdings sank into a condition of the greatest misery through frequent military service taxation excessive interest on loans and the cruel roman law of debt which placed the person and property of the debtor in the creditor's hands in consequence of this there were repeated uprisings and refusals to perform military service which in four ninety five was overcome only by the appointment of a dictator finally when the patricians refused to grant the promised alleviations and continue their ill-treatment of those who became their slaves through debt nexi the plebeian soldiers in the victorious army as they were returning home turned aside under the leadership of plebeian military tribunes to a small hill on the anio later called mons Sacer, and threatened to found a plebeian city in that fertile region three miles from rome this is the so-called four ninety four question mark secession of the plebeians to the sacred mount secessio plebis in montum sacrum which compelled the patricians menenius agrippa fable of the belly and the members to make sincere concessions after abrogation of the oppressive debts four ninety four question mark creation of the tribunate 
tribuni plebis and the plebeian idolus the tribunes of the people at first two question mark then five finally ten were always chosen from the plebs footnote it is commonly assumed as probable that up to the lex plublilia four seventy two the tribunes were elected in the comitia centuriata and approved by the comitia curiata according to the testimony of dionysius nine forty one and cicero pro corn they were chosen by the curiata according to momsen's view page ninety four note this denotes that they were at first elected by the plebeians assembled by curiae in the footnote they were inviolable sacro sancti they had the right of protection jus auxilii for every plebeian against injustice on the part of an official this privilege developed into an extensive right of intercession jus intercessionis against every administrative or judicial act with the exception of the imperium militare that is to say against the dictator and against the consul when he was more than a mile from the city from the first the tribunes of the people exercised judicial functions convened the assemblies of the plebeians and proposed criminal sentences for their consideration later four forty eight the tribunes were admitted to the senate where by their veto they could deprive any resolution of the senate senatus consultus of its legislative force and reduce it to a mere expression of opinion senatus autoritus the two idyllists of the people idyllists plebis assisted the tribunes and superintended the business of the markets their name was probably derived from the temple idus of ceres where they preserved the official document which decreed the establishment of the plebeian magistracy during this time according to some authorities not until later occurred the establishment of the important comitia tributa in this assembly the citizens voted according to wards or tribus not however the four wards of the servian constitution but according to a later perhaps four ninety five division into twenty tribus to which was added the crustuminium tribus four ninety four making twenty one and the number gradually rose to thirty five it is probable that down to the time of the legislation of the de Chemweers, the beans only after that time however the whole body of land-owning inhabitants both patricians and plebeians voted in the comitia tributa in this comitia each tribus had one vote which was decided by the majority of voters in the tribus compared with the comitia centuriata therefore the ascendancy of the wealthy was done away with as was also the privilege enjoyed by the nobility of throwing their votes first four ninety three in the consulate of spurius cassius renewal of the eternal alliance between rome and the latin league on a basis of equality only gradually did rome acquire again the hegemony over the latins continual disputes with etruscans sabines equi volscians continuation of the contest between patricians and plebeians the institution of the tribunate proving to be the organization of civil strife and anarchy an attempt was soon made to abolish the tribunate by the patrician b c four ninety one c n c question mark marcius called cariolinus from the storm of carioli who during a famine proposed to grant the plebeians grain at the expense of the state only on condition that they gave up the tribunate when summoned by the tribunes before the comitia tributa cariolinus declined to appear being banished in his absence he went to the volscians and according to the story led their troops against rome but at the rebuke of his mother Venturia, and the entreaties of his wife quolumnia gave up the war against his native city livius to forty four eighty seven the hernici invaded the roman territory being defeated by the consul aquilius and in the next year by the consul spurius cassius the four eighty six 
hernike joined the latin league four eighty six spurius cassius Piscalinus vecalinus question mark consul for the third time brought forward the first agrarian law he proposed to divide a part of the public lands among needy plebeians and latins the rest to be actually leased for the profit of the public treasury the patricians and wealthy plebeians joined forces against spurius cassius the lower classes were dissatisfied that the latins should also receive land and abandoned him after the close of his term of office he was sentenced and executed four seventy nine withdrawal of the gens fabia and their four seventy seven destruction by the etruscans at the brook Cremera. four seventy three murder of the tribune of the people gnaeus genucius who had ventured to call two consuls to account four seventy one law carried by the tribune of the people volero publilius to the effect that the plebeian magistrates should in future be elected by the comitia tributa lex publilia ut magistratus plebi comitius tributus creantur four sixty three plague in rome and throughout italy four sixty two motion of the tribune of the people c terentilius arsa for the appointment of a body of ten men to reduce the laws to a written code violent opposition of the patricians four sixty surprise of the capital by herdonius at the head of some political refugees livius three fifteen renewal of civil discord in order to satisfy the plebeians the number of tribunes of the people was raised from five to ten four fifty seven in the following year the mons awentinus was divided into building lots which were distributed among the poor citizens dictatorship of l quinctius cincinnatus who rescued an army which had been surrounded by the aequi livius three twenty six a compromise was reached in regard to the codification of the laws whereby three ambassadors were sent to greece to bring back copies of the salonian laws and others four fifty four after their return four fifty one decum wers a body of ten men were chosen from the patricians decum weary consulari imperio legibus scribundus and the consulate tribunate and the right of the appeal were for the time suspended the code of laws drawn up by the decemvirs was accepted by the people engraved on copper tables and set up in the form as an appendix seemed necessary for fifty decemvirs were appointed again three being plebeians who added two more tables henceforward the law of the city and county of rome according to which the consuls were to exercise their judicial functions was known as the laws of the twelve tables legis duodecim tabularum by their exposure the patrician administration was henceforth subjected to the control of public judgment instead of giving place to the regular magistrates after the completion of the two supplementary tables the decemvirs remained in office during the succeeding year four forty nine an attempt of the moderate aristocracy headed by the valerii and horatii to compel the abdication of the decemvirs was unsuccessful the latter under appius claudius the head of the extreme party of the nobles acquired the preponderance in the state at first the people submitted and acquiesced in a levy for the war against the sabines and volscians the oppression of the decemvirs especially of appius claudius murder of the former tribune of the people siccius dentatus and the attack on the liberty and honour of the betrothed of the former tribune l Echelius, virginia whom her own father virginius stabbed in the form brought about an uprising livy three forty four following the plebeian soldiers occupied the aventine and the sacred mount valerius and horatius managed to compromise according to which the decemvirs abdicated appius claudius and spurius opius disemboweled themselves in prison the others were sent into exile it is impossible to decide what part of this romantic story is historical it seems certain that the consulate and tribunate were re-established the power of the nobility was further weakened by the four forty eight laws of the consuls valerius and horatius legis horatii 
one the resolves plebiscita of the comitia tributa were given equal force with those of the comitia centuriata ud quod tributum plebs ju isset populum tenerit to every magistrate including therefore the dictator was obliged in future to allow appeals from his decision ne quis ulum magistratum sine provocatione crerarit qui cri asset eum jus fasque esset acadae three recognition of the inviolability of the tribunes of the people and extension of the same privilege to the idilis ut qui tribunus clebus idilibus nocuisit eius caput iovi sacrum esset about the same time four forty seven two quaestors were appointed whose peculiar charge was the military treasury making in all four quaestors they were patricians but were appointed by the comitia tributa wherein both patricians and plebeians voted henceforward if not before in four twenty one the quaestorship was opened to the plebeians moreover the tribunes of the people acquired the right of taking auspices and were admitted to the senate though at first required to occupy a bench near the door four forty five law of the tribune canulius legalizing marriage between patricians and plebeians lex canulius de canubio ut canubia plebi cum patribus assent the children inherit the rank of the father the motion brought forward by this tribune that the consuls might be chosen from the plebeians ut populo potestus esset su de pleba su de patribus wellet consulus faciende was violently opposed by the nobility a compromise was effected and it was decreed that instead of consuls four forty four military tribunes six with consular power tribuni militum consulare protestate should be appointed and that to this office plebeians could be elected at the same time creation of a new patrician office that of censor the two censors were elected in the comitia centuriata at first for five four question mark years after four thirty four for eighteen months but every fifth year only so that the office was vacant three and a half years out of every five functions of the censors one taking the census every five four question mark years after every lustrum and compiling the lists of citizens and taxes appointment of senators lectio senatus and the equitus recognitio equitum two preparation and publication of the budget management of the state property farming the indirect taxes wec wectigalia superintendence of the public buildings three supervision of the public morality regimen morum the duties and privileges included under the latter head gave the office great moral and political importance in the next century notatio censoria four thirty nine spurius milius a rich plebeian who during a famine distributed grain at a low price was accused of aiming at royal power and was slain by c sir willius ahala the master of the horse of the octogenarian dictator l quintius cincinnatus four o five to three ninety six siege of weii the history of which like that of the previous wars with the etruscans has been much ornamented by tradition the long continuance and obstinacy of the war with weii is proved by the fact that then for the first time the campaigns were not interrupted during the winter the result was that the citizens who served in the army now for the first time received pay from the public treasury that is out of the taxes on the public lands capture and destruction of weii by the dictator m furious camillus the fall of weii marks the beginning of the decline of the etruscan power which was hard pressed at the same time by the latins in the south celts gauls from beyond the alps in the north and from the sea by the sicilian and italian greeks especially the syracusans whose attacks had endured upward of a century three ninety one camillus went into exile in consequence of a complaint of injustice in the division of the booty from weii latium invaded by the gauls in consequence of roman ambassadors having taken part 
in the war of the etruscans of clusium against the gauls the gauls demanded that the ambassadors the three fabii should be delivered to them to which the senate agreed the proposal was however rejected by the citizens three ninety july eighteen battle of the alia a brook which falls into the tiber eleven miles north of rome utter defeat and rout of the romans on the right bank of the tiber whereby the city was left defenceless abandoned by the citizens the mons capitolinus alone continued to be occupied rome was taken plundered and burnt by the gauls under their brennus that is military ruler slaughter of the senators unsuccessful attempt to surprise the capital the geese of juno m manlius capitolinus after a seven months siege of the fortress the withdrawal of the gauls was purchased with gold legend a later invention of an expulsion of the enemy by a victory of camillus who surprised the haughty brennus why victus in the form while the gold was being weighed return of the inhabitants the plan of emigrating to weii broken up by camillus hasty but irregular reconstruction of the city which soon regained its old power after the equi the volscians and the etruscans who had taken up arms again have been defeated by camillus equalization of the old orders origin of the new nobility recommencement of the civil contests against the patricians one by the plebeian aristocracy to get admission to the consulate two by the poor indebted plebeians to obtain a reform of the laws of debtor and creditor and a share of the public lands the exertions of those tribunes who were friendly to the poorer classes were often neutralized by the opposition of their colleagues who represented the interests of the plebeian aristocracy the patrician m manlius capitolinus who had released plebeian debtors at his own expense was accused of aiming at royal power declared guilty of high treason and thrown from the tarpeian rock three eighty four a compromise was finally agreed upon between the plebeian aristocracy and the plebeian commons whose results were seen in the three seventy six laws proposed by c licinius and lucius sextius tribunes of the people rogationis licinii the first two were designed to secure the poorer classes a material alleviation the third to give the plebeian aristocracy the long wished for equality with the patricians one relief of the debtors by the deduction of interest already paid from the principal the rest to be paid within three years in three instalments ut deducto eo de capita quod usurus penumeratum esset id quod superset triennio aquis potionibus per solveretur two no one should possess more than five hundred ugera of the public lands nequis plu quam pinquin quingenta ju ugera agi publica footnote the word publica is lacking in the text of livius six thirty five but it is clear that the law could have referred to public land only c f niebuhr history of rome three eleven and momsen history of rome one three o four following end of footnote po sidera three abolition of the tribuni militum consulari potestate one at least of the two consuls must be chosen from the plebeians ne tribunorum militum comitia ferarent consulumque utique alter ex plebe creatur after long contest and after the appointment of camillus to the dictatorship had failed to accomplish anything three sixty seven the licinian laws were passed three sixty six l sextius lateranus colleague of the tribune licinius first plebeian consul at the same time one of the three great colleges of priests decem weary formerly duo weary sacris faciundus was open to the plebeians in order to retain at least the administration of the judicial department in the hands of their order the patricians procured the establishment of a new patrician magistracy the praetorship the praetor since two forty three one praetor urbanus and one praetor inter civis et peregrinus since two twenty seven four since 
one ninety seven six praetors had the jurisdiction dare scu judicium dicere scu sententiam ad dicere scem rem and was the vice-regent of the consuls during their absence at the same time a new adila was appointed called to distinguish him from the plebeian officer of that name the curula idila this office was however soon probably since three sixty four certainly since three o four made accessible to the plebeians and patrician and plebeian curule idealis were elected for alternate years the duties of the two idila curulus were one to manage the luda romani two to supervise the markets and the street police and to preside in the police courts connected therewith although after the passage of the licinian laws the patricians continued their opposition to the political equalization of the orders and even succeeded several times in electing two patrician consuls in open a violation of the third licinian law all public offices were nevertheless open to all roman citizens in rapid succession the dictatorship three fifty six the office of magister equitum before the adoption of the licinian laws three sixty eight the censorship actually three fifty one legally three thirty eight the praetorship three thirty seven the colleges of pontificuses and augurs the number of members in each being increased to nine three hundred by the lex ogulnia the patrician order thereupon ceased to exist as a legally privileged caste and continued only as a social order or rank a new nobility optimatus nobilis was gradually developed in political life composed of those patrician and plebeian families which had for the longest time retained possession of the chief public offices semi honoris these families regarded every citizen who obtained office but did not belong to their set as an upstart homo novus the new nobility could not however separate itself so sharply from the common people as the patrician order had done but increased its ranks constantly from the most promising portion of the lower classes through the equalization of the plebeian aristocracy with the patricians the office of tribune which was generally in the hands of the most distinguished plebeian families lost for a time at least its revolutionary and anarchic character the tribunes of the people soon obtained not only seats and votes in the senate but also the right to convene it growing importance of the senate which from this time on was the principal executive body governing the state since the establishment of the republic the senators had represented both orders they acquired their membership neither by the accident of birth nor by the direct choice of the people the censors filled vacancies in the senate principally from the numbers of those citizens which had occupied the office of quaestor or a higher office their age was at least thirty years probably a property qualification was soon required being appointed for life but subjected every four five years to a new lectio of the censors who could expel unworthy members the roman senators were independent of a fickle public opinion to the wise and energetic conduct of the senate rome chiefly owed the great growth of her power which took place in the near future as formerly the comitia exercised the rights of sovereignty proper especially the comitia centuriata and the comitia tributa in which all citizens patricians and plebeians alike were included while the right of approval vested in the patrician comitia curiata or the narrower patrician senate became an empty form here belong two of the three laws of the plebeian dictator publilius philo legis publici publii of the year three thirty eight one a vote of the comitia tributa shall have the force of law without having been approved by the comitia curiata ut plebiscita omnis queritis tenerent two laws presented to the sentry shall be approved beforehand ut legum quae comitius centuriatus ferentur patris ante initum suffragium aracteris fiorent three one censor must be a plebeian ut alter ubique ex pleba censor creatur the same publilius philo became the first plebeian praetor in three thirty seven in the year three twelve the censor appius claudius 
included the inhabitants of rome who were not freeholders in the tribes which they preferred and in the centuries according to their property this far-reaching and actually revolutionary change in the comitia centuriata and tributa was altered in a conservative sense by the censor q fabius rulianus maximus in the year three o four as regards the comitia tributa those freemen who were not freeholders and those freedmen libertini whose property and land was valued at less than thirty thousand sesterces about fifteen hundred dollars were divided among the four city wards tribus urbani which now became the last in rank instead of the first the country wards tribus rusticae the number of which had been the, by the year two forty one risen from seventeen to thirty one making the whole number of the tribes thirty-five were reserved for freedmen who were freeholders and for freedmen having larger landed properties in the comitia centuriata where the wealthy members had already acquired many privileges equality of the freemen were who were and those who were not freeholders was secured but the freedmen with exception of those of the first two classes were entirely shut out from the centuries the lacinian laws had naturally only ameliorated not radically cured the desperate condition of the poor and indebted plebeians the law of the consul poetilius lex poetilia passed in three twenty six or three thirteen secured to every insolvent debtor who should transfer his property to the creditor his personal freedom nequis iris alenii causa nectatur etique bona tautumado obnoxia sent by these and other ameliorations and by the ever-increasing foundation of colonies of citizens and division of public lands among the poor in consequence of successful wars the social question was for a short time forced into the background at this time occurred the alteration in the servian constitution of the army division of the new legion into thirty maniples each containing three centuries arrangement in order of battle in three lines hastati principis triarii the assignment of arms according to property classification was abolished long lances hasta were reserved for the third line the first and second line receiving in their stead the pilum a short spear adapted both for thrusting and hurling a short cut and thrust sword was used by all three sixty seven to three forty nine four wars with the gauls who had permanently settled in upper italy henceforward known as gallia cisalpina and thence made frequent inroads into central italy in the first war single combat between t manlius tor goddess and a gigantic gaul in the second the first triumph of a plebeian consul the fourth war was ended by a great defeat inflicted upon the gauls in the pomptine region by the consul m furius camillus the younger single combat of m valerius corvus with a gaul three sixty two story of a chasm opened in the form closed by the sacrifice of m courteous three sixty two to three fifty eight war with the hernici and the revolted latin cities especially tiber ending in the renewal of the old league between rome on the one part and the latins and hernici on the other whereby both people were more strictly subjected to the romans than before three fifty eight to three fifty one wars with the etruscan cities tarquinii Caere and valeria victory of c marcius rutilius the first plebeian dictator three fifty six which led to the reduction of the whole of southern etruria under roman supremacy three forty eight first question mark treaty of commerce between rome and carthage the text of which has been preserved by polybius three twenty two three fifty to three forty five war with the volsci who were defeated in three forty six at satricum and the aruncae the power of both peoples was completely broken the roman legions forced their way southward without stay this great development of rome's power brought about the three forty three to two sixty six wars with the samnites the other italians and the greek cities of italy result subjugation of all italy to the rubicon and macra under the supremacy of rome three forty three to three forty one first war with the samnites caused the sidica in tianum and the companions in capua both samnite tribes who had emigrated from their home 
asked aid of the romans against their relatives the samnites of the mountains who had formed a confederacy in samnium proper whence they continually ravaged the plain campania with new swarms according to the roman tradition their armies gained three victories in campania over the samnites victory of m valerius corvus on mount garus near cumae victory of a cornelius cassus after his army had been rescued by p decius mus a military tribune finally victory of both roman armies at sua sula the war was ended by a treaty whereby rome received capua the samnites teanum the samnites were induced to conclude this treaty by a war with tarentum the romans by the three forty to three forty eight great latin war the latins rebelled against the hegemony of rome and demanded complete equality with the romans one consul and half the senate were to be latins capua in spite of the opposition of the optimates and the wolskii were allied with the latins victory of the roman and samnite armies over the latins and companions in the neighbourhood of vesuvius under the consul t manlius imperiosus execution of the young son of the consul who against his father's command had fought with the latin commander and defeated him p decius mus sacrificed his life for the safety of his army decisive battle at tryphonum between minturni and suessa victory of the consul manlius over latins and companions dissolution of the latin league which became a mere religious association for the celebration of festivals isolation of the latin cities from one another commercium and connubium between them were prohibited most of the cities received roman citizenship without suffrage that is they became subjects several were obliged to cede land which was divided among roman citizens others were converted into roman colonies for example antium the orators stand in the form romanum was ornamented with the bows and the old ships of this city hence rostra the roman power in the territories of the volskii and in campania was strengthened by the settlement of colonies of roman citizens capua and other cities became dependent roman communities three twenty six to three o four second war with the samnites and the other italians cause encroachments of the romans on the lyris especially the transformation of fregelae into a roman colony and the capture of palaeopolis twin city of neapolis by q publilius philo the first proconsul alliance of the romans with the apulians and lucanians and in the course of the war with the sabellian cities south of the volturnus nola necuria herculaneum pompey who at first sided with the samnites the romans had the advantage in the first years of the war and crossed samnium at to apulia plundering as they went but in three twenty one the consuls s p postumius and t veturius hastening from campania to the assistance of the apulian city lucaria were surrounded by the samnites under grauius pontius in the caudine pass ferculi caudinae were near the present arpaia and compelled to capitulate swear to a treaty of peace and give six hundred roman equitus as hostages the whole roman army was sent under the yoke the roman senate refused to approve the treaty and delivered the consuls to the samnites who refused to receive them the samnites conquered lucuria in apulia and for july on the lyris by desperate exertions the romans got the upper hand again in three nineteen the roman consul l papirius cursor reconquered lucuria released the roman hostages and sent the samnite garrison under the yoke the war went on during the succeeding years with changing fortune nevertheless the romans subdued their revolted allies and subjects and punished the leaders in the revolt with death they defeated the samnites at capua drove them out of campania completely and reconquered fra july settlement of new colonies construction of a great military road from rome to capua through the pomptine marshes the via appia part of which still remains begun under the censor appius claudius three twelve after three twelve when the forty years peace with the etruscans expired the etruscan cities took part in the war against rome 
soon the whole of etruria which was still independent was in arms against the destroyer of italian liberty siege of the roman border fortress sutrium the victorious advance of the consul q fabius rullianus through the Crimean forest and his victory at the wadimonian lake three ten caused the powerful cities of perusia cortona aretium to withdraw from the coalition against rome and effected after three o eight a provisional truce throughout etruria the umbrians picatini martians frentanians priliginians who had joined the italian coalition continued the war and were ultimately joined by the hernicans the fortune of the war for a short time favoured the samnites and their allies but the romans soon acquired a decided ascendancy l piperius cursor defeated the samnites in a great battle three o nine nucuria the last campanian town in alliance with the samnites was attacked by the romans by land and sea and forced to surrender first appearance of a roman war fleet the consul l postumius invaded samnium from the adriatic sea another roman army advanced from campania a decisive victory of the romans and the capture of boeanum three o five the capital of the samnite league ended the war the samnites begged for peace and with their sabellian allies obtained a renewal of the old treaties and equality with rome foundation of numerous roman colonies and several military roads the hernican league was dissolved the volscians and iquians were obliged to receive roman citizenship without suffrage construction of two great military roads from rome the northern later called via flaminia extended to narnia nequinum the southern later via valeria extended by way of carciolia to alba fucentia that is on lake fucinus the key to the territory of the marci two ninety eight to two ninety third war against the samnites and the other italians cause the samnites succeeded in bringing men of their party into power throughout lucania and concluded a league with the lucanians in order to risk a final struggle for the independence of italy new rising among the etruscans the consul l cornelius scipio whose sarcophagus with an old latin inscription footnote this inscription which it is conjectured from linguistic reasons was engraved some time after the death of scipio was cornelius lucius scipio barbetus genevid patre prognatus fortis vir sapiensque quores forma ver tu ti parisuma parisima fuit consul censor idilis quer fuit apud vos tarasia cisana somnio capit subigit omne lucanum absidesque abducit in the footnote discovered in seventeen eighty is still to be seen in the vatican museum forced the lucanians to abjure their alliance with samnium two ninety seven victory of rulianus at tifernum victory of p decius mus at maluentum in two ninety six the desperate exertions of the samnites enabled them to place three armies in the field one to defend their own country one for campania while the third was conducted by its commander gellius egnatius through the martian and umbrian lands to etruria this prevented the etruscans from concluding the peace which they had negotiated with rome and conjured up the old coalition of the italians which was now joined by gallic tribes great preparations in rome the consuls q fabius rutilianus and p decius mus advanced to umbria with sixty thousand men where in two ninety five the decisive battle of sentium was fought and by the devotion of p decius mus livius ten twenty eight after a long contest ended in favour of the romans dissolution of the army of the coalition the gauls scattered the samnites returned to samnium the umbrians submitted the etruscans asked for peace in the next year to ninety four the war lasted in samnium four years longer with varying fortune in two ninety three the samnites suffered a severe defeat at aquilonia 
from l papyrus cursor and spurius carwillis in two ninety two the samnites gained their last victory under the command of gawius pontius the younger finally the samnites concluded peace with the consul m curius dentatus as it seems without ceding territory but the romans thereby gained a chance to strengthen their power in the rest of italy this was accomplished by the foundation of new colonies which should serve as checks on the italians especially minternae and sinuessa in the territory of the aruncans hatria in picenum when nusia in apulia the sabines were obliged to become subject to rome after a short and feeble resistance at this time after the samnite wars the two eighty six question mark hortensian law lex hortensia was passed thereby it was settled that all decrees of the comitia tributa should be binding on all citizens this was accomplished by the dictator hortensius after a dangerous uprising of the plebeians who had been unable to come to terms with the opposite party in regard to a reduction of debts and had withdrawn to the ianaculus la secessio plebis about this time questions of peace and alliance began to be submitted to the comitia tributa by the lex minia the second publilian law that the curiae or the narrow patrician senate should assent beforehand to the resolves was extended to the elections which took place in the comitia centuriata nevertheless the real importance of the public assemblies was declining they became more and more instruments in the hands of the presiding officers after a short truce in italy in consequence of the peace with the samnites there broke out a two eighty five to two eighty two war between rome and the new italian coalition cause the inhabitants of thurii being attacked by the lucanians and brutians sought help from the romans alliance of the lucanians and brutians with the etruscans umbrians and gauls of northern italy the annihilation of a roman army at aretium by senonian mercenaries of the etruscans was terribly avenged by the romans the gallic tribe of the senonus was in part slaughtered in part driven from its home in umbria a victory of the romans over the north italians and their gallic allies by lake wademonium two eighty three and another at populonia two eighty two inclined the gauls to peace after a victory of the consul c fabricius over the lucanians at thurii the non dorian greek cities joined the romans locri croton and thurii received roman garrisons this advance of the romans led to the two eighty two to two seventy two war with tarentum special cause old treaties with tarentum prohibited roman ships of war from passing the promontory of lacinium a roman war fleet on its way to the umbrian coast anchored in the harbour of tarentum the people incited by demagogues in the assembly attacked the vessels and captured five whose crews were either put to death or sold into slavery a roman embassy which demanded reparation in tarentum was insulted a roman army advanced into the tarentine territory the tarentines called to their assistance pyrrhus king of epirus a renowned general and leader of mercenaries who had long meditated the plan of conquering for himself and the hellenic nation a new empire in the west pyrrhus at first sent milon with three thousand epirotus to tarentum two eighty one he himself landed in italy the following year with an army of twenty five thousand men iperotes macedonians greeks etc and twenty elephants the war between pyrrhus and the romans was a contest of an army of mercenaries against militia of a military monarchy against the government of a senate strict discipline maintained by the king in tarentum the theatres were closed the death penalty imposed on evasion of military service great preparations at rome even the proletarii generally free from military service were enrolled one roman army was sent to etruria the main army to lower italy in the two eighty battle of heraclea near the cyrus the romans were defeated after a struggle whose result was long doubtful by the phalanx and the elephants great losses of pyrrhus the brutians lucanians and samnites joined the king the offer of peace 
made by pyrrhus to the romans through cyneus was haughtily rejected by the senate speech of the blind consular appius claudius pyrrhus advanced as far as agnagnia in campania but there halted and returned to lower italy as two roman armies took the field against him and the allies of the romans remained faithful roman embassy c fabricius sent to pyrrhus to treat for an exchange of prisoners in the following year the two armies each numbering with the allied troops seventy thousand men met in the bloody two seventy nine battle of Osculum in apulia which lasted two days and in which pyrrhus was victor but again suffered enormous loss the syracusans who since the death of agathocles two eighty nine had been hard pressed by the carthaginians called for aid upon pyrrhus who gladly gave heed to the, the request but left a garrison in tarentum offensive and defensive alliance of rome and carthage two seventy nine a carthaginian fleet appeared off the coast of italy but soon returned to sicily the romans conduct of the war in italy was at first feeble owing to their great losses but they soon captured all the cities on the south coast excepting tarentum and regium after two years absence pyrrhus again landed in italy he started to assist the samnites who were hard pressed by the romans but was completely defeated in the two seventy five battle of beneventum one thousand three hundred prisoners and four elephants fell into the hands of the victors despairing of success against rome pyrrhus returned to epirus leaving a garrison in tarentum not until after the death of pyrrhus which took place in two seventy two at argos did milan surrender the city and fortress of tarentum to the romans on condition of free departure the tarentines were obliged to deliver up their arms and ships and destroy their walls but retained their own municipal administration after the fall of tarentum subjugation of the lucanians samnites and brutians all were compelled to cede portions of their territories and to receive colonies in two seventy capture of regium which had been for ten years in the hands of companion mutineers who were now punished with death in two sixty eight the pacentini were defeated and a large number of them transferred to campania the subjugation of italy to the rubicon and macra was completed by the defeat of the salantini in calabria two sixty six as regards the relation of the conquered towns to rome we must distinguish one municipal cities municipia that is communities having roman citizenship without suffrage and with no claim to a public office at rome sine suffragi et jure honorum they had the burdens but not the privileges of roman citizens some places were permitted to keep the administration of their municipal affairs under officials of their own choosing in others the municipal constitution was entirely abolished two colonies coliniae that is roman strongholds and fortresses many conquered towns had to cede a part of their land which was then divided among poor roman citizens who retained all their rights of citizenship and thenceforward formed the ruling class in the colonies like the patricians while the old population was reduced to inhabitants having no political rights the latin colonies are to be distinguished from the roman colonies the former owed their establishment to the latin league but had been further developed after its dissolution in that the senate distributed lands among latin or roman citizens who renounced their jus suffragii et honorum in the municipalities as in the colonies the jurisdiction was in the hands of a prefect praefectus iuri dicundo appointed by the praetor urbanus three allies socii civitatis fideratii whose relation to rome was regulated by treaty who had for the most part their own administration and jurisdiction and were freed from service in the legion but were obliged to furnish auxiliary troops or ships End of section twenty four